Audiobook Title Evolution Start ASA Raft 001-234 by I Am Link Part 03. This work belongs to author I Am Link. Source Royal Road and Scribble Hub. The man got into the shallows and the shark fins on his back quickly retracted. He stumbled to a high wall somewhere outside the island, pushed aside a boulder to reveal a tunnel, and then burrowed in. In front of Governor Robert's bedroom in the Solomon Islands, the man pushed the door open and walked in. Robert was standing in front of the window in his pajamas. He looked back at the wayward man while sipping his wine and said blandly, Jack, why have you become like this? Like a dog in the water. The man put down the left hand that covered his face, finally revealing the pale face. This man is Jack the Ripper. Big brother, we lost. Jack sat on the couch with his butt, not caring that his soaked clothes wet the couch. Look you like this, I know without you saying. Robert still held up his glass, savoring the wine. Tell me about it. About the ship, Jack walked over, grabbed the bottle, poured himself a glass, and began to tell the story. Later, I killed Waltong on the way. I could not let him know that I was looking for you. Jack downed half a glass of red wine in one gulp. Robert was unmoved. He only cared about his concern. What about that thing? I... I was too late to take it before they boarded the ship. Jack said heartily, their captain seems to be a child. But he actually said that leave no one alive. I was scared at that time. I must get out of there immediately. Trash. Robert bellowed. That's all you've got. Jack hurriedly said big brother. The lock on that is very complicated. It is impossible for ordinary people to open it. They would be coming to Solomon Island to stop for supplies. You can get it back then. Robert thought about it after hearing what Jack said. It was not unreasonable. That chest was forged by the best forging masters. It would be difficult to open unless that red metal was taken out. And if one tried to force it open, the contents would destroy themselves. Robert thought about it and sighed. They almost swept away the entire iron road around the pirates. Now the residents of the island are spreading the news of them. Both the navy and the residents are looking forward to their arrival very much. When the time comes, it will be difficult for me to make a direct move against them even if they come to the island. How about this? I'll give you a boat and a few people. You go find the assassination crops to come. Let them strike. Jack frowned after hearing that, Big Brother, the assassination corps is in the Misty Shadow Islands. It will take me at least three months to come and go. Don't worry. I will find a way to stall them. Robert said with a confident chest. With the guarantee of the boss, Jack regained his confidence at once. Then I am relieved with the boss out. Leave them to me when the time comes. I will torture them to death. Boss, I'm leaving now. Wait. Robert suddenly called Jack. He walked to the bedside table, opened the drawer, and took out a round metal from it. They can take out Buman then most likely they are close to the stage 3 mutant. Take this and let that guy out. That guy. Boss you can actually invite that guy. Great. No one below stage 3 can escape his clutches. This time they absolutely certain death when they come ashore. Said Jack had the remaining half glass of red wine in one go. Took out so many of my ship. I will use the most brutal means to get you death. Rain was also depressed. Hanging around here for a month and a half, they actually only met three pirate groups and a total of only 80,000 earned. This efficiency was really too low. Captain? How's your health? Rain lay down on the lying boat right away as soon as he heard Tuber's voice oops, so dizzy. Tuber into the room to look at Rain. Seeing Rain's face in pain, he shook his head, Captain, you are really sick or fake? Mutants never have seasickness, and you are still the flesh of the son of Poseidon. Are the son of Poseidon can still seasick? I don't know, my body has been a little weak lately, Rain said breathlessly. Damn, Tuber came to him arm wrestling every day. He had lost several thousand again. So Rain had to pretend to be sick. Seeing that Two Bear was left, Rain sat up again. He started at Two Bear's back. Good you brat. When I evolve. The door of the captain's room opened again at that moment. And Rain lay down in a hurry. A large group of people came in this time. Rain took a deep breath. So many people checked his situation. And he did not know if he can hide it this time. Captain, I opened it. Armin said excitedly. What opened? The code box. Rain stood up on his butt and walked to the black box in a hurry without caring about Tuber's surprised eyes. However, there was not a single pearl in the box, only a pile of papers, and a black flake. Holy shit, what the hell? Is it necessary to pack this amount of waste paper in such a confidential box? Rain was full of disappointment. Captain, these are not ordinary documents. Armin said, here there are Solomon Island Governor Robert, and the pirate's transactions information. And it also uncovered a secret. 
It turns out that Robert is the real head of the Holy Pirates. He is the real Jack the Ripper. What? They killed the real Governor Robert years ago, and then Jack the Ripper used the Governor's human skin to disguise himself and became the current Governor. Holy shit. Rain was shocked. This is too dramatic. But then again, the Holy Pirates were known for skinning and disemboweling. This astonishing secret fits in perfectly with their methods. Captain, there are a few other important pieces of information. Armand continued, the first is that Jack. I mean the real Jack, the current Governor Robert. They are planning to seize Solomon Island as their base from the inside and outside. After they occupy Solomon Island, they will kill all the residents and the navy on the island. Rain frown, kill everyone? Just with them? I'm afraid it can't be done. Armand said they have been developing secretly for several years. No one knows how strong they are. Moreover, there is a sea monster that cannot be determined by the level coiled up in a sea area from Solomon to the southwest. The sea monster promised them a condition if they can help it find its child. I think their condition should be to let that sea monster help them to rob Solomon Island. Well, Rain just felt a bit too much information. Captain, you must stop them please. Arson said excitedly, my mother is on the island. Rain frowned slightly. It seemed that he was not able to ignore the matter. Arson, Armin, and Terry, you all do not rush. I will not give up, are we? But this matter cannot be rushed. We need to have a discussion. 123. Sirank Sea Monster. Armin was really good. She opened the code chest in just a month and a half. Only there was no treasure in the box but held such an amazing big secret. Which really caught Rain a bit off guard. A strong attack definitely won't work. We can't beat it. Directly exposed also cannot. Now the other people don't know Robert's true identity. If we rashly expose, others may not believe us. Rain frowned. This matter was indeed a bit tricky. Avril and the others were also struggling to think of countermeasures. At this moment, Tick suddenly spoke, Captain, I think the breakthrough point should be on that sea monster. All of them looked at Tick. Tyke continued, The key to their capture of Solomon Island lies in that sea monster. But the sea monster is not their gang. It will only help them when Jack finds its children. Tick's words were off to a good start. The crowd quickly followed his ideas to think about. If we go looking for that sea monster, will it be our helper? It's a little hard to say. The information above says it's hard to determine the level of that sea monster, which means it's at least above F rank. What if it wipes us out at the drop of a hat? Nope. I don't think it will hit us, Armin said with great certainty. With so many people expressing their opinions but only Armin was the most certain. Rain couldn't help but ask curiously, Armin, why are you so sure? There are two reasons, Armin said first, recently the Iron Road did not record the emergence of powerful sea monsters. Such a level of sea monsters will certainly attract attention as long as they appear, but it has not been reported. That indicated that it has no intention of hurting people at this stage at least. Second, let's think about it differently. If your child is lost, you must be to launch all the forces that can be launched to find it. So if we can show our willingness to help it, we are no different from the holy pirates in its view. Armin finished and the captain's room was silent for a moment. It was clear that Armin's reasoned analysis was very convincing. Rain suddenly thought of the scale at this point. He picked it up by hand. This scale was very large and quite some weight. There might be a dozen kilograms. The diameter might be the way of 20 centimeters. The overall diamond shaped, wide at the top and narrow at the bottom. Shit, so heavy. System. Analyze the item. Rare item. The scale of a half-adult black scaly dragon. Rain was shocked when he heard the name of the item. Dragon? Is there really such a thing in this world? It can be said that the scaly dragon is already out of the realm of ordinary animals. It can almost be seen as the prototype of the dragon. Since there is a scaly dragon, is there a fucking real dragon? The system ignored Rain's thoughts and continued to report. The item is of fine quality and can be decomposed. It is the main material for making the fine item black scaly dragon diving suit and black scaly dragon armor. I told you to analyze the item not this, you trash system. Rain had a black line, but it seemed that the system could only do this. Avril looked at this piece of scale. This thing can't be from that sea monster? Can this thing help us find its child? It's possible, and I think that this might be a token from that sea monster to the holy pirates. Armin offered her opinion. Rain thought about it and put the scale into the cipher box. I think Armin is right. That black scaly dragon desperate to find its child, it shouldn't attack us. Let's go find it now. Black scaly dragon? Does the scale belong to a scaly dragon? It's too scary. And captain, how do you know that? The crowd all looked at Rain in shock. 
Humph, this is simply common sense. A look at the shape to know, ah, ha ha, too simple for me. You guys still need to learn more. Do not arm wrestle all day. Learn more from Armin to read more books. Rain looked meaningfully at Two Bear, and the latter lowered his head in shame. There were now nothing pirates here. Rain and the others simply set out for the sea where the scaly dragon was. Two Bear's mental outlook has changed radically after Rain's education. He went to Amin every day. But Rain did not know he is really to study or take the opportunity to pick up girls. After half a month of sailing at full speed, they finally arrived at the sea marked on the chart. The information on the holy pirates showed that the black scaly dragon only appears at night, so they were waiting for nightfall. Captain, do we really have to go in? Avril was a little worried. Yeah, this is the key to cracking the Solomon Island crisis. Rain said with great certainty, even if my character is bad, it can't be even worse than the holy pirates. Captain, you'd better not mention your character. It's not a good sign. Fancy said nonchalantly. Bite your tongue. Black lines covered Rain's forehead. Night has finally fallen, and all of them were in a high state of readiness. Rain sailed into the area carefully. At this time, Avril, Arson, Armin, One Bear, Two Bear, and Tick were guarding the deck. Arson held the scale in her hand. She did not know whether this thing is a token or not, but take it out first at least. The radar had been unresponsive. Rain did not dare to be careless in the face of a sea monster like the black scaly dragon and walked forward cautiously. Ding! 377 meters directly below the bottom of the ship, Elite C6 rank sea monster found, black scaly dragon. Although Rain's radar could detect a long distance on the surface, his maximum detection distance was only 500 meters for the bottom of the sea. Rain felt scalp numbness. Generally, the radar warning is at 490 something meters. But this time, the radar reported a distance of just over 300 meters from them. What was this concept? That guy already swam out more than 100 meters at the moment of the radar warning. And Rain understood one thing. This was not he can dodge. Damn, we can't run away. The words just fell. Rain saw a thick and incomparable body hovering at the bottom of his ship. Looks like a black lump. Rain's 55 meter hull is as if modeling toys in front of it. Rain had no doubt that it could have wrapped and strangled him immediately if it wanted to, even to the point of disintegration. Damn, so big, and so fast. However, Armin's deduction was finally fulfilled, the huge guy did not attack Rain. A huge head gradually rose on the surface of the sea that was bigger than Rain's hull. Seeing this head rising beside him, Rain almost pissed himself in fear. Sirank Sea Monster, too damn scary. 124, sub C 800 M. The water falling from that head was pouring down like a waterfall. A pair of horror blood red eyes, a rock like rugged and hard skull. Rain did not think his thunder cannon can penetrate it. The huge mouth was closed, but the large number of fangs exposed made people shudder. The guys on the boat were no better than Rain and their legs were already shivering with fear. Arson in particular was shaking so much that she could barely hold the scales. The big guy was staring at the scale. Rain took a few deep breaths. He had to do something at this time. Anyway, he certainly could not escape if the big guy really wanted to do something. He returned to the son of Poseidon's flesh and out of the captain's room. Well, hello, good night. The crowd looked at Rain in disbelief, wondering why the captain still had the guts to kid out at this time. Cough. Black dragon. Rain finally spoke normally. I, we are here to help you. The huge mouth of the black scaly dragon slowly opened, and everyone had their heart in their mouth. You, the black scaly dragon actually spoke with a low and hoarse voice as if from the abyss of hell, how to get my scale. Rain found his clothes were soaked, but now he could not care less. He had come this far. Life or death would not be changed. Rain turned relaxed a lot after a thought. We took out the holy pirates. Black scaly dragon did not speak, just stared at Rain. We know that you have a deal with the holy pirates, but they are too weak to help you. Black scaly dragon spoke again. I don't care who helps me. As long as you can find my child, the deal is valid. The crowd breathed a long sigh of relief. It seemed that Armin's analysis is correct. Good. We'll help you find your child. But we'll change the deal. Doesn't matter. And would you give us more clues? Rain asked bravely. My child was lost in this sea. I encountered a horrible guy at the time and got separated from my child when I was hiding. What? Terrible guy. Rain's jaw almost dropped. The guy who could make the black scaly dragon feel terrible. What the hell is that? Don't worry. It had been swimming towards the beast class sea. It won't appear here. Rain breathed a long sigh of relief. How old is your child? 
Rain suddenly had the feeling of chattering with someone about family matters. It's still an egg, but it's five months away from hatching. An egg, how is this going to be found? Rain mentally calculated, um, did it sink to the bottom of the sea? Rain asked tentatively. If the black scaly dragon would say it had sunk to the bottom of the sea, then Rain did not rule out the possibility of walking straight away. The bottom of the sea was not something he can explore right now. My child will not exceed 800 meters under the sea due to the density. 800 meters? Beyond the radar detection range of 300 meters. Rain immediately felt a big head. No wonder it was difficult for other ships to find it. It was impossible for ordinary ships to detect that depth, and the Navy's radar could only detect 3 or 400 meters. Can you find it? Yes. It's a piece of cake. We are the best at finding things. Rain answered without hesitation. Saying no now would be like looking for death. Don't lie to me, boy. I. I. I never lie. A bunch of crew members looked at their captain in surprise. Okay, I believe you guys. When you find my child I will repay you. If you can't find it, I will find you whatever you escape. Saying this, the black scaly dragon's head dived back into the water. The large black lump of the body under the boat also quickly disappeared under Rain's boat. Rain let out a long sigh of relief. The pressure just now was too great. Now he had a feeling of life after the robbery. The survey of 800 meters under the sea must be done with the help of special tools. What are we going to do? Tick asked. Rain was also troubled by this problem. Armin ran over at this moment. Captain, I found this in their notes. What does it say? I always wondered what this chart meant at first, but now I finally know after reading the notes. Look, this is the area they have explored. Armin took out the chart. It was a chart of the area around the Iron Road. Many areas were colored, leaving only two not-so-big areas. Captain, their search is still very scientific and fully considered changes in ocean currents, and has previously carpet searched a large area. Now the search has entered the end. Rain scanned the chart. It was true that the area left was not large. The pirates might soon find the black scaly dragon egg. But they found out the secret too. Armin, good job. Rain said excitedly. Let's go to these two places right away. But we don't have any equipment, Avril said. We have, Rain said, I'll take care of it. What we have to do now is buy time. The ship quickly headed to the designated area. Before they got there, Rain's radar alerted that there were a dozen exploration ships exploring. Fortunately, those ships were not pirate ships, which means they probably won't be blatantly obvious. Sure enough, they are looking for the egg. Rain immediately alerted, Tick, you take control of the ship, just move around. If they fire, just return fire. Terry, lead the men here and pretend to fish. Armin, you and I will go down together. Captain, just the two of us? Arson asked, we won't match their search speed. The two of us will be enough. Since the captain arranged the work, even if Arson still had some doubts, she did not ask more questions and took Rain together into the water. Rain cannot transform underwater, but the flesh of the son of Poseidon allows him to breathe without surfacing. In the water, Rain pointed to the underwater, and Arson led him to keep diving. At the bottom of the sea more than 300 meters, the water pressure here had been very large. They could hardly stay here for too long. At this point, Rain gave the order in his mind. Turn on the radar. If he used the radar on the ship, it was true that he cannot scan the depth of 800 meters under the sea. But if he goes down more than 300 meters, then he can completely do a quick scan with the radar. 125 a little accident. Although it was very dangerous for Rain to go into the water personally, now there was no better way. With the radar, Rain's scanning speed is a hundred times faster than those exploration ships that survey small areas. Together with Arson's speed, their speed can't be surpassed by those original devices. Five days later, Rain finished searching the area and returned to the ship, and he found that his crew members had caught a large boatload of fish. Rain was confused. He just let them pretend to work but why did it so hard? Back to the topic, their boat was heading to the last area of the sea. Rain and Arson worked as usual and continued to dive alone. On the third day, Rain finally found the target. He excitedly took Arson's hand and pointed downwards. Arson glared her eyes widely. She pointed downward, which meant, it's down here? Rain nodded heavily and pointed downward vertically with his finger vigorously, which meant, right below me. Rain's physical fitness was worse than Arson's and his underwater ability was also inferior to Arson's. This time, he could only let Arson dove alone. Arson gritted her teeth and dove down toward the dark bottom of the sea. Rain kept his eyes on the radar. Arson's direction is not deviated. 
but the dragon egg moved to the other side. Damn dark sea floor. Rain was also a little afraid, but he was also afraid that they would not get the egg if he do not inform Arson. Thinking of this, Rain gritted his teeth and also began to dive. To the bottom of the sea at 500 meters, there was full of darkness. No, there was still some light, which was the unknown underwater fish luring its prey with its glowing organs. The sea creatures are notorious for growing casually, not to mention this is the Azure Era. Only God knew what was around. Rain did not dare to stay for long, he chased Arson quickly. The huge water pressure has already pressed him to be a little uncomfortable. He touched Arson uneasily. But Arson was startled, she turned back and gave a punch. Rain was no match for Arson underwater. Immediately his mouth and nose sprayed blood. It was pitchy dark around that you cannot even see the hands in front of your face. Who 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 me? Who 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 it's me, it's me, Rain said vaguely. Arson heard and understood, and the touch meant that the other should be a person. After she carefully touched Rain's hands and feet, she was more sure that this is the captain. After a small episode, Rain pulled Arson to chase the scaly dragon egg. It's so hard to catch this little guy. However, Rain did not know if it was the result of his blood spreading out. The radar issued an alert at that moment. Ding, 290 degrees northwest 497 meters position, found G-rank sea monster, giant sea snake. Rain heard and his hair stood on end with fright. In the absence of battleship cover, the consequence of the two of them encountering the G-rank sea monster was only death. Sea monster. He did not care whether Arson understood or not just pulled up Arson and then frantically swam upward. However, the speed of the other was extremely fast. In the blink of an eye, it was only 180 meters away from them. Tiger's Fong. Rain quickly launched his skill. After tripling his attributes, Rain took Arson to swim upward desperately. But the sea monster's speed was too fast, and the distance between them was still closing. There were still 200 meters to their super battleship, but the sea monster was only 50 meters away from them. Fortunately, the surrounding light gradually brightened up. Arson finally saw the sea snake monster. So it was, the captain had just said sea monster. Rain suddenly wilted after the real man of ten seconds. Arson held the scaly dragon egg with one hand and pulled Rain frantically to rush to their ship with another hand. This time she really exerted all of her strength. But even so, it was afraid that they cannot escape. Rain switched consciousness. Terry was still leading the men to fish when he suddenly heard the captain's horse hiss. Terry, sail the ship, quick. Everyone had never seen the captain in such a hurry before and hurried to put up the sail. The ship just moved forward a dozen meters, but the sea monster giant snake had caught up with Arson at this moment. When it was taking a bite, sixty harpoons shot out from the bottom of the ship and shot wildly at the giant snake. The giant snake was about to enjoy a beautiful meal but got severe pain. Its body curled up. Just in the nick of time, Arson had escaped its range of attack. The giant snake looked at the ship overhead with its scarlet eyes. A dozen dive bombs were put down above. Rain dared not put more that he was afraid of hurting Armin. Although the body of the giant snake is several sizes smaller than the scaly dragon, definitely not small, the bombs easily exploded on it. With the severe pain, the giant snake finally retreated and reintroduced into the darkness of the deep sea. Watching the giant snake retreat, Rain breathed a long sigh of relief and quickly returned to the body of the son of Poseidon, taking the exhausted arson back to the surface. This underwater dive was not pleasant, they almost died at the bottom of the sea. Fortunately, Rain and Arson still escaped, and they got the scaly dragon egg. Captain, does it still hurt? Arson looked at Rain's swollen corner of the mouth with sorry. His teeth were also knocked out several by her, well, I thought you were still up there. I instinctively hit over when I felt something grab me. This thing could not be blamed on Arson. If Rain was entangled in something in the darkness, he will certainly resist. Forget it, it's not your fault. Rain covered his mouth. It's fine as long as get the scaly dragon egg. Let's go to find the scaly dragon. Um, Captain, why is there a crack on this scaly dragon egg? One bear frowned and looked at a not very clear crack on the egg. Could it be that the harpoon hit it? Arson recalled. It seemed that I felt that a harpoon scratched the egg. What? Rain almost pissed in fear. The scaly dragon will hunt them for thousands of miles if they did not find the egg, not to mention break it. Rain did not know if the scaly dragon would not cut them into pieces. At this moment, a click came from the crack that was not very obvious. It cracked. This bunch of people were scared out of their minds. Finally, scaly dragon eggs, cracked. What the hell, I am dead. Rain's eyes also almost burst out. 
Rain's expression was a little unnatural when he saw a scaly dragon again. Well, ahem, Mr. Dragon, we have found your child. Rain tried hard to make his expression look more natural. Really? Don't worry, human, I will keep my word if you give me my child. Quickly, where is my child? Ahem, Rain held it for a long time that his face was red, um, your child was found. But there was a small accident, temporarily. Haha, <laughs> accidents always come so suddenly. No one would have expected it. Ha 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 ahem ahem. Rain's laughter was filled with embarrassment and reluctance. Where is my child? I can smell it. What the hell happened? Quickly hand over my child, or I'll kill you. Rain gulped. It is not good to fight and kill all day. Your child ahem. Well, I'll get it for you. Rain was afraid that the scaly dragon would really get angry if he delayed again. With a sigh, Rain turned back and entered the captain's cabin. Not long after, Rain came out, but now he was wrapped around with a large black python. Of course, it just looks like a python from a distance. It was rather pretty than python. If you move closer, it looks the same as the big scaly dragon. The little guy looked at Rain intimately. Bro, I'm almost strangled to death by you. Rain came to the scaly dragon with a face of desperation. Um, ha ha ha, congratulations to have a son. Best wishes to you. The scaly dragon glared its eyes widely. It was supposed to be born five months later. How come it broke out of its shell now? And so intimate with that human that even ignored its mother? 126. Poseidon fruit worth 5 million. The little scaly dragon did not seem to be afraid of the big guy next to it. It looked at the huge head with curiosity and swam over. The scaly dragon looked at the little guy swimming towards herself. Her fierce gaze became softer, lowering her head and coming closer to rub the little guy. The little scaly dragon's body stood up and head to head with the big black scaly dragon. This was a very warm picture. Of course, Rain was now concerned about his own little life. Well, a family reunion. Congratulations, Mr. Dragon. The black scaly dragon suddenly interrupted Rain, but the tone was much more moderate than before. I am a mother. Rain had some embarrassment. He really did not know how to identify the male and female of the scaly dragon. The system also did not tell him. Oh, sorry, Ms. Dragon, then our deal. The scaly dragon raised her head and looked at Rain. Rain only felt the pressure come back all of a sudden. The pair of scarlet eyes were clearly the death gaze. My child was born prematurely? Um. Rain only felt his breath catch and his body couldn't help but tense up. Forget it, it's fine. The body is a little weak though, it can also be recuperated slowly. But the scaly dragon suddenly said generously, Unfortunately, I can't take it back. It can't survive over there. The scaly dragon kept staring at Rain as if she was thinking about something that made Rain's heart shiver. Finally, the scaly dragon suddenly spoke, this way, you are responsible for taking care of my child in the future. Huh? Rain almost screamed out. Not willing? No, no, no. How could we be unwilling? It's just that we're too weak. You see, I just have one ship that is no match for some powerful fleets, and I'm just afraid that I won't be able to take care of your children. You don't need to pretend in front of me. I saw how you defeated those two pirate groups before. Although you are still weak, at least a little stronger than the other fleets. Black Scaly Dragon has absolutely no intention to discuss with Rain. You should not feel that taking care of it is a burden. Although its physique is now worse, it is my child after all. It will not take long, no one can match you in the human level see at least. Rain heard and thought about it. If what the Black Scaly Dragon said is true, this deal seems not a loss. It is just right to let it experience the low-level sea. The scaly dragon looked at the little scaly dragon with some reluctance. It looks like my child likes it quite a lot. As compensation, I will not treat you poorly. Black scaly dragon finished, spitting out three round things from her mouth. Rain's heart began to beat wildly as soon as he saw these things like cabbage. If he was not mistaken, these three cabbages, white cabbage, purple cabbage, and black cabbage are all sea god fruits. These three sea god fruit will be given to you, including that black one. The average person cannot eat because the human body cannot withstand such a mutation. Take it to sell money. The price is around 5 million pearls. Do not be cheated. Rain was stunned. That black Poseidon fruit worth 5 million pearls? The price is 10 times more than the average Poseidon fruit. That scale on the ship you keep well. When you reach the king class sea, come to the black dragon sea with this scale. After saying that, the big scaly dragon gently rubbed the body of his children. Child, I must go, but you are too weak now. I cannot protect you. You will follow them to keep getting stronger, understand? 
The little one seemed to understand his mother's words, nodding vigorously. Seeing that the scaly dragon was about to re-enter the water, Rain then remembered an important thing. Well, Ms. Dragon, my mission reward. The scaly dragon stopped and thought for a moment. You made my child premature and still want the mission reward? Forget it, take these twenty scales. My husband is already calling me. Something must have happened in the King Class Sea. I can't stay here for long. After the scaly dragon finished speaking, its huge claws showed up from the bottom of the sea and flung twenty scales to rain, then dived into the sea with no stopping. Only rain and the little scaly dragon and the twenty large scales on the deck all of a sudden as well as three sea god fruit. Rain looked at the little scaly dragon with a serious face. So we are going to eat what your old mother spit out. Scaly dragon this guy did not keep her word. Rain had been trying to get it to help deal with Jack the Ripper and the others. But the guy gave some scales and sent Rain away. And also left her child to Rain. She didn't even take her own child away. Rain always felt like she left in a bit of a hurry. So maybe what she said is true. Something is happening in the King Class Seas. Of course, no matter what the King Class Sea is happening. That has not much to do with Rain anyway. He hasn't even been the Beast Class C. At this time, Rain and other core staff on board were gathered in the captain's room. They were gathered around the scales and the sea god fruits. The little scaly dragon had been wrapped around Rain's body that pressed Rain a bit over the breath. Little guy, go play in the water. I can't hold you. Rain took the little scaly dragon down. The little one was like it understood Rain's words, swam out of the window, and went down the fence to the water. Rain thought about it and said, Although the sea god fruit can sell a lot of money, I always feel these three are much rare. We have never seen the auction house sell Poseidon fruit even if we have been in Bankra Island for so long. So, I decided that it's better to eat them ourselves. Terry Armin, both of you are not mutants. We are family anyway. Choose from these two for yourself. Terry frowned at Rain, Captain, what about you? You are in need of the Poseidon fruit, and you will need it in the future. It is better for you to keep it for yourself. Rain shook his head. The scaly dragon said that the human body can't withstand the black one. I thought about it. The money we can earn. But this level of sea god fruit cannot be found again. I'll try it myself rather than sell it. As for the future. Why think so much? I don't believe that we can't encounter one Poseidon fruit on the after journey. Terry Armin, eat it. You are the first to follow the captain. This journey you have been very desperate. This is what you deserve. Avril said. Yes, the captain has said so, then you guys don't push back. One bear also said. Yes, all of us are strengthened by you guys getting stronger. Tick also supported Rain's decision. A fleet without shortcomings is the strongest. Under the persuasion of the crowd, Terry and Armin each chose a Poseidon fruit. Captain, I really don't know how to thank you. At first we only begged you to give us a bite to eat, but you ended up treating us so well. Rain laughed. Avril is right, you deserve it. There will be a great reaction to consuming the sea god fruit. Arson, take care of your father and sister. Yes. Arson took Terry and Armin back to their room. Now Rain stared at the only black sea god fruit left, frowning. The body of the son of Poseidon should be able to withstand it. You guys go out first. Captain. Avril looked at Rain nervously. I'm not going. I'll stay with you. 127. Rain's first mutation. Peeling away the layers of the outer skin. Rain looked at the dark thing in the middle and then took a bite. Captain, how does it feel? Avril looked at Rain nervously. Rain frowned slightly. It feels not very crunchy, sticky, and a little sweet, and moisture is also good. The taste is a bit like dragon fruit without seeds. Black lines covered Avril's forehead, but now was not the time to be bothered with the captain. She hurriedly added, Captain, I felt very painful about ten minutes later I eat the sea god fruit. Captain, you must hold on. This was Rain's first mutation, and the sea god fruit was worth five million pearls. It looked like a big risk, and Rain was also worried. However, five minutes, ten minutes, twenty minutes, an hour. Rain and Avril looked at each other for an hour. Captain, still no hard feelings? It's been an hour, Avril said anxiously. A little, just the body feels hot. I seem to have finished mutating. Rain frowned and said I'll check. Rain quickly called up the system to check his attributes. Rain, Captain, Son of Poseidon Flesh, Hatchling Stage 2 Level 1 1 out of 10, 1 Mutation, Base Attributes 12 times that of a normal human, Combat Power, 24, Mutated, Rain was a bit in disbelief, where was the promised unbearable pain, he really didn't feel anything before, wait, what the hell is my base attribute, other people's combat power of Stage 2 Level 1 seems to be 22, how come I am 24, 
Rain was confused. He continued to read on with questions. Skill. Tiger's farm. 10 tenths for 7 seconds. Increase 200% speed. 200% strength. 100% senses. And 50% reflexes. Cool down time. 30 minutes. One mutation details. After one mutation, the flesh of the son of Poseidon stacks with the mutation effect that increase combat power by four points every level. Wow. Rain was shocked. Even though he only had two more points of basic attributes than other the same level mutants right now, if he reached stage 2 level 10, that would be 20 more points. 20 points of combat power can be completely decisive. Moreover, this is the base attribute. That means whether Tiger's Fang or Avril's auxiliary bonus can all have effects on it. Then those 20 combat points are more useful. There was still content below. Rain suppressed his inner excitement and continued to read on. Detailed classification. Combat type. Mutation ability. Three changes of the scaly dragon. First change. Level 1 attributes are increased by 10% in water and decayed by 10% on land. Second change. Level 1 form a layer of dragon scales on the surface of your body to increase your underwater movement speed by 10% and improve your defense by 5 points. Third change. Level 1 gains scaly dragon skin and scaly bones to improve flesh defense and hardness. Improve unarmed attack power and defense power by 5 points. The three changes of the dragon can be used alone or at the same time. Combat power. 24 real time. Rain was shocked again after seeing this set of data. Everyone else only had one transformation. He had three. Don't look at the boosted values are low. But Rain knew that this is only the effect of level 1. If he practiced it to level 10, the power of these three transformations would be very terrifying. If he upgraded his transformation to level 10, his defense alone would be boosted by 100 points. Attack power would be increased by 50 points. Coupled with his basic attributes, he would absolutely crush mutants of the same level. If he breaks through to level 20, and level 30, it would be even more terrifying. Captain, how about it? Avril looked at Rain nervously. Rain got his eyes wide open. The son of Poseidon's flesh was really strong that so easily completed the mutation. He did not painful at all but felt comfortable. The black sea god fruit is also worthy of the extremely high quality sea god fruit which is claimed to be worth 5 million pearls. The dragon's three transformations would let him crush the majority of mutants. It feels good. Rain could not hide his inner excitement. Terry and Armin had completed their mutations long since, but both were tired and resting in their rooms. Rain also checked on the two. Terry's mutation was a combat land-based creature, a one-horned rhino mutation that was on the same level as one bear and two bear. Armin's mutation was a bit odd. She was a sky-type creature night owl mutation. Her attributes were even odder. After transformation, the attributes decay 20% underwater, 10% on land and increase 30% in the air, level 1. Armin, do you, can fly? Rain seemed to have not seen Armin have this skill. Captain I, I don't know how to. Armin was also aggrieved. The transformation like this was really a bit inexplicable. Sorry Captain, I seem to have wasted this Poseidon fruit. Might sell it for money is better. Rain laughed. The properties of the sea god fruit will not change. It is the same as whoever eats. What is there to waste or not? It's just that this mutation of yours. By the way, did you have improved vision? Yeah, vision is indeed much better than before. Especially at night, I can see very far. Also, this ability is still a little useful. I can read at night. At this moment, Tick suddenly said Armin, your mutation is not necessarily useless. As far as I know, you are short of a flight skill. Flight skill? The crowd was amazed. Yes, flight skill, Tick said with certainty. I've seen people fly in the air before. In this world... It's not just land and sea. It's just that the human body is really not suitable for flying. So even if the flight type mutants are few can directly fly after transformation. But if you can get a flight skill book, you can make up for this problem through continuous training. So said Armin's mutation became amazing all of a sudden. Even Rain was a bit envious. Who does not want to have the ability to fly? Now, the three Poseidon fruit has been distributed. The three people on the ship who did not mutate also finally all mutated. Next, they should also think about how to deal with Jack. For this point, Rain had long thought about. The key to Jack's seizure of the island is the black scaly dragon. Now it has been preempted by us secretly. Plus we took out the holy pirates, then we do not have to worry about them to do. Rain said, let's keep wandering on the sea. On the one hand, clear some more pirates that let the passing ships help us put out our reputation. 
so Jack will not dare to deal with us openly. On the other hand, we will all upgrade again. After that, we will go to Solomon Island. As long as we confirm that Jack pretended to be Robert, we find a public occasion directly to tear off Jack's human skin mask and show the contents of the cipher box. Be caught red-handed, he will not be able to deny it. Captain, having said all that, you just want to get up to a full level before you go to Jack. Fancy frowned and spoke in one sentence. This is just in passing. And don't you know that your captain is known for steadiness? Rain immediately retorted. When we level up, afraid of Jack? Teach him to be a man in a minute. 128. Steady rain. Three months later. Solomon Island. A separate rental house. Two people were drinking wine and having small talk. One of them was Jack the Ripper. Of course, this man was only the apparent Jack. The real Jack still wearing human skin in the governor's palace and drinking wine. His real name is John. Opposite John was a slim man with high cheekbones, deep set eye sockets with a sharp gaze. Wind God another. Jack poured wine for the man. John, I've been living here for a month and a half. Where's the target you said? Do you know how many pearls I've lost waiting for a month and a half for nothing? Cool it, wind god. Hey, don't worry. I will double compensate your losses, as long as you can finish them. The wind god coldly snorted with a grim gaze. Hump, I have never missed my mark. As long as they show up, I won't let them see the sun the next day. Yes, yes, the name of the wind god is unknown to everyone. As long as they hear the name of the wind god who is not scared straight shiver, John hurriedly said, you guys hurry up, there are a lot of people around, I don't like it here, good, we will definitely hurry up, inside the governor's house, Robert just received the news that dad was still hanging around the iron road, it's been more than three months, and they still haven't docked, the bad thing was that, although they did not come to Solomon Island, the island about this dad of news was growing, some even say that this bounty group is the patron saint of passing merchant ships, the louder their reputation, the worse Robert to do. However, Robert could not do anything. Now the only way is waiting. Wait for the dad comes to Solomon Island, and wait for the exploration team to find the egg. A year later, Old Wind come back. Old Wind bought a chicken ah pretty good. Han, you also came back from the sea. Recently Windy, rest a few more days. Wind God warmly and familiarly greeted the surrounding neighbors, and then nimbly killed the chicken in the courtyard of the common pool. For a whole year, the killer wind god had been on very good terms with the surrounding neighbors. Today had been well until he saw John, the jack on the surface. The wind god's mood suddenly got to the freezing point. Wind god did not say a word to take John into the room. Once the door closed, he grabbed John's collar, lifted him, against the door, lowered his voice, and said, You fuck, I've been waiting here for a year. Where is the target? John was also going crazy. Who would have thought the dad could stay on the sea for a year? Wind God, we've gotten the word. They're coming this way. A year. How dare they turn around at sea for a year, and not even dock in winter. Are these people sick? You better move fast, or I'll kill you. Inside the governor's mansion, Robert looked annoyed. Their survey team had already conducted a second carpet search of the target area, but there was still no progress. Damn, where the hell did it go? After such a long time, the black scaly dragon egg should have also hatched. It would be almost impossible for them to find the little black scaly dragon. But the scaly dragon also seems to have disappeared. Could it be that she found it, and then just left the place? Robert was distracted. Without the assistance of the black auger, their chances of winning this island capture operation are more than half. And that dad, the bounty group, wandering in the sea for more than a year, are you fucking sick? He had two things to do, and the result none of them come true. It was really crushing. Finally, good news came. The dad ended a year tour at sea and sailed towards Fort Robert. Did they open the code box or not? If it would be opened, my secret. Robert was becoming increasingly irritable. No, I must solve them as soon as possible. Rain was really not the usual study. He said just casually wandering in the sea, the result of wandering a year. Without the help of the scaly dragon, Robert's plan to take the island has been ruined by a large part. And the navy on those islands is also not easy to handle. Rain had been cleaning up the surrounding waters letting Robert not have the opportunity to restore the holy pirates to work together both inside and outside. It was certain that Robert's plan to capture the island cannot be implemented as long as they do not dock. Anyway, the anxiety should be Robert, not them. So Rain stayed a little longer. The ship was heading towards Solomon Island, and Rain opened his attribute panel again. Rain, Captain, son of Poseidon Flesh, Hatchling Stage 2 Level 10 10 out of 10. 
can break through after the second mutation. 30 times more basic attributes than a normal human. Combat power, 60. Skill, Tiger's Fang, 10 tenths 4 tenths seconds, increase 200% speed, 200% strength, 100% senses, and 50% reflexes. Cool down time, 30 minutes. Detailed classification, combat type. Mutation ability, 3 changes of the scaly dragon. First change, level 10 attributes are increased by 100% in water and decayed by 100% on land. Second change, level 10 form a layer of dragon scales on the surface of your body to increase your underwater movement speed by 100% and improve your defense by 50 points. Third change, level 10 gains scaly dragon skin and scaly bones to improve flesh defense and hardness. Improve unarmed attack power and defense power by 50 points. The three changes of the dragon can be used alone or at the same time. Combat power, 60, real time. Humph. Rain had a few gloomy low laughs. All full level. This is finally stable. I recapture the throne of the highest combat power of the whole ship. Of course, Rain's rapid upgrade was closely related to the son of Poseidon's flesh. It seemed that there was no bottleneck at all for Rain the upgrade all the way smoothly. For others, the improvement of a year of training was certainly not as fast as Rain's. The ship's crew level had different degrees of improvement. Arson had fast progressed that upgraded to stage 2 level 10, up 4 levels. One bear and two bear were stage 2 level 9, also 4 levels. A year to raise 4 levels, which is much slower than before, but it cannot be helped. After all, the higher the level, the more difficult to up. And Arson had been stuck in stage 2 level 10 for 2 months. Avril upgraded to level 8. The cell control could change the attributes by 40% and could control up to 8 people at the same time. Armin and Terry were progressing fast. Both of them have improved by 9 levels to reach stage 1 level 9. Although Armin cannot transform, at least the basic attributes had improved a lot. Most other people on the ship had improved by 3 or 4 levels, and many of them had reached stage 2 level 5 and 6. Now, the entire ship crew's strength increased substantially once again. When the super battleships sailed towards Solomon Island, all the people on the surrounding ships couldn't help but stop and watch. On the balcony of the governor's palace, Robert narrowed his eyes slightly. No matter what, they are finally here. He called his cronies and said in a low voice, Go and inform the wind god. I don't want them to survive the night. Rain stood at the bow of the ship and took a deep breath. Jack, daddy is coming. 129 Night Raid. It was worth mentioning that Rain's body also grow up again. He already looks like he's 11 or 12. Although not much change in appearance, the height increased at least. But Rain's growth rate was much slower than the small scaly dragon. The little scaly dragon originally only was 1 meter. But now this guy has grown to about 4 meters and swims on the bottom of the ship all day. Rain told it to stay in the water not more than 3000 meters range of the ship. Then even if the little scaly dragon is in danger, Rain can rescue it in time. There was a scaly dragon mother. Rain did not dare to offend this guy anyway. When the little guy refused to eat sometimes, Rain still had to coax it to eat something personally. Rain finally arrived at Solomon Island and the surrounding ships resounded with a round of applause. Rain met a lot of ships in the Iron Road over the past year or so. Their dad's reputation had long spread. After the ship docked, Rain secretly left a dozen crew members to stay on the ship. He took only five crew members with him and went to the registration place under the attention of the crowd. At that moment, a group of soldiers with lances lined up neatly. A middle-aged man in uniform at the head of them came to Rain, Captain Rain, I have heard a lot about you. We sincerely invite you to be our guest at the governor's residence. Rain thought in his heart that Robert certainly did not have good intentions. His action was quite fast. The Navy has not yet gone and he came to stop them. Perhaps he was afraid that he would snitch on the Navy. It seemed that his reputation on Solomon Island was so high that even Robert could only be polite to him first. Tick and the others looked at Rain nervously. Rain thought about it and smiled slightly. Good, I happen to be visiting Mr. Governor as well. Robert prepared a banquet at the Governor's house. Rain scanned the food and wine with the system and found nothing unusual. So he had a pleasant and polite dinner with this Governor Robert. At the banquet... Robert gave great appreciation to Rain and Dad for fighting crime around the Iron Road and protecting passing ships and spoke highly of the strong fighting power of Dad. Looking at Robert's eloquent appearance, Rain only felt like laughing. The guy's face looked a little scary as if he had been disfigured by an expired injection of hyaluronic acid. 
Rain beat his holy pirates, but he had to say good. In addition to being ugly a little, this Governor Roberts' acting skill was fine. System, scan for that guy. Ding, found the head of the holy pirates, Jack the Ripper. Sure enough, it's him. Now Rain had finally put his mind at ease. Captain Rain, in view of the outstanding contribution you and your bounty corps have made to Solomon Island, I intend to hold a voting ceremony in the Civic Square tomorrow for the residents to vote and see if we can pass the election for the Solomon Island Special Order. Robert smiled very happily and could not see anything else in his mind at all. Rain naturally begged for it. Thank you very much, Mr. Governor. By the way, there is a residential area below our governor's residence to welcome our honored guests. I think Captain Rain will stay there today. Now I'm gonna have the election announcement sent out. It just so happens that we go to the Civic Square together early tomorrow morning. Good, just in time to save the money for renting a house. Rain was not polite at all. After the dinner, Rain's group was placed in a piece of bungalow behind the governor's house. Rain asked his crew, does everyone have screw caps? As a precaution, Rain had them each remove a screw cap from the ship and hang it around their necks so that he could keep in communication with them at all times. All with them. Captain, are you sure Robert is Jack? Tick asked. I'm sure. Then will he come after us tonight? Avril was a little worried. Most likely. Everyone be careful. Arson, you protect Avril. One bear and two bear protect Tick. Rain whispered. Once the night is over, it's Jack's time to die. Captain, my mother. Arson asked worriedly. It's okay. I have asked Armin and the others to have a trip to the Navy. Now Armin and the others have taken Awi back to our ship. Armin also had a screw cap on her. Rain could naturally be informed of the situation there. Hearing that her mother was safe, Arson finally breathed a sigh of relief. Since everything is okay, then the next dedicated to dealing with Robert well. With that, the group returned to their rooms. Night fell, the moon was dark and the wind was high with silent surroundings. What a great time to kill and fire. Rain sighed and then blew out the oil lamp. John with the wind god quietly lurked in front of this house and waited for a long time until the lights in the room went out. Wind god, they should be asleep. Call me when you get it, and I'll play with them. I want them to know what it means to live worse than death. Wind god pulled out a dagger with cold light from his waist. That captain just is a stage two mutant. Are you afraid I will miss it? What a joke. I've been waiting for this day for a year. With that, the wind god arched his waist and quietly approached through the obstacles. The door of the room was opened instantly, and a black shadow rushed towards the sleeping rain, lightly and quickly. The wind god had been observing outside for a long time and was sure that the only rain in the room, so he didn't have to worry about killing the wrong person. What he wanted was to subdue rain first, then went to break the rest of the crew one by one, and then let John come in to make a bloody crime scene and just frame these to the remnants of the holy pirates. The wind god's speed was surprisingly fast, and he reached Rain's bed instantly. He stabbed toward the hazy figure. The wind god is called the wind god because he is a mutant species of wind cheetah mutation. A creature that is faster than a leopard and moves several times more agile than a lion or tiger. His level was stage 3 level 1. He could almost walk without sound and night vision multiplied after the transformation. With his speed, reaction, and explosive power, he almost never missed a shot. Mutants below stage 3 have never had a record of escaping when they encounter a guy like Wind God who is built for assassination. And at that moment, the guy on the bed suddenly turned a dagger into the heart of the God of Wind with a speed that could not be seen. At the same time, the other dagger stabbed into the right arm of the Wind God with unerring accuracy, pinning it to the bedboard. Wind God stared in disbelief at the teenager who was slowly sitting up you. Before he could speak, Rain quickly got out of bed, turned behind him wrapped his arm around the neck, and strangled him hard. Pretty fast, but you didn't expect me to find you long ago, right? Rain had a grim face. I don't care who you are. Want to kill me? Sorry, then I can only kill you first. Wind God could not say a word, afraid that he could never dream that this teenage kid would be so fierce. Now he only felt more and more suffocated. His right hand was fixed to the board and he could only use his left hand to wrench Rain's arm. His hand claws began to become sharp. Who knows Rain suddenly sneered cat? Unfortunately, you are not a woman. If it was a cat woman, I might have been a little interested. After saying that, a trace of killing intent flashed in Rain's eyes. Transformation. Second change. A layer of hardened scales quickly sprouted on Rain's arm. Tiger's fong. At that moment, Wind God only felt as if the one who was attacking him was a stage 4 powerhouse. 130. Fight. 
all the fighting took place in silence, and Rain let it go the moment the wind god's breath disappeared. Just find a small minion to assassinate me? Rain looked at the wind god who was lying on the ground like mud, and wondered where this guy had come from. Forget it, it didn't take much effort to kill him anyway. Scan the area 100 meters in diameter. Rain didn't make the range bigger, he also can't tell the difference if there are too many people scanned. Ding, 11 degrees northeast, a mutant found. John was still waiting to hear from the wind god. He would go in and entertain these guys as soon as that guy got it. Destroyed more than 30 of our ships. Rain, I'll skin you alive. In the middle of talking, six people clumped out from around. John suddenly blushed white once he saw these six people. Hmph, Captain, so it is the Holy Pirates Jack the Ripper. This time we have good luck. Arson finished with a smile. One bear, two bear, and Rain laughingly walked toward the guy. On the same night, Rain had Armin bring John back to the ship. For the next whole night, Rain and the others didn't sleep. Who knows if there were others who were going to come and kill them. But the good thing is that no one came to bother them again this night. Early the next morning, while having breakfast with Governor Robert, Rain shook his head and complained, Mr. Governor, you may not believe me when I tell you. Last night the remnants of the holy pirates actually came to assassinate me. Robert's knife and fork were in the air for two seconds. He looked up at Rain, but only found Rain was just lowering his head and continuing to enjoy his food. Solomon Island's security needs to be strengthened again, Rain said as he ate. Ahem, surprisingly, such a thing. Captain Rain, although we do not refuse pirates to enter the city, we will not condone it if they dare to assassinate you. Um, have you caught the assassin? Rain wiped his mouth, I killed a man, but there is an accomplice who escaped. A little shame. Robert immediately asked someone to check. Not much time, the soldier reported that the wind god had died. The strongest killer under the stage 3 wind god actually died just like that. Robert's heart was in shock. What level was this unimpressive looking kid? This guy had killed someone and he was still here leisurely eating breakfast? So he must not know yet that the wind god was sent by me. In that case, maybe I can do something with this thing. Oh well, Mr. Governor, is the election still going on today? If not, I have to leave. Go, definitely. I have sent out the announcement. There are a lot of citizens in the Civic Square who will come today. Robert did not lie. The Citizen Square at this time was crowded. Many people want to meet the dad who purges the entire Pirates of Iron Road. Residents. Robert himself took the stage to preside. I believe you have all heard of Captain Rain and his bounty group dad. And in light of Captain Rain's outstanding contributions to Solomon's Island, I have decided to hold an election here today to vote on whether or not Captain Rain may receive the Solomon's Island Medal of Distinction. Next, we have Captain Rain with his outstanding crew. Amidst thunderous applause, Rain, Avril, Arson, Two Bear, One Bear, and Tick came to the stage together. Let Lieutenant Miller the Navy talk about their battle first. At this moment, not waiting for Robert to hand the microphone to Lieutenant Miller, a soldier ran on stage and whispered something in Robert's ear. And Robert suddenly showed a shocked face. What? It can't be. The soldier said something else, and Robert looked stony-faced. Due to this episode, the election was temporarily interrupted. The unknown crowd looked at the governor in disbelief. Not long after, the governor turned his head and said to everyone on the stage, Excuse me, we just had a murder here, and all the evidence points to Captain Rain. There was chaos on the stage. What? It can't be. How could they kill someone on the island? What's going on? Robert said with difficulty, in view of the fact that this matter is still to be investigated, I have to suspend the election of Special Medal of Honor temporarily. Someone, control these people first. Robert also did not forget to appease Rain and others, Captain Rain, you do not get excited. If you are wrongly accused, I will definitely reach the bottom of the truth to return you justice. Please cooperate with our work on the island. Rain watched quietly as Robert finished a whole set of plays and couldn't help but smile. TSK, TSK, what good acting skills. While everyone was in a daze, Rain suddenly burst out. Tiger's Fong. Avril unleashed cell control to enhance Rain's 40% cellular activity at the same time. With a double boost of Tiger's Fong and cell control, Rain's attribute combat power reached a terrifying 252. The average stage 2 level 10 mutant even if terrestrial only has 100 attributes after transformation. Less than one half of Rain's. Under such a disparity in strength, those soldiers did not even have time to react and Rain had scurried to Robert with great speed. Two daggers were directly on Robert's throat. Everyone was shocked when they saw this scene. What's going on? Why did he hijack the governor? 
He was so fast just now. What level is he? Is it a coup d'etat? Lieutenant Miller's eyes got wide. He didn't expect Rain's strength to be so strong that he had already hijacked the governor before he reacted. The Navy can build bases here to have an agreement with the governor of each island. They will assist the island army to maintain order to a certain extent. If Rain really killed the governor, then he is estimated to be reduced to a laughingstock by everyone. Kill the governor of an island in front of a Navy lieutenant? Captain Rain, I advise you not to be impulsive. Shog told me about your fleet. You are not the ones who do such things. Miller said with forced composure, if you kill Governor Robert, you won't get away with it. Since you know we are not such people, what is there to fear? Rain asked rhetorically and then nodded to Tick. Tick cautiously picked up the microphone on the ground under the many guns. What I want to tell you is that this Governor Robert is not the real governor. Tick said to everyone, we have ample evidence to show this. He is the head of the Holy Pirates, Jack the Ripper. He is plotting to take Solomon's Island and he will slaughter all of its inhabitants once he gets his hands on it. I think you have all heard of the holy pirate's tactics. If you think we are liars, you can kill us now, then you, your family, and your friends on the island all will be turned into human skin. If you want to see the evidence, then put the gun down. Tick looked to Miller. If someone won't put down his gun, I have reason to believe he's Jack's accomplice. Lieutenant Miller, give us a few minutes, and we'll save all of you. 131. Whereabouts of show? Just as Tick caught the other's eyes, a sharp scream came from Robert. People all gasped when they looked over to his side. Rain sliced Robert open with a single slice. Some women in the crowd let out a shrill scream. What's more horrible was still below. After Robert was cut by the dagger, there was actually a person hiding inside. Seeing this person, everyone's eyes were almost out. Could it be Madryoshka doll mutant? They did not know if there is this kind of mutant. But if not, how to explain the scene in front of them? Miller was shocked. He could naturally see that there is another person living in the original Robert's skin, which simply made his bones creepy. Not long after, Armin and the others also came, escorting John. Jack saw John and his face turned even whiter. Rain the old fox. Didn't he say that John had run away? At this moment, John was tied up and pushed to the stage by the people behind him. As soon as he saw Jack, he immediately pointed at Jack and shouted yes 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 that's him. He's Jack the Ripper. I'm just a little man, I'm not Jack. Three years ago, we killed Robert, and then the chief used his skin to pretend to be the governor. Also, he's the one who told me to take the wind god of the killer corps to assassinate your captain. John slipped away alone at the time of the naval battle. It can be seen that he is simply a person who is afraid of death. To this time, he certainly betrayed his boss without mercy. This time they not only caught Robert in the act, and there were witnesses, and Rain still had an ace in his hand. Armin came up with the code box at this time. Jack was completely dejected looking at the box. There were all his economic dealings with the holy pirates, as well as their plans and so on. There was a lot of evidence that he had no idea how to defend himself. After figuring out the situation, the Navy carried out the capture mission on behalf of Robert's men. They purged Robert's men. The chief petty officer named Dernet was captured as well as more than 20 captains who had been bribed by Jack. Two days later, a cheer rang out in the civic square. They had elected a new governor, a man who was a highly respected veteran named Many and had a good reputation. Captain Rain, everyone, here, we owe a million thanks to Captain Rain for all he has done for our Solomon Island. If he hadn't come forward with the brave men of Dad, I believe we would all have died at the hands of Jack. Today, Solomon Island is going to honor our original promise and vote on the spot to decide whether to award Captain Rain the special medal of honor. I'll go first, I'm in favor with both hands. I'm in favor. No one is more qualified than them. I am in favor. Purge the pirates and save the entire island population. We have no reason to refuse this offer. I second it. Fancy winked at rain, Captain. It looks like you're about to get another medal of honor. Avril chimed in, Captain. We can just shop at Solomon's Island. It's the same 25% off anyway. Hey, we have enough money already. Rain smiled faintly. He could not wait to go shopping now. Rain was unquestionably awarded the Medal of Honor of Solomon Island, and he also enjoyed a 25% discount on his purchases. The reward for the bounty mission wasn't much, but the pearls from pirates had already made him rich after defeating more than 40 pirates. After cashing in on the mission, Rain now had 3.7 million pearls in his assets and received more than 80,000 points. They moved up to F rank this time and still had a lot of points left. 
At the slave market, Rain bought all the 15 Sea God Island slaves left here. It's just a shame that there is no mutant here. It looked like they were all sold out. But Rain can't help it. He definitely had to ensure his own safety first before he can dock at Solomon Island. While Rain was preparing to buy the materials, Miller found Rain. Captain Rain, can I talk to you? Rain was impressed with the Navy lieutenant. At least he didn't brainlessly order the shooting and wasn't bribed by Jack on the day he was apprehended. The two men then found a tavern nearby and looked for a private room. As soon as he sat down, Miller spoke up, Shobe got caught. Rain froze for a moment. Speaking of which, although Shobe went to the Beast Class C, Rain always finds Shobe's shadow along the way. In the Sicily market, Hades did not give them a hard time. In Bankra Island, Governor Halliwell had always been polite to them. In Solomon Island, they smoothly picked up Arwi, and Miller maintained restraint throughout the key moments. All these things were related to Shobe more or less. The guy had been doing his best to take care of Rain and the others along the way. Although Rain did not want to admit it, he regarded that guy as a friend in his heart. He's a decent guy. He who did it? The third fleet of the Sea King Pirates, Miller said. Huh? What the hell is the third fleet? Miller explained, Sea King Pirates is an E-class pirate that is considered one of the top strengths of the Beast Class C. They are one of the three major legions of the Beast Class C. Their leader is Rex, an ancient Emperor Tyrannosaurus mutant, one of the three Beast Kings of the Beast Class C. Rain's jaw almost fell off when he heard Rex's mutation type. Emperor Tyrannosaurus? Actually exists such a fierce creature mutation. One bear and two bears giant bear and tick saber-toothed tiger were all child's play in front of the Tyrannosaurus Rex. And the three great beast kings. Um, sounds so domineering. There are many ships under the Sea King Pirates, so they have divided it into five fleets, each of which has the strength of the F-8 class at least. Rain suddenly got a little discouraged. He had been happy that went up to F class. But when he heard that each one of them is F-8 rank even if they were divided into five, his own sense of accomplishment instantly disappeared. Holy shit. No wonder Shobe was defeated. The Sea King pirates are too fierce. Miller continued, As far as I know, they took Shobe to the Starseed Islands to play the Slave Gladiatorial Arena. Slave Gladiatorial Arena? What's that? That's where the mutant and beast fight to the death. Unless someone can complete a 100-win streak, the only way to do so is to be killed by a stronger creature. Rain took a deep breath, Shobe that guy. Captain Rain, Lieutenant Shobe saved my life, but I am on duty. Plus Solomon Island has just elected a new governor now. The situation is unstable that I cannot go, I think. Stop. Rain suddenly stood up. He looked at Miller. I think you misunderstood it. The reason why I helped Solomon Island is not because I am a damn good person. I just want to save the loved ones of my crew and get some benefits by the way. In this world, there are too many suffering people. It's simply impossible for me a small F-class bounty corps leader to save everyone. The premise of everything I do is to ensure my own safety first. So, if you are trying to get me to save Shobe, then, really sorry, I don't have the strength. Miller's expression was a little gloomy. He lowered his head silent for a long time. Well, I also know that this task is too difficult. Indeed, a pirate like the Sea King Pirates with a bounty of 20 million is not something that ordinary people can deal with. Rain froze for a moment, huh? What? You, how much bounty did you say? Twenty million, what's wrong? They are famous pirates after all, not the same as ordinary pirates. Twenty million. How many levels could he go up? Rain couldn't help but think about this. 132, level up. Hundreds of naval ships sailed towards Solomon Island. It was a huge and powerful force. Rain looked at these warships and thought, is the navy going to attack Solomon Island? Finally, the ships were moored at the outer edge of Solomon Island. A group of officers came out from the main naval ship, led by a man with dark hair and pale skin. Rain didn't know much about the title of the navy. He is, Admiral? Why would an admiral appear in the human class C? Many, the new governor of Solomon Island came out to greet them along with Lieutenant Miller. They saluted each other, and then had a talk. But Rain saw that the general barely spoke. It was the adjutant beside him who was mostly talking to Miller and many. As a recipient of the Medal of Honor for both islands, Rain felt he could join in the fun. He tried to go up and say hello but was stopped by the Navy before he could get close enough. Hey, do you guys know who I am? Let me tell you, standing in front of you is. Soldier, let Captain Rain in, just then Miller said. It felt bad to be interrupted. Rain had planned to show off a bit. Captain Rain, let me introduce, Admiral Sigel. This is Captain Rain, 
The hero who saved Solomon Island, Miller introduced Rain to the admiral. Sigel looked at him and nodded his head. Rain thought to himself, well, an aloof admiral. Admiral Sigel gave him a very wry feeling. He seemed to be standing there, but also seemed to be absent. At that moment, his adjutant whispered something behind him. Time to go, said. Admiral Sigel led the group of officers back to the ship. Hey, don't have a meal? Such a hurry? Seeing their distant backs, Rain had a stomach full of doubts. Miller, why would an admiral appear in human-class waters? What are they doing here? Miller looked at Rain and said with a smile, Admiral Sigel is just passing by Solomon Island for resupply. Their destination is the King-class sea. King-class sea. Rain suddenly remembered that the little scaly dragon's mother also left here to rush to the King-class sea. Something seemed to have happened at King-class sea. Rain shook his head. Whatever happened, none of his business. Rain saw that Admiral Sigel stood at the bow of the ship, slowly raised his right arm, then his hand suddenly clenched into a fist. The hundreds of battleships that were just in front of Rain's eyes instantly disappeared. What? What the hell? Rain got his eyes widened. This is the ability of Sigel, one of the three admirals of the Navy space. Teleportation is just one of the ways it can be used. Miller explained to Rain. Spatial teleportation? Wouldn't that be invincible? Of course, this ability has a drawback, that is, ahem, nothing important. Rain was a little envious. Although the body of the son of Poseidon can learn most of the skills, this kind of ability that requires spatial talent obviously cannot be learned. In passing the high mast, Rain could not help but look up at the little booty parked on the mast. The guy still looks the way every day, showing loneliness and deep. This guy was given to them by show. Rain felt that this guy was a bit like Sho. Although it was not like White or the little scaly dragon clinging to him all day long, there was no doubt that it was also who Rain cannot ignore. Shob, you said you will wait for us, but you are about to die. 100 consecutive wins, 2 games a month. How many games can you last? This time Rain purchased a huge amount of materials, especially the demand for steel. The supply of the materials on the island did not meet their demand, the suppliers intended to transfer from Bankra Island. Rain bought all the materials he could when knew about it. Then he took these delivery ships and returned to Bankra Island together. Two months later, the group arrived at Bankra Island, and Rain finally bought all the materials. Rain had no time to attend those messy reception dinners, so he simply dragged Hallowell and Hughes to his base for dinner together. Nowadays, Dad's base was already quite good. The base had built a small trading market surrounded by the island army patrol. The base in front of the mooring port parking space was lack that usually needed to book to have a seat. Almost all of the livestock in the mountains were free range. The fish farms on the east side were also built in a decent manner, and there were people responsible for them. The trading market here was not large, but because it was tax-free and the price was 10% lower than outside, the business here was brisk. Usually, there were second-hand dealers waiting here early in the morning, and the goods were snapped up as soon as they hit the shelves. For more than a year, the quality of life of the base residents had not only improved substantially but also saved more than 30,000 pearls. The 15 Sea God clans reign brought back this time were so excited and incoherent when they arrived here. They would soon be integrated into life here as well after fancy, and the others arranged their accommodation. Rain, you're doing well here. Hallowell looked at the busy people and nodded his head frequently. Not worth mentioning, I am just taking advantage of Bankra Island. Rain laughed. Don't be modest. It is also you use the strength in exchange for the qualification. We have long seen you have a very united people here, Hughes said, if you have the opportunity to get an island in the future, you will make money just by sitting at home. Hallowell said with a smile, no, with Brother Rain and the ability of these crew members, it can definitely develop better than our Bankra Island. Rain frowned slightly, this is not the character of these two guys. What the hell are they doing? By the way, I heard that there will be a new island appearing two years after in the Beast Class C. Many forces will go to fight for the island. Is that so? Governor, there's actually a new island. This is a very rare opportunity. If Captain Rain can get this island, the development speed will definitely go up to by several steps. Rain understood, these two guys said a lot, just wanted to instigate him to go to the Beast Class C. Hallowell, you do not fucking with me. Are you going to tell me about Shob next? Rain asked directly. Well, haha brother, look at what you said, how would I? But showed the guy is indeed enough bad luck that followed Captain Lewis. The fleet command was a major mistake, and he was also stupid enough. He could have run, 
but he went back for his old subordinate ritual. No wonder he got caught. Rain didn't blame Hallowell this time, just said lightly, no one can do 100 consecutive wins? Of course. They are just not going to let people get free in this way. They can always find stronger opponents. I remember there was a man in the past who got 90 consecutive wins. And then Rex himself came down and ended him. Holy shit. Rex can still come down personally? Rain was surprised. Isn't that against the rules of the tournament? Yeah, but so what? In the Beast Class C, who dares to disobey the words of the Beast King? Rain frowned and pondered for a moment, then asked, How many rounds do you think Shobe can last? Shobe is very strong and is the top even in the Navy Lieutenant. He was stage 4 level 4 when he went to the Beast level C. These years should be able to raise one level. If it is stage 4 level 5, I think it can support up to 70 or 80 games. Of course, it depends on luck. Hallowell said seriously it is hard to say if he meets some powerful creatures. Rain calculated. Special circumstances were temporarily disregarded. This thing could not be calculated. Under normal circumstances, Shobe had 35 months if he stick to 70 games. Three years. Rain said leisurely, three years. When Hallowell and the others left, Hughes left five bags of coffee and a generation of cereal. They knew Rain loved these things. It was thoughtful. In the evening, Rain took the crew out of the port in the night with three rented transport boats. They stopped at 400 nautical miles from Bankra Island. The men on board lay on the fence, staring at the sea of material with nervousness. On the sea around the ship, the little scaly dragon also showed a head and looked at the materials curiously. It didn't understand why everyone on the ship was so nervous. Captain, hurry up, I can't wait. Fancy pulled Rain's sleeve and said, What's the next ship? Rain said impatiently, Don't rush, I'll go back to the captain's room. You guys keep an eye on it. Not long after, the materials worth 1.5 million pearls on the sea began to be put together quickly. Rain began to evolve. It took 40 minutes to make the new ship this time. The crowd was stunned one by one when the new ship was finally presented in front of them. Wow, this is, what kind of ship? It's awesome just looking at it. Rain did look out for this ship. If it was the era of sailing ships, the British ships were the real hegemon of the sea. Then the ship was the regicide that pulled the hegemon off the throne. After his consciousness shifted, Rain quickly opened his attribute list. Host Rain, ship, reinforced ironclad warship, reinforced French Napoleon. The Napoleon, the biggest difference with the traditional ship had two points. First, the whole body was wrapped in a heavy iron sheet and defense power increased dramatically. Second, in addition to sail power, Napoleon increased the steam engine power. It can be said that Napoleon is the milestone from artificial and natural wind power to the direction of technological power. 133. Torpedo. Rain couldn't wait to continue to check the new ship's attributes. Cabin, 40. Open air cabin, 8. Power cabin, 80. Crew cabin, 124. Firepower cabin, 2. Large storage cabin, 40. Underwater torpedo tubes. Torpedo tubes? Holy shit does that mean? I have torpedoes? Rain instantly got excited. But now there was still a lot of data not read. Rain read patiently first. Cruise size. 22. All positions have been assigned. Open to view details. Ship speed. 28 knots maximum. Open for details. Battle power. 45,144.1. Can be viewed in the crew information and weapon system. Load capacity. 445-2400 tons. Open for details. Evolution. 8 million pearls open for details. This ship was 66 meters long and 13 meters wide, smaller than the historical Napoleon. But there was an advantage of being small, that is it has a maximum speed of 28 knots. The historical Napoleon's maximum speed was only 13 knots due to the lack of perfect steam engine technology. Such speed obviously could not meet the requirements of the current Azure era. At the same time, the sails were retained on board so that the high speed could be maintained when the steam engine was not used, which greatly saved fuel. Two rows of folding oars were added to the stern of the ship. These folding oars not only helped to increase the speed of the ship, but also facilitated the steering. Sixteen turbine steam engines were placed in eight adjacent powerhouses to provide power. Shit, this is the point of reinforced Napoleon. There are sixteen turbine steam engines, more than twice as many as the Napoleon. The new ship's hull became bigger than the British warship and the number of cabins also increased. Especially the firepower cabin, 32 more. The biggest change of the hull was that it was all covered with metal. Although it did not reach full metal construction,
the interior of the hull was still made of wood, and the surface layer of metal was considerably thicker than before. This ship had really appeared to qualitative changes. Rain quickly opened the weapon system, which was now his main concern. Fragment Storm Cannon, Attack Power, 200, Quantity 90, Total Attack Power, 18,000, Destroyer Storm Mortar, Attack Power, 100, Quantity 30, Total Attack Power, 3,000, Lurker Storm Shallow Water Bomb, Attack Power, 250, Quantity 30, Total Attack Power, 7,500, Lurker Storm Spiral Torpedo, Attack Power, 250, Quantity 40, Total Attack Power, 10,000, Bow Thunder Cannon, Attack Power, 800, Quantity 2, Total Attack Power, 1,600, Stern Meteor Howitzer, Attack Power, 2,250, Quantity 2, Total Attack Power, 4,500, First Class Iron Armor Hull, 2,000 Defense Power, Seeing so many weapons, Rain couldn't help but suck in a breath. His weapon system combat power had reached 44,600. Together with the crew, his total battle power had exceeded 45,000, almost doubling that of the British warship. The new 30 cannons, 10 mortars, one bow gun, and one stern gun were added to the weapon system. And a new weapon, the lurker torpedo with 40 rounds. Rain finally had time to look at the torpedoes he had been concerned about. Although from the point of view of attack power, this type of torpedo seemed to have relatively low attack power with a speed of 25 knots, and a maximum range of 5,000 meters. These data were far from modern torpedoes. But, there was no doubt that this thing was a secret weapon. At least Rain had not encountered any ship equipped with torpedoes yet. For the current ships, the wooden hull was definitely the weak link. The torpedo just one shot was enough to make the enemy ship hull damage, leak, and sink. Awesome. I finally have torpedoes. This time the ships were not upgraded with several times the combat power at once like before. But the key was that Rain got the torpedoes he had always wanted. In addition, the ship's defense was 2,000 points. The general artillery had been unable to damage the hull. But my crossbow is gone. Rain kind of missed his large crossbow. That thing was useful. But the power was too small after all. The new weapon had completely replaced it. It doesn't matter. Afraid there aren't many ships that can get close to me under such heavy firepower. The crew was touring their new ship excitedly. Holy shit, look. The decks are covered with metal. Captain, are we already invincible in the human class C? It's so fierce. I think we can go to the beast class C. Rain retransferred his consciousness back to the flesh of the son of Poseidon and came out. Don't chatter here. Just upgrade a ship. What's so exciting? Why don't you like me have been around? I'll go and pack up your belongings. After the items were transferred they were piled up on the deck. Everyone hurried to pack their belongings. Although the crew that first followed Rain had seen him upgrade the ship several times, this time they were unable to calm down as well. An ironclad ship was simply a bug-like existence in human-class waters where the vast majority of ships were wooden. Captain, Captain, do we really go to the beast class C? To save show? Avril pulled Rain and shook around. You definitely want to go, don't you? Rain rolled his eyes at her. You go. I don't want to die right now. Our ships have indeed become stronger. But think about our enemy. Five fleets at least F8 rank. Facing them, we still only have a dead end. Rain said besides, you should not forget that, in addition to the ship, the crew's strength should also be taken into account. Tick hold the excitement, came over, and said that's right. The Beast King Rex is very strong. Since the King Pirates have been always burning and plundering in the Beast Class C, their strength is extremely powerful. We must be cautious. Rain suddenly thought of a question and asked, Tick, do you know that there are other strong people under Rex? There are. Armin walked over. He has four fierce generals under him that all with strength above stage 4 level 5. That's what was written on the wanted notice last year. Stage 4 level 5. The crowd froze. The highest rank they had on board now was Tick. And he was only stage 3 level 7. Rain thought about it and said, We definitely go to beast class C. But not now. Next, we first have a casual wandering in the human class C. Ah, another. Fancy had a disappointed look on her face. 134, farm pirates. This day, a G-class pirate was sailing on the sea. The sea had some fog and visibility was not too high. The wind and waves under the calm, and they just did a successful robbery. Everyone was in a very good mood. Suddenly, the bottom of 17 ships shook violently followed by a serious sinking of all the ships. Captain, 
Our ship seems to have been hit by something. The bottom of the ship is leaking badly and is sinking fast. Captain, we've been hit too. Captain, Captain Jarrah's face was full of dismay. What the hell is going on here? Did we encounter a sea monster? However, there was no movement around. But all 17 ships were sinking rapidly without exception. At this moment, a series of cannon fires suddenly sounded in the distance, followed by a large number of shells falling from the air and hitting the ships. The ships already on the verge of the sinking could not stand to be bombarded, and the hull collapsed, killing and injuring the crew in large numbers. Before Jareth could understand what was going on, he had already been hit through the thigh by a bomb fragment and collapsed on the deck. Pull me into the lifeboat. Holy shit, what the hell is this? Boom 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 boom. A carpet of shells came to the fleet once again. Jareth watched a shell explode around him and countless fragments pierced his body. He had been battered and bruised by shells. At that moment, he could not even find a living person on the ship. Jareth dragged his crippled body toward the bow deck through the collapsed and burning mast. He wanted to see who was attacking him. Even if he was to die, at least as an understood ghost. Not long after, a large warship came slowly from the mists. Only one ship? It didn't look like anything special. Jareth couldn't believe his eyes a bit. And what was more shocking was still behind. On the bow deck of that ship, an 11 or 12 year old boy threw a piece of wood stick away. A white Labrador happily went after it. Next to the boy, a cute girl yelled to play. A woman in mariner's clothing, sitting on the bow deck of the ship looking at the book in her hands. There was a large crew on board that was training under the command of a tall man. Beside their ship, a black boa was rising and falling with its horrible head. This was not like a ship ready for battle, it was simply a passing crowd. Jareth looked up along the main mast, and finally, he saw the flag. It's... Dad. A bomb exploded around him before the words were out of his mouth. Lurker storm torpedoes with a range of 5,000 meters, which means that rain can easily sink their enemy as soon as they detect them. Together with the mortar attack, the opponent is simply powerless. It is worth mentioning that the system is still very cunning to paint the metal outer skin of the ship into the wood texture. So even if people see their ship, they will definitely think it is an ordinary wooden structure warship. After coming around these wrecks, Avril looked around at the wrecks and crossed the name off in her notebook. Magic Eye Pirates. Rain also put down the wooden stick and said, Hey, you all do not idle. Go to find the treasure chest and metal. Do not take more metal, just enough to replenish ammunition on the line. One bear and two bear waited for this order have been a long time. The two brothers did not say anything and even their clothes were not off. They directly jumped into the sea and began their journey of searching for treasure. Arson and the small scaly dragon also quickly dived into the bottom of the sea and began to look for the treasure chests on the 17 ships. The others quickly collected the metal they could. Hey, I really got carried away. Rain shook his head. He was only interested in treasure chests now. This is not a good habit. This was already the 63rd pirate they have eliminated in a year. This year, they shuttled around the various areas of the human class sea, specializing in areas with a high concentration of pirates to farm them. After the upgrade, Rain did not have to engage head-on to kill pirates but with long-range strikes. This time, they scraped more than 30,000 pearls from the Magic Eye Pirates. Two primary skill books, one primary treasure map, and six VIP cards of nearby pirates. Rain shook his head, oh my god, again? Only a few tens of thousands? I found a lot of pirates are very poor. 30,000 pearls are certainly not considered poor, but it is indeed a bit shabby in Rain's eyes. Captain, pirates on the Iron Road had trade with Jack, so they were relatively rich. Other pirates do not have this kind of treatment. Usually, they will have a little money in April and May after robbing a lot of ships and later will become poorer and poorer. Like now at this time, a ship can be left with 10,000 or 20,000 pearls is already good enough. Armin explained. Armin read more and more books and her knowledge base was getting richer and richer. She had been able to answer many of Rain's questions. Two Bear dumped all the pearls into their large treasure chest, which was already piled high. After a busy year, they had only earned 1.8 million pearls, far less than they got on the Iron Road. Plus what was left over from before, now they had 4 million pearls. Only 1.8 million a year. It's still the most profitable on the Iron Road. Rain sighed. At this rate, at most another year and a half is certainly enough. It was just that Rain now also needed to buy a better Poseidon fruit, he did not know how much it will cost. Armin, is there any bigger island nearby? We'll turn in the bounty quest first, sell those treasure maps, 
and see if there's any sea god fruit by the way. This time they find a few treasure maps that were cheap goods, just about a thousand pearls. The cost effectiveness of searching in person is too low, it is better to sell. As for the sea god fruit, Rain now finally understood the value of this thing, which is something he can ask for. They have turned seven islands this year and saw one or two, but always feel too ordinary to buy it. They never bought the sea god fruit, and now Rain's level almost was surpassed by his crew. The nearest island to Rain was Yubatan Island, a large island twice as big as Solomon Island. Many ships coming and going. This was Rain's first time on Yubatan Island, and it was customary for them to register at the entrance. Dad? His eyes seemed to remember this name. The person in charge of registration tried his best to recall. Rain had a confident smile. It looked like the fame of Dad has become more and more famous. It had actually spread to such a faraway place. I remember I laughed my head off when I first saw this bounty group. The staff member said to himself. Rain had black lines on his face. It seemed that he was thinking too much. Oh, I found it. It's an F1 bounty group. The man checked the registration information and was surprised. Is it a mistake? I remember it was still Subji the last time I saw it. Now it's already F1? Rain shook his head and looked at the man. At this time, Rain behind a bearded man in the back yelled. Hurry up. The auction will soon begin. I heard that there is rare sea god fruit for sale this time. I can't wait. This sentence instantly attracted the attention of countless people around. Among them was Rain. Rare sea god fruit? Finally, he met it. In other words, there was finally hope for his second evolution. 135. Warriors of Sea King Island. The guy at the back of the line was just bluffing to get into the island early. In fact, the auction didn't start until the evening. It was a luxurious port inside the wall where the cost of a day's mooring was as high as 10 pearls. But Rain would certainly not put 10 pearls in his eyes now. With nothing else to do, Rain took Fancy and the others for a spin around the slave market. Two and a half years had passed since the sack of Sea King Island, and now it was not easy to find the Sea God clans. Many ships transporting transoceanically had more serious crew attrition and often bought slaves to fill the gap, so it was hard to find them once they were bought. But there still some local ships bought some of the Sea King Islanders. Rain bought 24 Sea King Islanders from those people for an amount 20% higher than the general price. Together with this batch, Rain had bought back 108 Sea King Islanders this year, including 12 mutants. Boss, so you are so interested in the slaves of Sea King Island. In fact, two years ago, there was also a ship trying to buy people from Sea King Island. Tom, the guide of the trading area, said attentively, he has already bought almost all the people of the original Sea King Island. These that you bought were shipped over later, so the number is small. VIPs in the trading area are all equipped with a special guide, and Tom was Rain's guide. Oh, Rain frowned at Tom and saw that he was rubbing his hands, eyes looking at the money bag in Avril's hand. He saw Rain was liberal with money, which was why he said the information. Avril, Rain said, Avril immediately understood. She opened the money bag, Rain grabbed a handful of pearls from inside, about twenty or thirty, and waved in front of Tom, tell me all you know, these pearls will be yours. The ordinary guide gets the boss at most one or two pearls at a time, and Rain grabbed a handful at a time. Tom's eyes lit up. Boss, you really found the right person. I happened to be the one who entertained them that time. Two years ago, when the slaves from Sea King Island had just been sent to Yabatan Island, it didn't take long for a ship to come over. The captain of the ship was a middle-aged man, about 1 meter 85, dressed in black, wearing a black cloak, and wearing an eye patch. In short, could not see his face. He was not very generous. That batch of Sea King Island slaves were more numerous five or six hundred people, including many mutants. These slaves sold well. Only more than two hundred people left when the guy came. Since the proportion of Sea King mutants is relatively high, so the price is not low. He came three times in total, and each time he would bargain with the seller for a long time. He came to buy in three times, so he didn't buy all the Sea King Island slaves in the end. Let me think. Yes, he only bought more than one hundred people, costing a total of eighty thousand pearls. I remember clearly, the guy also let me take him around the island. But because of the lack of money, he only bought two or three scattered Sea King Islanders. I accompanied him for two days, but only got a pearl as a tip. Tom was still haunted by this to this day. Rain was quite amazed at what that middle-aged man was and why he was also buying Sea King Islanders. And he seemed to be pouring his money into the purchase. That man should be the mutant. 
He has seven or eight other people on board and seems to be very strong. I saw with my own eyes that they almost clashed with the people of the black prison merchants. There is a woman in there, although with a veil to see the face, that figure, TSK, TSK, I really wanted to. But that woman really not easy to mess with, a punch to the fighter of the black prison merchants on the fly a long way, and finally stopped by the man in black. They paid the money to finish the matter. Tom kept staring at the pearl in Rain's hand, doing his best to recall all relevant memories. Oh, by the way, you may not believe it. I witnessed that black man cry bitterly when he learned that someone bought a hundred sea king's slaves. Ha ha ha, an adult man cried like a retard, really shame. Hearing this, Rain already had something in mind. What's the sign on their ship? Oh, they are a bounty group. I have checked. It is called Revenge. At that time, it was a sub -G bounty group and they just had one ship. Rain narrowed his eyes slightly, Revenge. Okay, I get it, you go. Rain thought about it with hands loose. Hands of the pearl fell half back into the money bag. Rain only took the remaining two pearls out. Tom was surprised to look at Rain. Well, boss, business is about honesty. You, this is a little unkind. Rain faintly looked at the man. Too little? I think too much. Honesty? You betrayed your employer's information. And it's a coincidence that the person you're laughing at happens to be my friend. So now take the money and get the hell out. Tom's face instantly showed a fierce light. But Tick stood in front of Rain. Tom looked at Tick's tall figure. He could only bite his tongue. Rain didn't care about the money. But Tom's face really made Rain unhappy. Back in the captain's room. Rain asked Fancy and the others, Do you know who they are? Tick said with great certainty, Yes, the one in black is one of our Sea King clan's top ten warriors, True King. That woman is his sister, True Queen. There are a few people, that's True King's men. They usually make money outside in exchange for some living supplies for the family. The time the black prison merchants came to attack the Sea King island, they just happened to be not in. Tobear's eyes were slightly red, they originally had four boats. It looks like they sold them. They must still be looking for other clansmen. Fancy hurriedly said, Captain, can we find them? Rain certainly wanted to find them. These people are strong. And the most critical thing is, free. No hurry. Go to the auction first. After that, we go to look for clues. Rain said. In the evening, Rain and others went to the auction house. Stop. Do you have invitations? Two security guards at the door stopped Rain and the others. Invitations? We need an invitation for an auction. Avril questioned, you think we haven't attended an auction before? The man looked Avril up and down, his gaze lingered on Avril's chest for a few seconds, and said contemptuously, usually auctions don't require it, but this one is different. You are not eligible to enter without a VIP card or an invitation. Look at you all dressed so shabbily, I'm afraid you can't even take out 1000 pearls. Get lost without an invitation, unless you are willing to spend the evening with me to have fun. By the way, let those two women come along and accompany us brothers to have some fun. The surrounding security guards let out a lustful laugh. Rain had encountered this kind of situation too many times. In the past, he could only be a bystander when he had no body. But now it was different. Rain walked up to the doorman and gave him a slap. The man was slapped away, hitting the wall hard and rebounding to the ground. The surrounding guards saw this and all gathered around. Rain snorted coldly, Arson, someone wants you to play with them. Arson understood and shrugged her shoulders, then I'll have to reluctantly agree. 136. Intense bidding. Within a short time, all of these guards were already lying on the ground in pain. The auction manager rushed out, saw this scene, and looked angrily at Rain. How dare you make trouble in front of the auction? I am gonna have the army come and give you a lesson right away. Arson rubbed her wrist and returned behind Rain. Your men want to have some fun with me. I naturally have to meet it. Compared to fighting and brawling, I remember that the punishment for harassing a woman should be executed on the spot, right? Seeing that the manager was going to say something else, Rain said impatiently, Open for business, you treat your VIPs like this and still want to make money? VIPs? What kind of VIPs are you? The security guard who had just been slapped by Rain rushed to the manager, Boss, they don't even have an invitation, much less a VIP card. Rain snorted Armin. Armin opened her black leather bag and took out a stack of cards from it. Rain took the cards and asked the manager, Is this what you're talking about? The manager got his eyes widened as soon as he saw the cards. The auction house VIP card is very precious and people need to spend 100,000 pearls in the auction house to get it. A pirate has two or three at most, but this man has at least 70 or 80 VIP cards in his hands. Rain took VIP cards flung in the face of the doorman one after another. Enough? 
Is this what you want? Snob ass. When he got to the 20th, the manager couldn't hold back and turned around and slapped the guy hard in the face. Waste, you dare to mess with such big customers. Get out, all of you get out. Turning his head, the manager's face was full of smiles. Sir, I'm really sorry. This is definitely our fault. Please calm down. Rain participated in no less than 30 auctions. As long as people talk to him nicely, he has never trouble with others. It was these few people that rely on the store to bully customers. He just shot out a lesson. Sir, don't let this bunch of losers disturb your pleasure. This way, I will arrange the best VIP room for you. Rain put away the VIP card, nodded slightly, and led the crowd to follow the manager into the auction house. Not long after, fruits and drinks were delivered to the box, and the manager came to apologize again. Sir, I'm really sorry, these drinks are all free. It's our most sincere apology. Rain smiled lightly, forget it, you guys go out. I don't like to have outsiders next to me when bidding. Fine, fine, enjoy yourselves, everyone. The manager exited the room and wiped the sweat on his forehead. Holy shit, what the hell is the origin of these guys? Where did they get so many VIP cards? Luckily they didn't angry, otherwise the boss would chop me to death. Go to teach those few trash a lesson. The auction had already started, and the opening is an advanced treasure map with starting price of 5,000 pearls. Rain had never encountered an advanced treasure map, but it was not his goal so he did not bid. Next, there were intermediate armor, intermediate weapons, skill books, scrap voyage maps, sea monster collectibles, stage 3 mutants, extremely beautiful slaves, ship drawings, and even entire ships, in a variety of ways, and everything. The atmosphere of the auction reached a high point again and again, but Rain's side was surprisingly quiet. Captain, it seems to be quiet in the other boxes as well. Avril observed that most of the other boxes on the second floor had been as quiet as they had been. I guess they all came for the Poseidon fruit, Tick said. The auction gradually came to an end. When a high-level skill book was sold for 110,000 pearls, the host stepped onto the auction stage. Seven or eight staff members followed him and pushed out an iron box. The host excitedly said to the whole guests, I know many people are waiting for the last lot, and are you bad an auction house will never let you down. The best always save for the last. The following lot is already known to many people. Rare Sea God Fruit. With a clang, the box was opened, and the Sea God Fruit was finally presented to everyone. It was a huge Sea God Fruit with a faint golden glow all over, twice the size of a normal other. Having seen many Poseidon Fruits, Rain already knew that the types of Poseidon Fruits could not be identified. But there was one thing that could roughly identify their rarity of them. The ordinary Poseidon Fruit is green which does not exclude the chance of the best, but the vast majority are ordinary. Only the other colors of the sea god fruit are truly rare that have a greater chance of appearing extremely high quality. For example, Avril's golden Poseidon fruit, Terry's white Poseidon fruit, and Armin's purple Poseidon fruit. Of these three Poseidon fruits, Avril's is the rarest, followed by Armin's that rare flight type, while Terry is less lucky. But rhino mutation is also considered in the upper in the land creature mutation. This one is golden too, Rain couldn't help but wonder if this Poseidon fruit will be the same as Avril's, a support type. The entire audience couldn't help but stand up after seeing this Poseidon fruit. Wow, it's a golden fruit. It's really a rare sea god fruit. I haven't seen a golden sea god fruit before. How much is the starting bid for this? The host answered soon, sea god fruit. The starting price is 1.5 million pearls. Each bid will be increased by a minimum of 50,000 pearls. The whole room was in an uproar. 1.5 million pearls? This was undoubtedly an astronomical amount. In the entire Ubatan island, there were no more than five people who can put up such a large amount at once. But this was only the starting price. As soon as the host's voice fell, someone in the box next to Rain raised his bid. Our Mr. Belly looks very interested in it. Good, Mr. Belly bids 1.55 million. VIP number 8 bids 1.6 million. VIP number 3 bids VIP number 3 raised his bid directly by 100,000. 1. 1.7 million. For a while, the guests in the ordinary area below had been completely left to watch the show. The only ones who could raise their cards were the VIPs on the second floor. VIP number 20 raised his bid by 200,000. Bid 1.9 million. 1.9 million. The host said excitedly. Wow, a direct raise of 200,000. How rich. My goodness. 1.9 million. You can buy four ordinary sea god fruits. The amount of the raise alone is more than the price of all the previous auction items. 
That seems to be the owner of the wind and cloud merchant house. There shouldn't be anyone else raising the price. Who can fight with them? The bid of guest number 20 instantly subdued all the bidders, and this price was already very high. When the bid came to 1.9 million, the bidding finally became moderated. The few competitors seemed to be deliberating whether to continue bidding. VIP number 20 bid 1.9 million. Is there any higher? The host waited for a moment and began to read the auction. 1.9 million once. 1.9 million twice. Rain finally raised his bid. VIP number 6 raised his bid. 1.95 million. Just as the host's voice fell, he saw the wind and cloud raise the card. VIP number 20 raised another 200,000. 2.15 million. VIP number 6 2.2 million. Rain added 50,000. VIP number 22.4 million. Wind and cloud added 200,000. Number 6 2,450,000. Rain added 50,000. Number 22,650,000. Wind and cloud added 200,000 again. Number 6 2.7 million. Rain doesn't care anyway. Just add 50,000 each time. Number 22,750,000. Wind and cloud suddenly pressed the price to 50,000. Number 6 2,800,000. Rain still only added 50,000 at a time. 137. Naga's gaze. 2.8 million once. Since the second floor boxes were all side by side and the two were far apart so neither could see the other. But Rain noticed that number 20 was taking longer and longer to think. VIP number 20 bids 3. Oh, not 3 million? Sorry, 2.85 million. Number 20 bids 2.85 million. Before the moderator's words fell, Rain raised his card again. VIP number 6 bids 2.9 million. 2 million 900,000 once. 2 million 900,000 twice. 2 million 900,000, three times. Deal. Rain finally breathed a sigh of relief. He had finally taken this golden sea god fruit. The auction was over and Rain had someone pick up the sea god fruit. After completing the transaction, just as he was about to leave the auction house, a group of people happened to pass by Rain and others. The dozen of them stared at Rain with slightly narrowed eyes as they passed by, seemingly not too friendly. Who are they? Rain asked. The auction house manager hurriedly said, Captain Rain, they are your opponents the Wind and Cloud Merchant Bank. The middle-aged man at the head of them is the president of the Ubatan branch of the Wind and Cloud Merchant Bank, Koopa. Just now you snatched the sea god fruit from their hands. It looks like they have anger in their hearts, the manager added. Rain snorted coldly. I don't care whatever the merchant bank. I don't buy it. Taking the Poseidon fruit, Rain took his crew back to his ship. At this time, the room was only Avril and Tick. Arson and the others guarded the door. Fancy went to check on the people of the Sea King Island. Captain, I wonder what the effect of this fruit is. Avril was also quite curious. Tick looked a little excited. Humans can only mutate once due to the body structure. I've never seen anyone mutate twice. Rain didn't care so much. He opened the golden Poseidon fruit and ate it. Avril and Tick nervously stared at Rain. Ten minutes, twenty minutes, half an hour. Rain sensed that his body had fused with the new ability. And he called up the data. Rain, Captain, Son of Poseidon Flesh, Hatchling Stage 3 Level 1 1 out of 10, Base Attributes 34 times more than a normal human, Combat Power, 68, Second Mutation, Naga's Gaze Primary 1 out of 10, Skill Information, At the current level, looking at an enemy unit for 60 seconds will cause it to freeze for 0.1 seconds. The freeze time varies according to the difference between the opponent and the user's basic attributes. The skill requires mental energy to activate. It can be used up to 5 times in a row. Cooldown time, 2 hours. Freeze time description. The enemy's basic attributes decay by 1% effect for every 1 point above the users, and increase by 1% effect for every 1 point below the users. Base attributes enjoy various additive or decay effects. After reading this complex string of instructions, Rain was so excited that he had some difficulty breathing. After hanging with the Azure Era for so long, Rain also figured out that the skills of the mutant are divided into two kinds. One of these is innate skills, such as Avril's cell control, and others' transformations, all brought about by taking the Poseidon fruit. This kind of skill can always be upgraded. There is another kind of training through skill books to obtain, Arson's Vortex Strangling, and so on. More advanced skills need more advanced skill books. In short, one is the talent brought about by the mutation and one is the acquired learning of the skill. Take Avril for example, 
the support mutations did not have much effect on her physical strengthening, but Rain's basic attribute growth has doubled after this upgrade. It's probably not the effect of the Poseidon fruit, but the flesh of the son of Poseidon after two mutations. Rain deduced. If Rain's guess was correct, that would be amazing. The growth of the son of Poseidon's flesh would increase with each additional mutation. Leaving aside the situation of Poseidon's flesh, Rain was now more interested in the skill he acquired this time, not his gaze. Avril's cell control was the strongest skill on Rain's ship, and this skill he got this time seems to be not weak either. Although its effect only 0.1 seconds, now it was level 1. If he can extend the effect time, this effect would be awesome, and the attributes are exactly what Rain has. Captain, how is it? Avril asked anxiously. Rain looked at Avril. It has been successfully fused. What's the effect? Tick was also anxious. Rain thought about it and said to Tick, Tick, I'll try. You stand still and look me in the eyes. 10 seconds, 20 seconds. To be honest, 60 seconds is a bit too much. Tick looked a bit embarrassed by Rain's hot gaze. Captain, you, why do you so stare at me? What in the end you are thinking? We are impossible. Rain had black lines on his forehead. He just wanted to test his skill. Fine, he also felt a little uncomfortable with staring at Tick the old man. Forget it, you go away. Avril you come. Facing the deep gaze, Avril's face got red. Captain, what in the end the skill? I always feel your eyes strange. Rain was about to cry. He found this skill seems to be very dumb. Before the fight, he has to have a deep gaze for 60 seconds with the other side. Okay, just see what the effect of the upgrade will be. Don't talk, look at my eyes. It was hard to last 60 seconds. Rain felt his eyes dry up a bit. Suddenly, Avril's gaze was lax. This time was very short, but Avril almost felt just at that moment. Just now, what's going on? Avril said in shock. Rain was satisfied with the effect of this test and smiled faintly. This is my new skill. Naga's gaze. 138, devil. The rescued Sea King Islanders were resting in the crew cabin, and it is afraid they haven't rested so casually for a long time. Fancy looked at her clans with relief. Although they had only rescued a very small number of them now, it was better than when they had only despair. One bear's eyes burned with determination as he said, The captain will save more people. We'll all live well. By the way, where do you guys think True King and the others will go? Two bear asked, It would be nice to find them. Will they go to our original island? One bear guessed. It was at that moment that Rain came down to join in the conversation. I think that True King is a forbearing man so I guess he shouldn't go to see King Island. All three of them turned their heads to look at Rain, who continued, they're currently in a tighter financial situation. So I think what they're doing right now must be making money. What the fastest makes money? That would naturally be to find pirates. So it wouldn't be hard to find them, just extrapolate from the bounty missions they've recently completed and deduce where they're moving. Fancy looked at Rain excitedly. Captain, then shall we look for Brother True King now? Rain let out a long sigh. I've just spent 2.9 million, and now I only have 1.1 million in my savings. We need to be more efficient for the next two years to make it work. Otherwise, I definitely won't be able to upgrade my ship in two years. This way, first thing in the morning we'll go to the Navy and hand over the mission, then get some information about True King and the others and head out to sea to find them. This year Rain and the gang had eliminated 63 pirate groups, receiving a total of 136,000 pearls in bounty money as well as an equal amount of points rewarded. They had moved up one level to the F2 bounty group and had 44,300 points left over. Each level requires 100,000 points after F class. It is difficult to earn that many points in human class waters, which is probably why F class bounty groups do not usually appear in human class waters. Of course, Rain didn't care that his rank had exceeded the map requirements. All he wanted was safe. After taking 10 pearls to a navy corporal, Rain got the information they needed. The last two places where the Revenge has handed in missions have been on Bacchus Island, 700 nautical miles west of the Ubatan. They appear to have been there for some time. After receiving the news, Rain set sail immediately after plotting a course with Armin and the others. It would take Rain about a month and a half to reach Bacchus Island with his speed now, but Rain didn't want to go straight to True King and the others. He had pirates to destroy along the way. True King and the others were not going to get away anyway. So the most important thing was to make money, and he was poor. Ten days later, Rain entered the main shipping lane of the textile road, an area of the sea where piracy was rampant, and where Rain wanted to hunt. Three months later, in the tavern of Ryukyu Island, a small transit island. At this time of the year, 
Most of the seafarers had already gone out to sea with their ships, and very few of the islanders would spend money here, so the tavern was supposed to have little business. But for some reason, more and more people have been coming over to drink recently. Most of them were dusty, haggard, and depressed. Almost everyone was talking about the strange happenings in the nearby waters. A G3 pirate group was suddenly attacked by unidentified gunfire when they held a wedding at sea for Captain Rosen and all 21 ships were sunk. A G2 pirate group, the chaotic pirates, were attacked from behind while robbing at sea and all 18 ships were sunk. The G4 Primus pirates and the G4 Corrosion pirates were attacked by unknown ships when trading at sea and a total of 46 ships were sunk. The most horrific thing was the massacre that happened half a month ago. A drunken scruffy sailor with a beer in his hand, his eyes full of fear. That time a total of seven pirate groups were gathering at sea to discuss the mysterious pirate killer that had appeared so far. The fleet was 100 times more insane than a crazy revenge a year and a half ago. Just as everyone was about to unite all the pirates and search for that bounty group, we were hit by an unprecedented and ferocious firepower strike. Over 200 ships, 40 ships were torpedoed. Yes, I'm talking about torpedoes. It's amazing that kind of terrible weapon would appear in human class waters. Then another 40, 40 in each batch, 6 batches in all, and not a single ship was able to escape. We hadn't even spotted them before they started to sink. That's when we saw a warship approaching out of the mist, followed by a huge number of guns fired from that ship, carpet bombing our 200 or so ships. Oh oh. You can't imagine how horrible that scene was. No one could escape. The shell fragments took the lives of I don't know how many people. They oh, after sinking all the ships, they didn't even stop and continued to bombard the fleeing crew, the survivor less than one out of ten. The guy said while crying bitterly, and it was obvious that this one had escaped from that battle. A strange sympathetic atmosphere permeated the tavern, and the guy's sobs immediately evoked empathy from those around him. They, they simply do not treat us pirates like human beings. I've never seen such a heartless bounty group, oh. They even killed the captain. I think they are simply killing for the sake of killing. You know that they can get more bounty if captured alive, they don't care at all. Hey, what's the use of talking about this? I think you are all escaped pirates too. A friend told me that the pirates over on the Iron Road were almost killed to the last one by one ship. I guess it was this one. There's no future in being a pirate now. It's really too dangerous. I'm telling you, I decided this time anyway. I am going to find an island, like Ryukyu Island, and live the rest of my life in peace. Yes, it's too scary. I admit we pirates have a bad reputation. People describe us as murderous bandits. But if we are bandits, that ship is the devil. In all the years of the Azure Era, I've never heard of anyone being so vicious to pirates, and I wouldn't be a pirate anymore anyway. A 65M warship was traveling across the sea near the textile road. Rain was unaware of how people were talking about them in some tavern, and he was now depressed. Hey, it's so hard to find a pirate ship. Rain shook his head helplessly. Sure enough, the same thing on Road of Steel was happening again on the textile road and pirates were getting harder and harder to find. Life's been hard on me. 139. Special Mission. Rain has now developed a standardized process for dealing with these ships. There are only three parts to this process. Torpedoes open the way, mortars do the last hit, and the two brothers get the loot. Now that everyone is an old hand, when it comes time to search for the loot, the full complement of mutants goes into the sea for the treasure chests. While the others, mainly the dozen Sea King Island clansmen, are responsible for fishing some metal materials and that's it. Rain didn't want any of the other stuff. The only two people who didn't get carried away are the two brothers, one bear and two bear. They always search the body of pirates to the maximum extent possible, not sparing a single pearl. With standardized processes taking shape, the increased technical proficiency of individual staff, and the pirates' weak sense of prevention in this area, Rain's efficiency has increased a lot. For the past four months, they found frantically on the textile road to try to hunt more pirates. Through their efforts, they have been very fruitful and defeated a total of 51 pirate groups. Those G1, G2 class pirates are generally very poor. It is considered good for a fleet they can get 20,000 to 30,000 pearls. But there are still quite a few G3, G4, and even two G6 class and G7 class pirates. The G3 and G4 pirates are generally worth more than 50,000 pearls. G6 and G7 pirates are not as rich as the beheaded, heavy iron, and holy pirates, but they are far richer than the lower pirates. In these four months, 
Rain had gotten a total of 2.6 million pearls. The income exceeded Rain's projections. Unfortunately, there were no more pirates to be found on the textile road, and they were heading for the next more pirate-heavy sea. The next stop was the island of Bacchus. Avril. Rain wanted to practice his skill. No. Captain, I have things to do. You need to practice your skills with someone else. Avril ran off in a hurry. Rain sighed helplessly and turned his head to see Two Bear rubbing his head and quietly trying to go out of the captain's room. Stop, Two Bear. Captain, I... I suddenly remembered that I haven't gone to the toilet today. I'll go first. Two Bear ran off to... White. Woof, woof. White ran away. Rain had a raw look on his face. From Avril's experience, the only way to improve his skill was to practice more. But the problem was that Avril could help heal people and everyone was rushing to let her test it. But he... The freeze was obviously not a good feeling. After a few trials, everyone ran when they saw him. Even White couldn't take it anymore. Everyone was gone in a flash as soon as they saw Rain looking for them. Oh my god! These bad teammates, don't they know that the captain is the key to leading them to victory? Rain held his forehead with a look of raw frustration. Captain, let me practice with you. Tick came over, and Rain was moved to tears. Mr. Tick is still good. Although it felt strange to keep staring at a man. Rain had no other choice now, so he grabbed Tick and gave him a deep stare. The crew now called Rain's skill the stare with affection, and the general consensus is that if two people stare at each other for a minute, they will get the feeling sooner or later. Twenty days later, Rain's fleet finally entered the island of Bacchus. The island is about the same size as Bankra, a medium-sized island, but it has a good economy. Because it is on two important shipping routes, the textile road and the rare earth route. Rain and the others docked and went straight to the naval base. They had wanted to turn in the mission first, get the money and points for the bounty, and then drop by the hall to hear about the revenge. You guys are the... Dad? The navy man in charge of entering the mission looked at Rain and the others with wide eyes. Yeah. Wow, it's really you guys. I just noticed that ship in the harbor. It's very cool. Hey everyone, look, the dad is here. We've finally seen the live ones. With a clatter. A bunch of navy men dropped what they were doing and rushed over to Rain and the others. Two bear and one bear rushed to protect Rain. Rain frowned and said to the registered navy, Dude, we're just turning in for a mission. I know I know, I've already registered your mission. It's just that the word has been going around lately about your exploits. It's just so inspiring, we all adore you guys. Yeah, you guys actually cleaned up all the pirate forces on the textile route. My god, I can't believe it. Captain Rain is really just a kid. The rumors are true. Rain took a deep breath. He had always hated this feeling. But now he had a quest to turn in, and he couldn't leave. Can't NPC just be NPC? Not long after, Lieutenant Stinson arrived at a fast pace. The naval soldiers saw this and quickly made their way. Hello, Captain Rain and the crew of the Dad. I'm Lieutenant Stinson of the Bacchus Island Naval Base. You're very welcome to our place. If you don't mind, could you have a cup of coffee in my office? Rain sensed that this guy might know Hallowell or Hughes and the others. It was better to go to the office than to be watched like a monkey here. Sure, Rain agreed. Closing the door, Stinson personally made coffee for a few people and brought it to Rain and the others. Brother Rain, I've heard about you and your bounty corps for a long time. Hughes and I used to be comrades in arms, serving together on a warship. Stinson introduced himself. Thank you very much for purging the pirate forces around the textile road. Rain took a sip of the coffee a long overdue taste. I'm not that great. I just want to make money, Rain said honestly. No, Captain Rain. There are many ways to make money. Some people choose to be pirates, but you choose to be a bounty group. That's the difference. By the way, Captain Rain, I have heard from Hughes that you seem to have some interest in the Sea King Islanders. Stinson kept an eye on Rain's subtle expression. Rain looked up and asked, Are there more Sea King Islanders on the island? No. It's been bought up by the Revenge. Stinson said with certainty. Revenge, are they still here? They just came over to hand in their mission five days ago. I heard they were going for a big job this time, but unfortunately I'm afraid they won't be able to finish it. Stinson turned around and pulled out a file from the bookcase behind his desk. Captain Rain, if you're interested, you might want to take a look at the file for this special mission. A special mission? Rain took the envelope curiously, opened it, and examined it. Wanted elite G10 pirates with two million bounties. 140. The Pirate King in the Human Class C. Wanted Elite G10 Sin Origin Pirates with the bounty of 2 million pearls. Rain got his eyes wide Elite Mission? 
he had encountered the elite G9 level sea monster Dracula. That thing has a special ability that strength than the average sea monster of the same level, and it can control the devil fish, so it is classified as elite G9. Now another elite pirate group emerged, and Rain was confused. Stinson, you should know Dracula. This and origin pirates. Their strength should be enough to upgrade. Why do they still stay in the G level? Stinson saw Rain look puzzled, so he explained to him in detail. We are based on three aspects to determine the level of sea monsters. First, and the most important factor in deciding the grade is the level. Dracula is stage 2 level 9, so it can only be a G9 level. After deciding the level, there are two main indicators below. One is the acceptance of mutation by the native species. For example, if the same sea god fruit is eaten, then humans, animals, and sea monsters will all mutate. But the mutants are far less powerful than the beasts, and the beasts are far less powerful than the sea monsters. And the reason for this is that the sea monsters are more adapted to this mutation. We call this parameter the degree of mutation assimilation. Dracula's degree of mutation is very outstanding among similar sea monsters. I believe you have felt. The third point is the mutation skill. Some mutants may not have a high mutation level, but the accompanying ability is very powerful. The general sea monster's ability is nothing more than huge size after the transformation in the water, but Dracula is different. It has the ability to control its own kind. It is due to the existence of large numbers of devil fish that it has been difficult to be killed. Combining these three points, it is rated as elite G9 level. Stinson explained very clearly, Rain had no question about the sea monster level. What about the pirates? That is very simple. Stinson said, just like the bounty corps, you need to have the appropriate combat ability to raise the level. I heard you have conducted tests in this regard in the Sicilian trading market. Rain defeated several naval warships at first. This small test made Hades' jaw drop, and he naturally remembered. For the Bounty Corps, completing bounty missions is the best way to test the strength of the fleet. So as long as you complete the bounty missions, you can get the corresponding points and use them to upgrade the Bounty Corps rank. But Pirates is not quite the same. We need to assess their fleet strength and crew strength. The main ship level determines the pirate's level. Crew strength determines the strength within the same class. Sin Origin Pirates is wild. There is no backer behind them. So the ship construction technology is weak, but their crew strength is very horrible. They almost recruited the strongest pirate mutants in the human class C. As for how strong they are, you can refer to their bounty amount. Rain finally understood. Well, truking those few people go to fight those strong guys. Too dangerous, right? They really take money more than their life. After taking three bags of coffee from Stinson, Rain went back to his ship to discuss his plan with the crew. They were working on a wanted. The ships of Sin Origin Pirates are all plank ships. The main ship is a 117-meter British warship, a super big guy. There are also many minions, 83 frigates large and small. Rain did not put these ships in the eye. As long as the enemy is the wooden ship, he is not abashed at all. The key is still the crew. Their captain is named Starlord with the strength of stage 4 level 5. With this rank, he is definitely a super strong person who stands proudly at the top of the human class C. Not only that, but he also has 10 super strong people above stage 4, 22 above stage 3, and the number of mutants above stage 2 reached 100 people. Below the wanted there is a paragraph that aroused Rain's interest. Sin Origin Pirates, long entrenched with the human class C, the strongest pirates in the human class C, as the king of pirates in the human class C by countless pirates, pirate king in the human class C. No wonder the bounty is so much, Rain calculated. If he can get this bounty, he will have enough money to upgrade, which is much better value than going to fight those small pirate groups. By the way, Tick, what is the level of true king and others? Rain asked. Tick recalled and said I remember the level the last time he came back to the island was stage 3 level 10. Three years have passed, I reckon it should be between stage 4 level 3 to level 5 now. Three years to rise so less? Captain, you can't compare your son of Poseidon with normal people. The higher the level, the slower the upgrade. If some people's physiques were not very strong, their level may even stagnate. It's all very common. Rain was the one who is in comfortable circumstances and doesn't know the bitterness of misfortune. His upgrade speed is like flying and did not encounter any bottlenecks. Seven months out from Solomon Island, he already was stage 3 level 6. His Naga's gaze also upgraded to level 6. Captain, should we go too? Fancy asked anxiously. Brother True King and the others are too few. 
I think it's too risky. Rain thought about it and said they only have one ship, and the strongest person's level is not dominant, so they definitely can't attack head-on. They probably want to use infiltration tactics to take care of those stage 4 mutants, so there might be a ray of hope. It's just that True King won't be higher level than that Star-Lord. I doubt they can't kill Star-Lord. Let's do this. Let's go to the Sin Origin Sea first and see if we can find them. If we can join forces, there is great hope for us to take out the Sin Origin. At night, Rain opened the system silently by himself. Check the captain's personal information. Rain, Captain, Son of Poseidon Flesh, Hatchling, Stage 3 Level 6 Base Attributes 154 times more than a normal human. Combat Power, 108. Skill, Tiger's Fang, 10 tenths for 7 seconds, Increase 200% Speed, 200% Strength, 100% Senses, and 50% Reflexes. Cool Down Time. 30 minutes. Number of mutations 2. Detailed classification 1. Combat type. Mutation ability. 3 changes of the scaly dragon. First change. Level 16 attributes are increased by 160% in water and decayed by 40% on land. Second change. Level 16 form a layer of dragon scales on the surface of your body to increase your underwater movement speed by 160% and improve your defense by 80 points. Third change. Level 16 gains scaly dragon skin and scaly bones to improve flesh defense and hardness. Improve unarmed attack power and defense power by 80 points. Detailed classification 2. Support type. Naga's gaze primary level 6. Skill information. At the current level, looking at an enemy unit for 24 seconds will cause it to freeze for 0.6 seconds. Except the tiger's farm cannot be upgraded. Other attributes and skills were all upgraded a lot. This basic attribute is equivalent to stage 5 level for someone else, but always feel unpleasant for not full level. Rain OCD again. 141. Meet. Rain gradually approached the so-called Sin Origin Sea, but they did not rush to enter but circled around. After hanging around for several days, Rain finally spotted a ship anchored in a reef area a night. After identification, Rain was sure that this was the ship of the revenge he had been looking for. As the ship approached, Fancy and the others stood excitedly on the deck and shouted toward it, but the ship never responded. No one answered and no shots were fired. When Rain stopped next to that ship, he found out that there was no one on this 45MG class cruiser. Eh? The ship is given up? Rain was a little surprised. The crowd cautiously approached. However, the ship suddenly moved. A large number of people rushed out of the cabin quickly hoisted the sail, and were ready to run away. But Rain and the others were fast and ready to climb aboard their ship. One person from the opposite ship shouted a warning, and then more than 70 people from the cabin of the ship rushed out at once. All of them were mutants, 40 stage 1, 20 stage 2, and a dozen stage 3. They grabbed their weapons, rushed to the side of the ship, and were about to launch an attack on the people who were trying to board the ship. Suddenly they froze. One bear, two bear? How come it's you guys? One bear gripped the edge of the ship's side guardrail and glared, Yes, it's us. Do not attack. The Sea King Islanders are just a few thousand in all and live on an island all year round, so they almost all know each other. Especially one bear and two bear, who is well known on the island and many people know their names. The misunderstanding was solved, and Rain and the others boarded safely with the help of two bear the one bear. With Fancy, Tick, and others showing up, the crowd finally put down their last precautions. After some conversation, Rain learned that there are still many Sea King Islanders on board about 700, but True King and the others are not there. There were too many ordinary people on board, and True King told them not to clash with other boats. So they pretended that no one was there at first when they saw Rain's boat approaching, and they intended to bolt when they saw Rain and the others preparing to board the boat. Where is brother True King? They went to sneak up on the Sin Origin Pirates. We are here to prepare to meet them at any time. An old man who was over half a hundred years old said. Rain frowned, they seemed to be a step too late. True King and the others had already made their move. It was too dangerous to sneak up on them just True King and the others. Captain? Fancy anxiously tugged Rain's sleeve. Rain knew what she was anxious about even if she did not speak. This is? The old man looked strangely at the child. Princess Fancy called him Captain and seemed to be acting intimately. Tick explained, Oh Elder Shiva, this is our Captain. He is the one who saved Princess Fancy and us and placed more than 200 clansmen on Bankra Island. Many details are too late to say now, 
Everyone now listens to Captain Rain's arrangement. Well, Tick, even if he helped our Sea King clan, he is an outsider after all. We, our captain is true king. At this point, Rain said I am a person who has always been indifferent to fame and fortune. That does not matter who is the captain, now the most critical thing is to stop true king first, those few of them want to go sneak attack. That's too dangerous. Elder Shiva, how long have they left? Rain asked. Shiva thought about it. Both Fancy and Tick trusted Rain, and she was also not comfortable with Trooking's adventurous plan. She finally let go, they went twenty minutes ago. Rain was relieved that it was only twenty minutes, then it was not too late. Thinking for a moment, Rain said to Tick, I'll let the ship fire, you guys don't move. With that, Rain switched consciousness. The son of Poseidon's body fell and one bear holed in a hurry. Not long after, a series of cannon blasts rang out, and the super battleship fired. With a series of booms, the silent night was awakened at once. Elder Shiva looked at Tick in horror. Tick, W what is this? Elder Shiva, please don't worry. They won't hit us. Look even the captain is here. What do we have to worry about? Somewhere in the Sin Origin Sea, some pirate ships were moored here. In the distance came the rumbling of cannons. The pirates looked into the distance. I guess there is someone fighting due to disagreement. Should we go see? Only God knows why they running so far to fight. Is sleeping bad? Artillery fire is not very violent. It is estimated to be a small fight. Don't go, not once or twice anyway. Just let them be as long as they do not enter this sea. This area of the sea is often infested with pirate groups. These people are desperate men. These pirates were used to people fighting nearby. Then just under their ship, a few people lurking in the seawater anxiously look behind them. True king, it's our ship. Quick, back to help. These seven or eight people immediately gave up boarding the ship, dived into the sea at once, and quickly scurried in the direction of the gunfire. Ten minutes later, True King and the others found a large warship docked next to their ship, occasionally firing shells. However, their ship was there motionless and unharmed. What happened? Several people swam towards their ships, and just then, a long black figure flashed past them. Holy shit, what is that? Sea monster? They didn't see the figure's full face but an extremely dangerous feeling ran from the bottom of their feet to the top of their heads, and several people felt their deep water phobia kick in all of a sudden. On the deck of their ship, many of the clan members were lying on the fence, looking out to sea. Someone spotted True King and the others. Captain, get up here, it's Princess Fancy and the others. They're on our ship. Fancy? Several people looked at each other. Not much time, Fancy rushed to the location of the man. She excitedly shouted when she saw the few people who peeked out of the water. Brother True King, I am Fancy, come up. The man in black withdrew his veil and stared at the girl in disbelief. It was really Fancy. Not long after, they went up the rope to the boat. Fancy immediately jumped over once she saw the man in black. With voice choked, Fancy finally could not help but cry. Brother True King, I finally found you. True King's eyes were red all of a sudden. God blessed. Finally they find the little princess. 142. Who recruited who? The group sat in a circle in the captain's room. After some talking, both sides had a general understanding of each other. Finally, Tick made an offer of recruitment to True King and the others. True King stood up and looked around the room, finally lingering on Rain for a few more seconds. Captain Rain, I am grateful for what you have done for the Sea King clan. That can't be described in words, and I am willing to repay this kindness any time if I can. Rain listened quietly and he didn't feel any joy. In his experience, such opening words are always followed by a twist. But, Rain nodded, sure enough. With all due respect, despite all those incredible accomplishments you've made, you are, too young after all. Even if you are a natural leader, you still need to grow in the grind. I'm not comfortable leaving the clan in your hands. I couldn't get there in time for that disaster three years ago. I've made a vow to never leave the clan half a step again. I will protect them with my own hands. At this moment, a woman behind True King said Captain Rain, in fact, I have an idea, why don't you join us? My brother is a stage 4 level 5 mutant, Windbell and I are both stage 4 level 4, and Newling, true word, and Walter are stage 4 level 3, Bruce and Pete are stage 4 level 2. We are very strong and we just lack a powerful fleet. As long as you are willing to join us, our strength can be significantly increased. This young woman should be True King's sister to her queen who almost fought with the people of Black Hell on Solomon Island. Yes, child, you are only an 11 or 12 year old kid. The road is still long. Follow us, you can learn a lot of things. When you mature, 
We definitely will not limit your freedom. The woman who spoke, Fancy called her Windbell. Rain frowned slightly. This group of people actually want to turn from a guest into a host? A group of people who are dealing with him is indeed very strong. And because of this, as the saying goes, one mountain does not allow two tigers. Someone must make concessions if they want to merge. Fancy wanted to say something. True King and the others had a lot of things do not know, and now they saw that one is not the real captain. At this moment, Rain raised a hand to stop Fancy and stood up. I do need to grow, but I don't need the experience of failure. And I don't want to join a bounty group that could go bankrupt at any moment, much less put my crew in danger of being killed at any time. Rain did not politely at all, and it made True King and the others freeze. These two points Rain mentioned were the two biggest problems of their revenge at the moment. Buying clansmen is only the first step, they still need to feed everyone. Now normal clansmen on board had become a huge burden for them, and they have to find more clansmen. Under the double pressure, they can't even buy additional ships. As for the danger, it is not necessary to say. This infiltration assassination is a desperate act, even if they leave the clansmen on the ship and park at a distance. The clansmen will no longer have any reliance if they failed. Rain continued, My bounty group has no risk in any way. My fleet is financially sound, the safety of my crew is guaranteed, and not only that, I have a base where the people of the Sea Kings live in peace and well-fed, and get special protection from the island army. If you are willing to join me, I can purchase another adjacent piece of land on Bankara Island and merge the two bases, so that they can still live in abundance even if we fail in our conquests outside. It would be false to say that True King and the others were not impressed. Bringing a large number of clansmen with them was not only a burden but their safety could not be guaranteed. On Rain's side, the safety and livelihood of the clansmen were not a problem at all, and they could also provide help to the fleet. The difference was not a little bit. The reason why Rain said so much is that he was also looking at the strength of True King and others, and they are the Sea King clan that is more trustworthy. After being rebuked by a kid, True Queen was a bit unconvinced and asked Tick, Mr. Tick, is it really that good over at the base? Tick nodded a thousand percent, it has formed a virtuous circle. At this time, Tick also had to speak up, True King, I was like you at first that didn't believe Captain Rain's ability, but now I have made a vow to follow him. Indeed, his purpose is different from ours. He is not looking for more Sea King clansmen, but he had us search for them with all our might on every island he visited. He bought them all no matter how much it costs. Now we still have fifteen clansmen on board, which he bought from your Batten Island and we will send them back to our base on Bankera Island. All the clansmen on our ship are voluntarily following Captain Rain, you can ask any one of them. Seeing that Mr. Tick said so, True King and the others didn't know how to answer. The conversation had come to this point, and it became a little difficult all of a sudden. Rain was not in a hurry. I think everyone is tired today, I'm gonna rest first, just give me an answer tomorrow. Fancy pulled Rain, Captain, can I stay? I haven't seen Brother True King and the others for a long time. Rain smiled, of course. This detail made True King freeze for a moment. In the evening, Tick went on deck with True King and they looked at the warship that was moored next to them. Mr. Tick, now that the kid is gone, tell us what you really think. True King said, I can't believe either you nor Fancy is willing to come with me. Tick sighed, True King, our Sea Kings are no longer the original Sea Kings. I know you've been working hard, but the only one who can save us is that person. Is he really as powerful as you say? Tick couldn't help but laugh, that guy, although he's a bit unreliable a lot of the time, we trust him completely. You mean, I'm no match for that kid? Tick looked at True King and shook his head with a smile. If you want to hear the truth, I can only say that you are no match for him. Mr. Tick, I was the student you're most favored, aren't you afraid of hurting my pride by saying that? True King laughed helplessly. Ha 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 ha, True King, you clearly have the answer in your heart. You should have noticed the details before. He only used a small trick to get you back. If you fight him, you have no chance to win. My ship is inferior to his, but I can assassinate him. Assassinate? Tick shook his head again. If you assassinate him, you will probably die at his hands. This statement made True King quite surprised. Impossible. I am now stage 4 level 5. In the human class C, no one is higher than me except for Star-Lord. Yes, no one is higher than your level, but someone is stronger than you. As soon as Tick closed his eyes, he could as if see the eyes as Rain trained Naga's gaze, and he hurriedly shook his head. With his powerful base attributes, plus his twice mutated skills, Rain was already getting scarier and scarier. True King, take my advice, we, the Sea Kings need him and he needs us too, go and become his arm. 
True King looked at Tick in surprise. The words were a bit familiar. This is the prophecy? Tick didn't answer True King and just looked at the ship at the night. 143. Offense. The next day, Tick and the others came back with breaking news. True King made two conditions. Tick said, True King said that they can attack the Sin Origin pirates with us and are willing to deal with those top mutants of those pirates. They have only two demands. First, guarantee the safety of the clansmen. If we fail, the rest of the clan can take their ships to the Bankra Island base. Second, only when we destroy the other ships will they step in to deal with the mutants. As long as we destroy a large number of the other side's ships, they will do their best to destroy the other side's stage for mutants. After the battle, they will consider whether to join our team if we win. Eh? So simple? Rain was a bit can't believe his ears. This requirement was almost the same as no, he just happened to want to take out the Sin Origin pirates to earn this two million bounty. Tick, did you say something to them last night? Rain inquired rather gossipy. Tick said hastily, Captain, we just chatted casually. I didn't say anything about your secret. Although I do trust them, if they don't want to join us, some things are better not to know. Rain nodded, okay then, you get them on board and we'll prepare to attack. Now? Yes. Rain looked at the fog on the sea and said with certainty, now. It was just dawn, the sea was filled with fog. The vapor in the sea of the Sin Origin seemed to be more dense, and the visibility was very low. True King and his seven men boarded the super battleship, while the Sea King's civilians on Rain's ship boarded the Revenge. After completing the exchange, the Revenge stood by in place while the super battleship began to sail into the Sin Origin Sea. True Queen and the others were still a bit dissatisfied with True King's sudden change of position. Several people leaned against the fence and looked at the deck with only a few people busy. Brother, you really plan to follow that little brat? Look at them, there are only 20 people on board, not even enough gunners. Look at what everyone is doing. Cleaning the deck? What time is this coming and still cleaning the deck? How does the kid command? Just waltzing in like that? Entering enemy territorial waters without even slowing down? Wouldn't that make it easy for the enemy to find out? It's over, we're doomed this time. I really don't know why Mr. Tick, Fancy, and the others are so devoted to that kid, not even trusting their own people but following an outsider instead. True King was also torn at this moment. He didn't know whether his decision was right. At this moment, they suddenly felt a tremor under their feet. Eh? What happened? One bear, what just happened? True Queen pulled one bear who was carrying the bucket. Just strike the reef? Strike the reef? One bear froze for a moment. We are impossible to a ground. Oh, you said the vibration just now. That is Captain fired a torpedo. Torpedoes? Yes, Captain usually torpedoes first. After hitting the target accurately, make up a few mortars and it's done. This, True Queen looked at one bear incredulously. You have torpedoes on board? Isn't this a weapon only available in beast class waters? Besides, the visibility is so low now. How to lock the other ship? One bear smiled mysteriously, True Queen, you don't need to care about anything, just wait to take care of their boss. Well, I'll move the bucket down first, the bucket below is out of water. One bear went away, leaving only a few people who were confused. Immediately after that, there was another slight shaking. After two or three times in a row, they found the gun doors of the ship opened. Boom 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 boom. A series of shells shot high into the air, scaring several people straight backward. Holy shit. What kind of firepower is this? So fierce. Did the gunner see the enemy? It's so foggy. And it's mortar. It's impossible to hit. This is a waste of ammunition. A large number of pirate ships docked in this sea. Rain's presence has made the pirates have chosen to take refuge here. Everyone was still asleep at this time. Suddenly, someone let out a shriek. We're under attack. The bottom of the ship is leaking badly. Wake the fuck up. The bottom of the ship was hit. Holy shit. Is it another torpedo? No, it can't be, that ship. Dozens of ships in this area all hit. Not long after, a burst of shells falling from the sky blasted on the hull of the sinking ship. Holy shit, it's really them, run. Dad is coming, dad is coming, dad is coming. Quickly notify Star-Lord. Notify my ass, my ship is going to sink. Forget about the ship, run for your life. They won't leave anyone alive. A few moments later, a huge warship sailed out of the mist and by now the surrounding area was in a mess. True King and others looked at the wreckage of the sunken ship around them with dumbfounded eyes. What the hell happened? I don't know, it's horrible. Were these ships sunk by them? I can't believe it. Am I dreaming? Rain did not stop the ship to salvage the wreckage because his radar had checked that a large number of ships were approaching. 
If it were normal, he would have taken it more seriously, but the number of ships in the fog didn't make much difference to rain. As long as they entered the radar area, they were in the range of the lurker torpedoes. Terry, torpedo Phil speed up. Terry immediately ordered the crew. Everyone gets ready. They're coming. Fill the torpedoes first. Yes. Whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. A wave of 40 torpedoes silently came from underwater and shot at the opponent. The second wave, third wave, fourth wave. As the opposing fleet approached rain, mortars and stern guns began to fire. Boom, 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 boom. Ferocious tongues of fire shot out from the gun doors one after another. Holy shit. This is too much. You guys look at the stern guns. How many shells are those? Pete held his head high, looking at the shells scattered in the air. Thirty howitzer shells scattered in the air like a big net. It didn't take long for the sound of intense shells hitting the ship to ring out all around. It covered almost all directions except for the bow. Gradually, True King and the others saw what was going on around them. A large number of ships more than a thousand meters away from them were sinking. My goodness, all of them hit? This is too scary. True King muttered they lied to us. This ship is much more powerful than they said. The single combat capability of this ship even surpasses the main ship of the Beast Class C. After a burst of shelling, there were now only a dozen ships left around Rain. Opposing ships opened the gun doors. As soon as Rain comes into their range, they will fire together. And at this time, Rain's bow gun doors also opened, two thick gun barrels exposed. With two loud booms, the bows of two 50-meter warships were instantly destroyed. Two more sounds destroyed two more. Rain controlled the oars on the bottom of the ship, made the ship turn with the forward thrusters and steer agilely to keep himself at a distance from the other side, and turned the ship sideways to face the other side, while the cannon on the left side of the ship extended its black barrel. Boom 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 boom. A terrifying volley of tongues of fire erupted, and the opposite turned into a sea of fire as wood splinters flew. The biggest reason why Rain chose to do it today is that the sea is very foggy. The thicker the fog, the more powerful the weapon. His advantage of radar will be maximized. It's no exaggeration to say that Rain can beat them to the punch with Fog's assistance. At this moment, 40 to 50 mutants jumped up from the ship's side at once. These pirates sneaked in from underwater. The first one is a middle-aged man in his thirties. He is not like many seafarers the dark skin who all day in the wind and sun, but fair skin and is a bit handsome. As soon as he boarded the ship, he stared menacingly at the men before him. Bastards, you destroyed all my ships. I, Star-Lord, will break you, your ships, and all the crew into pieces, skin and hang you all. Rain, Avril, Arson, and the others came out of the captain's room. Rain ignored those pirates on the ship and walked directly to True King and the others who had been shocked to petrifaction. Gentlemen, my mission is complete. Next, it's time for you to perform. So you are the captain. Star-Lord stared at Rain angrily. I'll kill you. Rain faintly looked at the angry Star-Lord and coldly snorted, Pirate King in the human class C? Sorry, you have only a dead end in front of me. 144. Intense melee. There were 43 people on the other side. They should have seen that the firepower on Rain's side was too fierce to approach, so they snuck in from underwater. Armin looked at the opponent's lineup and immediately reported, Captain, 11 stage 4, 22 stage 3, and 10 stage 2. The other side's lineup was indeed fierce and crushed Truking's side in terms of rank. But since Truking said that handed it to them, Rain was quite happy to see if Truking and the others were as strong as they said they were. Truking, if you guys can't beat them, just tell me if you need help. Rain had someone move a chair, made a cup of coffee, and sat leisurely outside the captain's room. Truking coldly snorted, and his right hand touched the cloak on his shoulder. With a handsome pull, he untied the black cloak, revealing two short knives at his waist. Kid, don't underestimate us. True King pulled out the short knives from his waist. That were two golden knives. Transform, Dark Dynafeels. Dynafeels is a creature that looks similar to Smilodon. Although they are not as large as Smilodon, they have gained more agility. Smilodons and Dynafeels are the greatest natural enemy of ancient man, none of them easy to deal with. Trucking's mutation mother is a Dinophile, or a mutated Dark Dynafeels whose killing power is feared to be even higher. Dynafeel's bite force is weaker than the Smilodon, but the two short knives in Trucking's hands seem to make up for this disadvantage very well. Rain saw Trucking's body did not swell as quickly as one bear's, but just his face was covered with some black fur, the pupils of his eyes became like golden glass balls, and then he rushed towards the enemy. Over there, Star-Lord quickly drew his knife and shouted violently, 
Andrew's beast. Rain didn't know what kind of animal it was, but from the Star Lord's change in appearance that his body quickly expanded and reached about two meters and five. The body grew white hair with a hideous face. Rain speculated that it should also be an ancient type of some kind of large carnivorous animal. Star Lord slashed a true king with great force. True king blocked with two short knives cross, but he did not fight hard. After removing the force, he quickly turned around and went around behind Star Lord. Double knives stabbed at the back of Star Lord. How fast! Even Rain couldn't help but exclaim, although Star Lord's body was not agile enough, but fast. He found True King has come around behind him, so he took advantage of the momentum to dash forward, avoiding True King's attack. This Star Lord should be an old hand in fighting. The others also struck as the two chiefs exchanged blows. True Queen's mutation was the same as her brother's. True Word was quite fierce. His body size soared after the transformation that even taller than Star-Lord. He was a mammoth mutation. Walter was snow leopard mutation, headache-inducing feline again. Relying on his huge body, True Word directly knocked a dozen people around Star-Lord into the sea. Windbell, these guys in the sea are yous. Okay. Windbell, Mewling, Bruce, and Pete rushed to the side of the boat and crossed into the water in unison. These four guys were obviously water creature mutations. Those who fell into the water were not all water creature mutations, and the level was not high. They would be killed by those four people soon if no one helps. The five stage four strongmen under the Star Lord saw this and hurriedly also crossed into the water. Shrooking's target was not just Star Lord. He scurried into the crowd as long as Star Lord pulled away from him. With stage four level five and the strong effect of the transformation, those stage two and three mutants could not catch Shrooking's figure before being cutthroat and killed. Trucking strikes were very light and graceful. Mostly, blood marks had appeared on the enemy's neck with just a show up. True Queen also circled the opponent under the cover of True Word. One of them is strong and the other is agile, and they work very well together. Damn it, you really think I am a pushover? Star Lord shouted violently and pounced on True King, but was blocked by a huge figure. That figure came up with a ferocious impact. Star Lord was no less than a veteran not forgetting to swing a blade at his opponent before being knocked away. Second change, mammoth skin. As if true word had long been expected, he quickly opened the second stage of transformation. This knife only cut a shallow wound in his body. Star-Lord was ruthlessly knocked away, hit the ship's side of the shipboard, and shattered the wooden board, the outer layer of metal directly deformed. Holy shit, he has a two-stage transformation too? Rain didn't care about this damage to the ship but Truward's two-stage transformation really shocked him. That guy was like a heavy tank that was able to fight and resist. With the sharp attack of the True King's siblings, the three of them worked extremely well together, and their battle power was simply explosive. True King and his sister were having a big kill in the crowd, but there were a few people who stayed in place, and they didn't even transform. Hey, find a way to hold that woman off. She has no cover now, there's a chance. A thin man whispered to an alluring woman beside him. The woman licked her lips, I like her body. While losing the cover of True Word, True Queen was exceptionally fierce. So far, she hadn't met anyone who could be considered an opponent. Just as she slashed the throat of a stage 3 mutant, she was suddenly wrapped around the waist by a woman next to her. Entanglement of Giant Boa. The woman had been waiting for a long time, and she seized the opportunity. Her body quickly deformed to soft and boneless-like and wrapped her limbs around True Queen in a deadly way. True Queen was caught off guard and was locked in a full body lock by the bow woman, falling to the ground and having difficulty breathing. She desperately rolled her body, trying to break free from her opponent through the impact, but the other party just won't let go. The bow woman leisurely in True Queen's ear ambiguously said, Beauty, want to run in my hands? Even your brother would have died if I got him, let alone you. True Queen's eyes bared, second change. Rain had the urge to have a nosebleed. He noticed Traqueen's chest was rapidly bulging. No, it was the muscles all over her body that were rapidly bulging. The boa woman sneered, sorry, I have the second change too. Suffocation. True Queen. True King saw this and quickly went to Traqueen's rescue, but was suddenly blocked by a sword light in front of him. A tall thin man looked at True King with cold eyes. We couldn't do anything about you when you were scurrying around before, but now I'm afraid it's not easy for you to break through. Only stage 4 level 5? Just one level above me. And you really think you can crush us? Naive. Take my first move, Mantis Blade Sword Whirlwind. Every time he saw this kind of melee scene, Rain always felt like watching the animal world. Even the Mantis has appeared. 
Although the mantis is only an insect, this guy is fierce if mutated. The speed of his blade was even comparable to Trokings. Just then, on the side of the ship, Star-Lord finally dug himself out from the metal. He stood up, and said to True Word with a hideous smile on his face, Big guy, your companion is about to die. Do you want to save her? Unfortunately, I won't let you have the chance this time. Behind Star-Lord, a huge figure crossed out of the sea and fell back. True Word looked at the figure with eyes wide open, killer whale mutation. Star-Lord smiled faintly. It seems your underwater friend has met his match. Since True Queen was gotten by that woman, the tide of battle had instantly turned. Captain? Tick looked anxiously at the field. The Sin Origin pirates were stronger than expected and also had many rare mutations. Especially Star-Lord, who somehow had such a strong defense with just one stage transformation. Captain? Fancy was also anxious. Sister True Queen can hold out. Rain nodded. The strength of Trooking's gang had been recognized by him. They were strong. But unfortunately, their numbers were crushed by the other side. So, now it's time for the dad to step in and end it all. Rain remained sitting leisurely, took a sip of coffee, and then faintly said a word, Avril. What the name represents would be enough power to change the battle. 145. Cheater. Avril's level was now stage 2 level 9. This girl was still extremely difficult to upgrade, but her skills were unbelievably strong. Cell control can affect 40% of the attributes and nine people at the same time. Avril took a deep breath and raised her arms flat, her brow growing tighter and tighter, cell control. True Queen immediately found that the feeling of bondage on her body was reduced, while her own body was slightly heated and her strength was drastically increased. What? What's going on? My body. So powerless. The Boa woman said in horror, such a state at this time was obviously not good news, impossible. Truqueen broke free of the Boa Woman's restraints with a backhanded slash that severed her head. Not far away, the battle between True King and the Mantis Man also ended less than three seconds after this strange phenomenon happened. One side reduced by 40% attributes, and the other side increased by 40% attributes. The original strength of the two equals had a big difference all of a sudden. Walter Snow Leopard Mutation was also powerful. He quickly killed low-level mutants to avoid the four being surrounded. With Avril's superb assistance, True King's siblings and Walter were like no one else, quickly killing the opposite mutants. My god, why did their speed increase so much? There can't be three-stage transformations. Impossible. I've never seen anyone with three-stage transformations. Rain listened on the sidelines and was finally relieved in his heart. It seemed that even though these strong people had two-stage transformations, his own three-stage transformation of the scaly dragon was still rare. On the other hand, True Word became even more terrifying after his attributes were greatly enhanced. He madly charged Star-Lord like an armored battle tank. Fuck, why has this guy become so strong? Star-Lord in the second transformation was surprisingly not a match for this guy. He could not help but be appalled, bastard, how many ranks are you? True Word was not stupid, he wouldn't answer such questions. Star-Lord only got a burst of punches. After a dozen consecutive impacts, Star-Lord could not hold up. With a mouthful of blood, he kneeled on the ground. His body was like fallen apart, and could not move. Impossible, cough cough, impossible, no. The battle in the sea was unexpected rain. Avril temporarily could not care about the battle in the sea. Originally the crowd thought Trooking's people were in critical condition when they saw the killer whale mutant of the Sin Origin pirates. But who knows, not much time. The sea surfaced several bodies. Rain took the time to shift consciousness to the hull to check it out. Rain was stunned with a look. Windbell, the woman was a bit of a tough girl like Traqueen. Her transformation was also very fierce with swift action and sharp attacks. She shuttled around the killer whale fast, causing frequent damage to it. Under the leadership of Windbell, Muling and the others were always in the upper hand. This woman turned out to be so fierce, is she also a sea monster type of mutation? Rain was not sure, the environment was not too safe now. He did not dare to delay more and retransferred his consciousness to the son of Poseidon. After more than half an hour of fighting, the deck of the ship had become pitted with countless dead and wounded on it. The True King's siblings and Walter were covered in blood and panting, but fortunately, they had settled the opponents here. Why am I so strong? Walter looked at his hands, his eyes full of amazement. Did I upgrade? True Queen also had a distinct feeling that her speed, strength, and agility had all increased substantially. True Queen surprisingly defeated Star-Lord the Pirate King in the human class C. He himself was also a bit unbelievable. 
True King's surprise to look in the direction of rain, could it be them? The battle in the sea had also ended, Windbell and the others also returned to the ship. This group of boarding pirates was not the full strength of the Sin Origin pirates, but concentrated more than 30 of their strongest men. Unfortunately, they were actually no match for True King and others in this battle and were killed and injured. Star-Lord collapsed on the ground, looking blankly at the bodies around him. The ones who fell were all his crew. Impossible, you, what kind of despicable means did you use? The mean does not matter, the winner is the king, you have already lost. True words said mercilessly and was about to blow Star-Lord's head off with one punch. Suddenly, a figure quickly flashed in front of him and caught his punch with one hand. True word could not believe that there was someone who could take his punch in a state at his peak. Now he could still feel the blood boiling, the second stage transformation plus this mysterious power, even True King cannot take his punch. But this small figure in front of him was so easy to take. This person was Rain. Avril then reacted and hurriedly removed the cellular enhancement effect from True word's body, and True word immediately felt weak. His hand was held by the other party, and he could not pull it back at all. Rain shook his head, are you stupid? You can kill other pirates, that's fine. But this guy is worth 400,000 pearls. Capture the captain alive and get an additional 20% reward bounty. The bounty of Sin Origin Pirates is up to 2 million. This 20% is not a small amount. Well, I heard that you say leave no one alive? True Word stammered and said, That is someone else. That's too annoyance with so many pirates on my ship. But this is different. It is 400,000 pearls. I will certainly take it. Rain shook his head. True word this guy's IQ also dropped to the level of the mammoth after transformation. Headache. Rain had the crew stab Star-Lord in the thigh, then tied it up with chains and hang it upside down from the mast. Kill me if you have the balls. Don't take me to the navy. You cheater. Bastard. One bear found a rag and stuffed it into Star-Lord's mouth, and the guy stopped. The most fierce battle was over. The following was everyone's favorite part. Search for the chest. A bunch of people were planning to jump into the sea but found that a head suddenly appeared in the sea, chewing on those dead mutants of pirates. Holy shit, Blackie, you scared the shit out of me. One bear shouted towards the guy in the sea, thought it was some kind of sea monster. Rain walked to the fence and laughed. It's not a sea monster, but Blackie. Well, Blackie, please consider our feelings when you eat people, okay? This picture is a little scary. Little Blackie blinked towards Rain as if it was thinking. In not much time... It swept the bodies into the sea. It ran to the bottom of the sea to eat. Although still a little frightening, at least the eyes did not see it. The group immediately began to get busy. True King and the others look at each other. That thing in the sea also their people? A treasure chest was sent up one after another. Just these treasure chests were nearly 200. All that True King and the others had reflected in their eyes were golden chests. They had also looked for the treasure chest. Just that they sneaked and attacked the main ship every time and other ships are desperate to run when they saw the boss are dead. Their ships cannot catch up, so they can only get two or three chests from these pirates every time. Two or three treasure chests are simply negligible compared to more than 200 treasure chests. My goodness, True King couldn't help but lament. 146. True King's Decision Avril, there's nothing good in this box, only 2,144 pearls. Okay, I'll write it down. Put it in our box. This box is good. 4,939 pearls and a book of intermediate skill. Put the book on Armin's side and add the pearls to our stash. The final meeting concluded amidst the clattering of pearls and debriefings. Rain poured a cup of coffee for each of True King's people, and asked with a smile, True King, how about it? What are your choices? True King bowed his head and hesitated for a long time. This was not a simple choice. His decision would concern the fate of the Sea King's people. He couldn't help but be cautious about handing over the fate of his people to an outsider. Well, that strange power just now was you. True Queen kept his eyes on Rain. Wasn't me. Rain looked at Avril. It was her. The crowd looked at the woman who was keeping score, and Avril was meticulously recording the data of each treasure chest at that moment. That's too strong. Rain smiled faintly. Although Avril herself had only one combat power that only exceeded Little Booty, she was definitely the most awesome crew. So, that guy in the sea is also one of yours? Oh, you say Blackie? Sort of, for now. He won't hurt you. True King had to mentally calculate the strength of this little kid. With just one crew member easily changing the entire battle and raising a sea monster, plus their unbelievably terrifying warship, the gang's battle power was just too strong. As for the rest of the crew, although Tick was unable to fight, 
his scientific training methods could significantly improve the strength of the others, and the crew could quickly grow into a new fighting force with Tick in. In addition, Fancy was also willing to follow them. With Fancy's potential, if she could grow up, that would be another extremely formidable power. By the way, there was one more thing, the captain himself. Just now he caught a punch from Trickward who was in the second stage of transformation and strengthened state with one hand. He was also very strong. At this moment, True King just remembered what Tix said to him. If he assassinated the kid himself, the one who would die would be him. I want to ask you the last question. True King lifted his head and looked at Rain. What exactly is your target? Goal? Yes, what exactly is the ultimate goal? If we choose to follow you, it will never be short term. We will follow you to the battle all the way. So we want to know what your ultimate goal really is. True King said with a grim face and very serious. When True King asked this question, the people around suddenly seemed to freeze, and all stopped. They also seemed to be very interested in hearing how the captain is going to answer True King's question. Rain himself had not thought about this question. Before he was a bamboo raft, the goal was not to drown. Then he continued to upgrade to become stronger and absorb the crew. Today, he could easily defeat the pirate king of the human class C. After thinking about it for a long time, Rain raised his head in concentration and his eyes exploded with astonishing brilliance. My goal is... Everyone held their breath, living a comfortable life with my crew. Huh? True Queen and Windbell looked at Rain in amazement. They had expected him to say something amazing about his goal, but it turned out to be this. Yes, that's my goal. Isn't it disappointing? True King looked around for a moment, and suddenly froze. The eyes of many people on the ship were red. A comfortable life? Wasn't this the greatest luxury in the Azure era? In this world of the law of the jungle, the weak had no comfort to speak of, they only had the right to be dominated by the strong. The Sea King Island was captured and the clan was sold into slavery. Bankra Island had a strong army but was almost wiped out by a G9 elite sea monster. Star-Lord thought he could live a comfortable life in the human class sea, but was still hung from the mast. Shob was strong but was still caught in the slave gladiatorial arena, fighting for his survival. Even as strong as Black Scaly Dragon had to leave his newly born. No one can live a comfortable life in this era. Unless, you are the strongest one. Rain saw that True King and the others were still hesitating and didn't know what they were thinking. Maybe they still didn't want to follow him. Since they didn't willing to, Rain also didn't want to force it. True King, Starlord was caught by you. The bounty and points go to you. Go by a base. It's too unsafe to take the clan with you. These salvaged pearls belong to me. I will send you back. Saying that Rain turned around and walked toward the captain's room. Wait. True King suddenly called out to Rain, who turned around in surprise. True King took a deep breath and looked at his companions, who had the same look in their eyes as himself. It seemed that everyone thought the same as he did. Tick, Fancy, One Bear, Two Bear, and the rest of the clan were right. The Sea King clan needed this kid, and the kid needed them too. True King lifted the black cloak with one hand and the sea breeze lifted it high into the air. True King knelt on one knee and placed one hand on his chest. The ten warriors of the Sea King clan, True King, and the elite warriors under him, True Queen, Windbell, True Word, Walter, Mewling, Bruce, and Pete, are willing to follow your excellency to the death. In the middle of the azure sky and sea, the breeze blew away the surrounding mists, and the sea was in a mess. On a ship, eight warriors made an oath to a boy in unison. Captain, we struck it rich this time. We collected a total of 2.17 million pearls. I never expected Star-Lord to be so wealthy. We obtained 1.2 million pearls from his main ship alone. Avril exclaimed, In addition, we will get a bounty of 2.4 million, and we have 3.7 million in savings, making a grand total of 8.27 million pearls. Also, we acquired a bunch of skill books and treasure maps that can be sold for tens of thousands of pearls. Rain was overjoyed. This voyage to Sin Origin was truly worthwhile. They not only earned a massive profit but also recruited a powerful new crew. Furthermore, the money they earned was sufficient for Rain to expand his base on Bankera Island and cover his next evolution costs. Rain's plan was to reach the next level and venture into the Beast Class C. The time was ripe. Excellent. True King, tell your ship to follow us. We are going to Bankera Island. The Revenge, carrying over 700 Sea Kings closely followed Rain to Bankra Island. Rain and his crew did not need to worry about pirates during their journey, so they took a direct route south to Bankra Island, arriving in only one and a half months. When they arrived, nearly a thousand Sea King clans were reunited, 
and the scene was nearly out of control. True King stood on the shore of the reef, witnessing the emotional reunion with mixed feelings. If he wanted to ensure the clan lived a comfortable life, their fleet needed to be stronger. However, there was a hiccup in the procurement process, and the supplies on Bankra Island could not meet Rain's needs. They had to be dispatched from several nearby islands on an emergency basis, which might take another two months. Rain, however, was not in a hurry, and he took advantage of this time to spend 700,000 pearls on purchasing another area of housing immediately adjacent to the base, doubling its size. Just as they were replanning the base, one bear ran over excitedly and announced, Captain, all the materials we wanted have been delivered. Rain heard the news, and the corners of his mouth slightly raised. He silently stood up, looked around the room, and smiled sinisterly. I'm going out to practice skills. The rest of you can stay home. No, Captain, I know I was wrong. I'll practice with you every day from now on, Fancy pleaded, pulling at Rain's clothes and refusing to let go. I want to come with you, Tick smiled, thinking that his inhumane efforts had finally paid off. Captain, I was wrong. Two Bear managed to squeeze into the crowd. Please take me with you. Captain, look me in the eye. Avril clung to Rain desperately. I had a sty before, really. True King and a few others looked at these guys with amazement. What was wrong with them? Why did they have to go to sea? 147. Goodbye. Sailing days. Rain finally chose to forgive his crew. When a group of people leaning the fence of the Napoleon, watching those steel timbers on the sea automatically assemble. True King and others finally knew why the others cried out to go out. My goodness, am I dreaming? How the hell did this happen? Assembling the ships themselves? A warship of this magnitude is actually being built so fast. Tick patted True King's shoulder and laughed. True King, now you understand. Our growth rate is unmatched by anyone. Your choice to follow the captain was definitely a wise decision. Mr. Tick, you actually didn't tell me earlier. Hey hey, now you know it. But then, this is not the end. There are more things to surprise you later. Tick thought, secretly said in True King ear. In fact, you see the captain now is not the real captain. The reason why he looks only 11 or 12 years old is that's just the flesh of the son of Poseidon. The real captain, in fact, is this ship. What? The son of Poseidon? And the captain is this ship. True King was dumbfounded with fear. Tick was very satisfied with True King's reaction and showed a smile after a successful pretentious humph. Well, let's look at this ship first and see what our future warship will really look like. It looks like a big guy. The hull on the sea quickly completed the construction of the prototype, and the ship was at least 100 meters just looking at the keel. Terry kept frowning and suddenly nudged Tick. Tick, did you find anything wrong? Huh? What's wrong? Tick was focused on showing off to be in front of True King so he didn't pay much attention to it. Look at this ship. The entire hull construction process actually did not use wood. His Tick immediately sucked back a breath of cold air. Now the bottom of the ship was not sealed. He saw the keel and the other structures were all metal. This can't be. Does it mean that this ship is? The hull of this ship was actually all made of steel. Even the ironclad Napoleon beneath their feet was only the outer layer wrapped in metal armor, and the hull was still wood. After one and a half hours, the big guy was finally finished, and Rain quickly transferred his consciousness and items. Check the ship information. Rain couldn't wait to open the system. Host Rain. Ship. Optimized HMS Dreadnought. Ship cabin, 40, open air cabins, 8, power cabins, 180, crew cabins, 124, firepower cabins, 2, large storage cabins, 40, subordinate torpedo tubes. Rain was a little surprised that the number of firepower cabins didn't change, but he didn't rush to look at the weapon system but continued to look down. Crew number, 30, all positions have been assigned, open to view details. Ship speed, 29 knots maximum. Open for details, eh? The ship's speed has only increased by one knot. That's a small increase this time. Rain complained and continued to look down. Combat power, 114,000, can be viewed in the crew information and weapon system. Load capacity, 2045-9000 tons. Open for details. Evolution, 50 million pearls. Open for details. 114,000 combat power? More than double than before. How is this possible? I didn't more fire pods, where did I get so much more combat power? Rain suppressed his excitement, and hurriedly opened the weapon system. Rain was stunned as he saw the weapon system. Thunder Fragment Cannon, Attack Power 500, Range Meters 4400, Quantity 60, Total Attack Power 30,000, Thunder Fragment Mortar, 
Attack power 300, range meter 6500, quantity 40, total attack power 12000, thunder armor piercing cannon, attack power 1000, range meters 3000, quantity 20, total attack power 20000, assassin shallow water bomb, attack power 500, quantity 30, total attack power 15000, assassin torpedo, attack power 500, quantity 40, attack power 20000, Thunder Bow Cannon, Attack Power 800, Quantity 2, Total Attack Power 1600, Thunderstern Howitzer, Attack Power 2250, Quantity 2, Total Attack Power 4500, Fury Thunder Gun, The Front Deck 360 Degree Rotatable Triple Mounted Main Guns, Attack Power 1000, Range Meters 5500, Armor Defense 800 when the turret is closed, Total Combat Power 3600. Thunder Anti-Aircraft Gun, the Aft Deck Anti-Aircraft Battery, 300 Attack Power, Meters Range 5000, 800 Armor Defense when the battery is closed, 1100 Total Combat Power, Tier 2 Iron Armor Hull, 5000 Defensive Power, 500 Average Defensive Power. It was true that the number of his fire pods did not become larger, and the number of cannons was even reduced. But, all the Storm Guns were upgraded to Thunder Guns. All the lurker bombs and torpedoes were upgraded to assassin. The attack power of the Thunder series guns and assassin series torpedoes almost doubled the previous ones. If Rain's weapon system was a quantitative change before, this time it has produced a qualitative change. In addition, the optimized dreadnought added several new weapons while retaining the main weapon, Thunder Armor Piercing Cannon, which appears to deal great damage to enemy ships. Fury Thunder main guns are located in the foredeck position. It had a metal shield and can rotate 360 degrees after opening the metal shield. The attack power is amazing and it can fill the dead angle of the bow gun. Thunder anti-aircraft guns, it is to deal with air units as soon as Rain heard the name. Well air units? Rain thought for a long time but couldn't remember what air units he had encountered. It's not specific to hit little booty is it? Whatever, it's better than nothing. The new warship had an all metal structure, but the surface was covered with wood which looked like the insidious system has disguised it again. The whole ship was 106 meters long. Although a ship of this length can only be considered a cruiser in Rain's memory of the Navy, the ship was now a bona fide battleship class for a ship in human class waters. After checking the power system, Rain found that the turbine steam engine models were replaced with storm steam turbines. The weight of the hull was greatly increased due to the all-metal construction of the ship so it was okay that still able to maintain the maximum speed of 29 knots. The new ship retains the folding oars. It should be to facilitate steering, but the mast has been eliminated. It seemed that he had said goodbye to the sailing era completely starting from this heavy-duty dreadnought. Well, sailing days, goodbye. Rain let out a slight sigh, but then, his eyes became bright. It's finally going to evolve in the direction of a truly modern warship. Good then, Beast Class C. I'm coming. 148. Advancement Gift Pack. Rain came out of the captain's room. Tick was showing True King and the others around the new ship. True King and the others looked at everything with shocked faces. Rain was used to this, and they will understand after a while anyway. Unfortunately, the ironclad ship from before was recycled by the system once again. Damn, can't you leave it to me? I can pay for it. Rain shook his head, rubbish system. At this point, the system suddenly responded. Ding, congratulations to the host to complete the achievement through the era of sailing, the system will provide you with two advanced gift packages to choose from. The system actually jumped out on its own for the first time in a long time. What? Gift packs? Rain almost cried out with excitement. After seven or eight years, he finally had gift packs to choose from again. That said, is this talking system the same AI system from the beginning or not? Hey, are you an AI system, or a fixed program system? I am a fixed program system. Oh, Rain was a little disappointed, but suddenly he thought that it seemed a little bit wrong. It feels like he asked is anyone home, and then the person in the room said, no one is home. A fixed system will not answer his question, this stupid system. Brother, do not pretend. Artificial intelligence is good. That said, I actually still miss you. I'm really a fixed program system. Okay, okay, you're a fixed program system. Rain shook his head. He also did not want to argue with his thick system. Where are gift packs? Come on, want me to choose again? Can't you give me all? Advancement pack 1 1, radar range increased to 100,000 meters. 2, 
a Labrador Retriever special extremely high-quality evolutionary material. This material is limited to Labrador Retriever use. If a mutation already exists, clears it, and remutates. Advancement Pack 2, 1. Open Dual Ship Mode. The first time you open Dual Ship Mode, the host can choose any one of the previously recovered ships to keep. The host consciousness can switch between the dual ships at will. You can build another ship of a lower class than your main ship as an escort. 2. The radar range is increased to 50,000 meters. The host has 10 seconds to choose. Holy shit, can you have some humanity? Rain was depressed to hell. He was a little depressed, not because the gift packs were bad, but because the gift packs were too awesome. He wanted both of these gift packs. The two ship mode was what Rain had always wanted. There was no doubt that having two ships would greatly increase his strength. But Rain also wanted to let White evolve. This guy failed himself and just knew blind hanging out all day or going to the water to play with Blackie. Anyway, it just doesn't evolve. After all these years, this guy's combat power was still only one. But the White having not mutated also has the advantage that there is no waste of resources. According to the system, if White had mutated before, its previous mutation would have been cleared after using the gift pack. Can I have both packs? Please host choose one of them. Remaining selection time 10, 9, 8. You must be the artificial intelligence system. Otherwise, you can't make such a fucking thing. Damn, don't count down. 3, 2. I choose 1. Rain was really pushed. Gift pack distribution in progress please wait. Rain gasped and let out a long sigh. His dream of a double ship was shattered just like that. In fact, Rain also had his own plans. Dual ships or control of multiple ships at the same time was indeed what he always wanted. But this feeling was like when he always wanted sails. And now he has no sails on his ship. This is just a transition. However, there is one disadvantage of dual ships that he must consider. He needs to switch his consciousness to control two ships. And his energy can only be put on one ship if he fights then dual ships will become a gimmick. In this way, the advantages of dual ships are actually not that great. In addition, the number one gift pack not only has White's extreme evolutionary materials, but also the key point is that the radar range reaches 100,000 meters. 50,000 meters more than the number two gift pack. From this point of view, the improved radar monitoring range also makes up for the disadvantage of having one less ship. Of course, Rain didn't have much time to think and had to make a hasty decision under the system's intimidation. Gift pack issued, radar upgrade completed, the white gene is being transformed and expected to complete mutation in 6 months. Holy shit, it's going to take 6 months? What mutation takes so long? The system ignored Rain's complaints. Anyway, the system said so, that is certainly not wrong. Rain shook his head, the system was still the same trash as always. He could only try the radar first. Eh uh, good, radar is very important, especially my radar. Now the ordinary ships can't get close to me already. Rain nodded with satisfaction. After that, Rain quickly checked White's stats. Name, White, newbie pack complementary crew. Combat power, 1 real time. The mutation hasn't finished yet, so it can't be checked? Rain shook his head, well, it's a big loss this time. Although Rain didn't get gift pack too, the gift pack was unexpected for Rain. Thinking about it, he didn't complain anymore. The next day, Rain and a few crew members started to plan their route after supplying some resources on Bankra Island. According to the chart, they would need to sail 500 nautical miles to reach the Beast Class C, and this was only to reach the outer edge of it. They had to find some islands to stop at first. Captain, are we going straight to rescue Shobe? Rain thought about it. We first find an island to dock, learn about the situation of the Beast Class C and then find out the status of the Sea King pirates, and then find a way to rescue them. Lieutenant Stinson said there is a new island in the Beast Class C. Armin, see if there are any suitable islands nearby. Aye, Captain. Armin had grown into a professional navigator, and soon came up with the most scientific route map that completely took into account the weather, currents, distance, and safety factors. The course was set, and Rain led his crew aboard the new ship and sailed out of Bankra Island on the same day. Avril and Rain stood on the spacious foredeck, holding on to the fence and looking into the distance. Captain, we're going to beast class waters. I never thought I'd have the day. Avril turned around and leaned her back on the fence, the sea breeze blowing her long hair. I'm excited and a little nervous now. Rain grunted, it's just beast class waters. There is still a long way to go. Looking at the azure sky and sea, Rain gradually put away his smile. Beast class sea, here we come. 149. 
Beast Class Sea. After seven days, Rain finally arrived at the edge of the Beast Class Sea. Upon arrival, his radar detected two naval warships approaching their direction. Gradually, the warships came closer to Rain's ships and signaled with flags, indicating to hold fire. Though Rain wasn't one to shoot first upon seeing people, he prepared for any contingency and waited for the other side to come closer. Attention, vessel ahead. We strongly advise against entering the Beast Class Sea alone. Someone from the Navy ship spoke through a loudspeaker. Rain grabbed the loudspeaker and replied, We are aware of the risks. We're on our way to the Truman Islands. We have warned you. If you insist on entering, you will bear all the consequences. The warships turned around and left after a brief pause. Rain was taken aback. I can't believe the Navy actually came to remind us not to enter the Beast Class C. True King explained, Captain, Beast Class waters are treacherous and unlike any other waters. The Navy arranges ships in the border area to notify passing vessels. Rain acknowledged the truth that the Beast Class C was indeed different. Even a mere entry was worthy of a warning. However, it wasn't long until he witnessed the true face of the Beast Class C. Ahead of them, the sky was overcast with massive waves and a downpour of torrential rain. Goodness gracious, I once thought the Beast Class C was merely a formidable enemy, but now I see that the weather is also immensely severe. Captain, inclement weather is an everyday occurrence in the Beast Class C. Regular ships cannot endure it. Those that are able to persist long term are typically reinforced, explained True King and the others, who were more knowledgeable about the area. Naturally, Rain's ship was not intimidated by such weather, and the crew took refuge inside the cabin as they continued on towards their destination braving the towering waves. The following two days were equally tumultuous and tempestuous. However, despite the intense weather conditions, Rain and his crew persisted in their training, simply relocating their practices indoors. The originally planned two-month journey ended up taking four months due to the severe weather. Nonetheless, Rain's skills continued to skyrocket at an alarming pace during this time. Interestingly, Rain kept checking White's data several times, only to see that it remained at level one. It seemed that the guy had not yet undergone its mutation, although it had certainly grown in size. Surprisingly, Rain also encountered three skirmishes during their voyage. Two of them were between two F-class fleets engaging in combat, while the third involved a battle between an F-class sea monster and a certain bounty group. Witnessing such intense fights taking place amidst the turbulent storm was truly beyond Rain's expectations. It became clear to him that the Beast Class C posed much greater dangers compared to the Human Class C. Despite the excitement, Rain did not intervene in these fights. For one thing, the harsh weather made it difficult to recover anything from a sunken ship. Moreover, his primary objective at the moment was to find a way to rescue Sho. After four long months, Rain and the group finally arrived at the Truman Islands. The islands were a series of four adjacent landmasses each connected by submarine foundations to prevent them from being washed away by the powerful ocean. The walls surrounding each island were massive, dwarfing even the largest island rain had ever seen, Solomon Island. Avril looked on in awe at the grandeur of the Truman Islands, which were deserving of their reputation as part of the Beast Class Sea. The islands were much larger than any rain had visited before, including Solomon Island. The dock was crowded with many large ships, including warships exceeding 100 meters in length. As Rain and their crew disembarked, they couldn't help but notice the curious gazes of the people around them. Some murmurs could be heard, speculating about their presence in the Beast Class Sea with a ship that seemed to belong to a bounty group. Goodness gracious, a bounty ship in the Beast Class Sea? Has their captain lost their mind? exclaimed one person. Perhaps they were attacked by another fleet, and this is the only ship that remains, offered another. No, look at the ship. There's not a scratch on it, replied a third. It's nothing out of the ordinary. There are always those who are unaware of the dangers of the Beast Class C and end up losing their lives, concluded another. Despite the comments, Rain and their crew paid no mind and proceeded to make their way onto the island. Their first destination was the slave market, which, although smaller than its counterpart in the Human Class C, boasted exorbitant prices for the slaves sold within. These slaves were either skilled crew members or advanced level mutants. Due to the considerable amount of time that had elapsed since the takeover of Sea King Island, they only managed to procure 10 Sea King Islanders on this trip, all of whom were stage 3 mutants. If you're interested in purchasing all 10, I could offer you a discount. The original price is 1,000 black pearls, but for you, I could lower it to 950, the salesman pitched to them eagerly. Excuse me? 1,000 black pearls? Rain questioned in disbelief. 
True King informed him that in the BC, the term pearl generally referred to black pearls. Daily necessities and items that required pricing with white pearls needed to specify as such. 100 white pearls were equivalent to one black pearl, meaning that 1,000 black pearls amounted to 100,000 white pearls. It was evident that the price for a stage 3 mutant was exceptionally high. I will take all 10 for 900 pearls, but I wish to pay with white pearls, Rain countered. Very well. Since they are the last batch, I can accept 900 white pearls. However, we do not accept white pearls here, so I will take you to the pearl merchant to exchange them, the salesman relented. Rain was overcome with a sense of melancholy as he had previously believed himself to be quite affluent. Possessing over 2 million pearls, he considered he is VIP in the human class C. However, he was taken aback when he discovered that the people here held a great disdain for white pearls. Upon completing the transaction, Rain instructed his men to escort the newly acquired Sea King Islanders back to their ship while he continued to explore the area with his crew. Although the Truman Islands comprised four separate landmasses, there was only one central island from which missions could be issued, Truman Island. These missions were considered to be of F-level difficulty and predominantly focused on tasks other than transportation. The merchant banks operating in this region wielded a great deal of power and had their own transport fleets, rendering the assistance of outside parties unnecessary. As Rain and his crew traversed the square, they came across a gathering of individuals not far away. Intrigued, they made their way over to investigate and found a large poster affixed to a blackboard. A staff member sat before it, with several posters in hand, as individuals approached him either to register or inquire about the contents of the posters. The poster announced the imminent appearance of a new island and called upon individuals to join Truman's army in capturing it, promising a substantial reward. Captain, I shall acquire one of these posters for you, Avril stated confidently as she approached the staff member and requested one of the posters. Rain took hold of the poster and was taken aback by its contents. Entry requirements. Firstly, the fleet must have a rank of no less than F5, including but not limited to Bounty Corps, Merchant Fleet, Naval Formations, etc. Secondly, the participating ships must not be less than 90 meters in length, must have a maximum speed of no less than 25 knots, must have a minimum of 100 guns and a minimum crew of 500. Thirdly, all participating ships must obey the Truman military arrangements once enrolled in the formation. Note, points will be calculated according to the role and performance of each ship, and the final pay will be given in the form of pearls. Any ships that violate the rules will be punished and their pay deducted. The final interpretation of this announcement belongs to the Truman Islands military. As Rain read through the announcement, he was struck by shock and disbelief. Holy shit, what kind of colossal battle are they planning? and my ship doesn't even qualify for registration. He exclaimed, his expression aghast. 150. Who is the dad? There was a sudden commotion behind them when Rain's group was still checking out the posters. More than a dozen big men came toward Rain and the others. The leader of the group had a thick beard and was about 1.9 m tall. He wore a fine captain's uniform with black boots and a long knife at his waist. This man slightly tilted his head with a lazy look and the crowd was pushed away by his side of the big men at once. Those who were pushed away were still a little angry, but they swallowed their anger back on their own when they looked at those big men. Yes, it's the dragon. That's Captain Tyrone? My god, they're here too. F8 class bounty group, they are the ones that have the strength to take out a fleet of the Beast King pirates. They don't want to be part of this recruitment, do they? At this moment, two big men came up behind Tick, a hand pulled him back a dozen steps, and finally thrown out. Tick was studying the posters with Rain and the others, he was defenseless when he was suddenly thrown out, and fell more than 10 meters. What are you doing? One bear immediately turned around when found out, staring at the big man standing right in front of him. Usually, one bear's body was not considered robust, but rather a little thin. The other party was a big man that was 1.95 meters tall and all the tendon meat propped up clothes bulging. One bear in the eyes of others was like a chicken in front of a giant elephant. Looking down at the angry one bear, the big man just faintly uttered two words. Get lost. Avril hurriedly went to pick up Tick, and looked angrily at the gang. What are you doing? Don't you know there are not allowed to fight on the island? Yo, little bitch. I see you don't seem to respect our dragon bounty group. Another man looked at Avril with a lecherous gaze. No fight on the island? Sorry, we just did it. Do you see anyone supporting you? Avril looked around. A number of soldiers responsible for security actually stood aside watching the show. Little bitch, 
Remember, only the weak need to follow the rules, and we are the ones who make the rules of the game. Avril was about to argue, but Tick pulled her back. Avril, forget it. Rain was surrounded by a group of people, so it was the last to know what was happening. He coldly looked at the other group. You dare to touch my crew. You are not tired of living, right? Tyrone looked at Rain with interest and suddenly could not help but laugh out loud. Ha 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 ha. You are the captain? My god, a hairless little kid is the captain. I really wonder how in the end you came to the beast class C alive. A group of people around them also followed and laughed. Ha 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 ha. He's really the captain. I've been paying attention to them since they got off the ship. Making a kid the captain. How trashy are these people? It's them. I just looked. They're just one ship. It's not big. I guess they got beaten to the point where they have one ship left. I'll tell you something even funnier. Their bounty core is called the Dad. I guess the reason why they survived is that they will call a daddy before they fought. The Dad? Tyrone frowned slightly. Children, come, call a dad to listen. Perhaps I can still forgive your rudeness. Rain took a deep breath, and his gaze gradually turned grim. It was been a long time since he'd been this angry. He was just about to walk up, Tick immediately rushed back, and True King also pulled Rain, whispering in his ear, Captain, they are the Dragon Bounty Corps with the First Class Medal of Honor of the Truman Islands. We have no advantage here. True King's words made sense. Fighting here would likely end up with them being treated as the party that violated the island's rules. There was no reasoning at all in other people's land. Rain coldly grunted, wanting to temporarily tolerate this bite of anger. He turned around to leave but was blocked by a big man. The big man had a cold smile at this time. Rain's body was stronger than one bear, but not as tall as him, only one meter five. It was more like a chicken in front of that big man. Son, want to leave? Sorry, you blocked our way just now. So just drill through my crotch if you want to go. The big man's proposal immediately caused laughter all around. Ha 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 ha, come on, come on. Line up and drill through one by one. It's nothing for a son to drill through his dad's crotch anyway. Now you know that the beast class C is not a place where your trash can come, get lost. The men drill through, the women lie down. At this moment, all of Rain's crew members stared at the big man with extreme anger. Seeing this expression, the big man was even more pleased, and fiercely glaring at Rain, drill through. Drill through? Rain was really pissed off. I love safe and peace, but always someone courting death. While everyone was waiting to have a good show at Rain and the others, Rain calmly said Avril. Avril was worthy of being Rain's earliest crew member, and she already knew what Rain wanted to do with one word from him. Avril didn't know how strong the captain is. The captain's words were orders no matter what he say. Since she said she would follow the captain, she would follow him to death even if the captain was going to die. Cell control, strengthen. When the big man was looking at Rain smugly, Rain leaped up all of a sudden and blasted the man on the head with incredible speed. At this moment, Rain, stage 3 level 10, the base attribute was 140. With Tiger's Fong, the speed and strength were boosted by 200%, Senses Perception boosted by 100%, and Reaction boosted by 50%, plus a 40% attribute boost from Avril. Even it didn't count the Senses and Reaction boost his combat power was already more than 500. The big man nearly two meters had not reacted before the punch down. Bang! His head was like a watermelon, shattered. The whole room was silent. Everyone was like being petrified, standing there with big mouths and wide eyes. Not a single person from the Dragon Bounty Corps moved. The troops watching didn't move either. They were now in a short circuit in the brain. The people that Tyrone brought along with him were all stage four mutants at least. Even without the transformation, it was never possible to be killed so easily. Moreover, this was not the key. The key was that no one could think that the kid actually dared to kill this man directly in front of so many people. The head was directly blown off. Cruel, vicious, chilling. Even Trooking's chest rose and fell violently in shock, and a phrase kept echoing in his head now. Tick said that if he went to assassinate him, then the person who would die would be himself. He just thought it was a possibility when Rain took a punch from the true word. But now, he felt a pang of fear straight in his heart, fear for having had that vision. Rain landed on the ground, and the headless body of the big man in front of him fell down with a bang. He squatted on the body of the big man to wipe the blood off his hands with his clothes. Rain raised his head and walked step by step towards the sweating Tyrone. Standing in front of Tyrone, Rain was still small and incomparable, but Tyrone only felt the unparalleled pressure crushing over and stiffened. Rain said indifferently in front of Tyrone, Little pig, come on. Tell me right now, 
who is the dad and who is the son? 151. Slave Gladiatorial Arena. Tyrone's mouth opened widely, but he could not speak for a while. The one who died was stage 4 level 3, but his head burst just like a piece of cheese. This guy standing in front of him was not a child, but a devil. He raised his head in bewilderment, and looked at the guards who were holding long guns, yet none of them dared to raise their guns. What? Think they will shoot? Rain said coldly, I remember you said earlier that rules are only for the weak to follow. It seems they think the same as you. Tyrone's eyes were full of horror, these words were his. He had just said that the rules were for the weak, and he was the strong one who designated the rules. But the problem was that this kid in front of him was either the weak one who followed the rules, nor the strong one who made the rules. He was the one who changed the rules. Looking at the already frightened Tyrone, Rain snorted contemptuously and turned back with his crew. But he found that these guys were also standing there motionless, each with a horrified look on their faces. Well, he just seemed to have scared his people too. Hey, go away. Rain shook his head and left, and the crowd around him instantly made away. Back on the ship, Rain immediately ordered the crew to sail away from the Truman Islands. Captain, are we running away? Fancy looked at Rain strangely. I was saying how you were so awesome just now. Such a bloody scene is nothing for those who have lived in the Azure era for a long time. But the key is that Rain dared to kill in front of so many people. This boldness is really a bit different from his usually careless and casual. Originally Fancy was still a bit shocked by Rain. But who knows the captain rushed back and was ready to run. What run away? This is the strategic transfer. Rain full of disdain said with a strong voice. With my inference, the Truman Islands government may not give us a hard time. The key is I am afraid that they pester me. I don't have time to play with them now. Rain's deduction was somewhat likely, though not exactly what he had in mind. The situation at that time was that the guard did not intervene. One is that they did not react. And two, none of them dared to be the outstanding ones at that time even if someone reacted. But that's not necessarily true if it takes longer. They had violated the rules of the Truman Islands after all. In case the governor detains their ship or forces them to join the battle to capture the island. Even if it's a walk in the park and a fight for respect, the people of the Truman Islands will be looking for him. These were the scenes Rain does not like to deal with. In short, the best thing to do now was to quit. The ship had sailed out of the Truman Islands and was driving aimlessly on the sea. In the captain's cabin, Rain was gathered around the poster with everyone else. Captain, there seems to be a lot of powerful fleets in this island capture and they are all in groups. There are more than 200 large ships participating in the Truman Islands alone. I'm afraid the competition will be cutthroat then. Rain nodded, I see. I have no idea if the Sea King pirates will come. Avril shook her head. True King thought about it, and said they may come. I'm afraid the island is not small from the scale of the Truman Islands out of the warships. Such a piece of fat. How can the Sea King pirates not be greedy? Take eyebrows locked, Captain. Do we take the island? Rain pondered for a moment, and suddenly raised his head, yes, I have a perfect plan that will not only save Shobe but also hopefully grab the island. Um, no way, Captain, there is such a good thing? Tubear looked confused. It's hard. Tick also said there are so many ships in the war just one Truman Islands. Every single one of them is the F-class warship, and the recruitment is not even over yet. After two months, there are 350 ships at least plus their island navy. I think there will be a lot of people coming to fight over it. Terry also agreed with Tick's statement. I reckon there will be at least a thousand ships by then. That's so many that we can't possibly wipe them all out. Fancy wrinkled her nose with a face of disbelief. In addition to the gap in strength, time is also too late. The poster said that the time to take the island is in two months. Plus the trip will take one month. And we need three months to get to the slave gladiator. By the time we save Shobe, this side of the battle may be over. How can you possibly take the island? Rain smiled heatedly. I like this kind of melee the most. Anyway, you guys just listen to my arrangement. Everyone didn't say anything more when they saw how confident the captain was. Setting a course, they started heading for the Slave Gladiatorial Arena. The Slave Gladiatorial Arena was located on Clock Island, the seventh largest island in the Beast Class C. This was a sacred place where the Navy, Bounty Groups, Pirate Groups, Merchant Houses, Tribes, and all other forces coexist peacefully. Because people come here to have a common purpose. Watch the slave jousting. Bloody and violent slave fighting is good, but with wine and bets to better stimulate adrenaline hormones. In the middle of the island, the people in the stands were shouting loudly in the huge circular arena. In the arena, 
A man wearing only a pair of close-fitting shorts was covered in blood. His dirty face only a pair of haunting eyes could be seen. He thrust a knife viciously into the back of a fierce tiger. A bloody battle finally ended. The man was weak and staggering. The spotted tiger was three meters tall and five meters long. The fur on its body could not hide its toned muscles. Now it was lying motionless on the ground. Yes, slaves are not the only opponents. They also need to deal with a variety of mutant creatures. However, just when the man thought he had won and was ready to walk off the field, the huge tiger behind him sprang up and slashed the man's back with a huge wound with one claw, then opened its bloody mouth and snapped his neck with one bite. The next was cruel tear and bite. No one on the floor cared about the man's death. Some people were excitedly chanting the name of the Tiger King. Not long after this one was over, the slave gate opened with a clang. A tall sturdy man stood at the gate as he slowly walked into the gladiatorial arena. It's Shob. Shob, give me a good fight. I've put 100 pearls on you. If he wins this fight, he will have won 84 fights in a row. Shob took a deep breath. 84 games only 16 games away from a 100 game winning streak. But afraid no one will think he has the life to win 100 in a row. That guy would not allow anyone to get 90 consecutive victories. In another five games, that man will personally come down to finish himself. The three great beast kings of the beast class see as if a looming over everyone's heart an insurmountable mountain. He could only delay his death by continuing to win. Ah, I really want to smoke a cigar before dying. Shob shook his head and complained. 152. Shob's cellmates. Three months later, Rain and the others arrived at Clark Island. Tick brought the news about Shob in the first place. Captain, Shob is still alive and now gets 89 wins. The 90th game will be held in three days. Tick said, there's another important news. Rex the Beast King won't go to fight for the new island. He will fight with Shob in person that day. What? Rain was stunned. The Sea King pirates actually did not go to fight for the new island. That's impossible. There's no reason for the Sea King pirates not to go and get a piece of the action. True King wondered, they are one of the three major fleets of the Beast Class C. How could they not get involved in such matters? Rain thought about it, and suddenly frowned, damn, this guy and I thought the same thing. He also wants to profit from others' conflict. Looking at the crowd's uncomprehending gaze, Rain explained, the new island should appear in the next few days. The Truman Islands alone sent out more than 300 ships. The battle will be more intense when the time comes. Fancy dawn on I see, Captain, do you think that even us will be cannon fodder at this time? So the best time we go to compete should be when they fight until they're both lost? No, not fight until they're both lost, but wait until they are completely done fighting before we take part in. Rain said with certainty, if it was the Truman Islands that had won, what would they do after they won? What would they do? A lot of ships would go back to the Truman Islands to rest. Many of them will go back for the bounty. And if we attack at this time, they won't even have time to organize a second recruitment. Oh, Fancy's eyes widened. Their captain was as steady as ever. This tactic was quite sinister. Rain continued, many forces should be using similar means. They form a large-scale fleet through temporary means. If it's just lost both, then we still have to face a lot of ships. But if we fight when they go back, it's hard for these temporarily organized fleets to take shape again. And we'll face a lot fewer enemies by then. True King got wide eyes, the captain's tactic was really unexpected. Actually so calm and sophisticated that not like a new captain at all, but a veteran of the battlefield. No wonder Rain was not in a hurry at all. Unfortunately, True King did not know that Rain's tactical skills were concentrated in two words, play safety, which is entirely thanks to a shooting game. In this game, Rain's marksmanship did not improve much, but the experience of entering the final round is still very rich. Rain sighed. I had thought that the Sea King pirates would also be the first to rush, and this rescue operation would be much less difficult. The time would be just right after we save Shob and kill back. The result is that those guys actually also bide the time. It looks like they thought with me. Rain's plan fell through due to the appearance of another creeper. And now time became very tight. He only had three days. Captain, so what do we do now? Rain was frowning. Don't be in a hurry. Let's find Shob first. The next day. Avril and the others went straight to the gladiatorial slave-holding place. The guards here frowned at the group and immediately drank. What do you do here? Avril stepped forward and said coldly, We've caught a slave and we want him to participate in the fight. The man looked Avril up and down and hesitated for a moment. He got up and left. Not long after, a short fat man came over with a smile. Mr. Eno, they are the ones who said they had slaves. 
Enno twisted his fat body and walked over with a full of smile. Welcome to Offer Gladiators. When a fight can get 500 pearls. If they were dead, we are not responsible for the payout. Avril took a deep breath and nodded, I see. Good then, where are your slaves? Two Bear pushed a man to Enno. This slave was dirty, wearing only a pair of shorts, shackled with his hands and feet, and his hands were pinned behind him by Two Bear. Enno looked back and forth at the slave and rubbed his chin. Nice muscle tone. What mutation? What rank? Ancient land creature Dinopheles mutation. Stage 4 level 5. Stage 4 level 5? Enno a pair of small eyes light up. Good good good. Mutation type is very strong and the level is also very high. I really do not understand where you catch such a high level of slaves. Enno seemed to want to hear something from Avril. Unfortunately, Avril was not stupid and coldly snorted, Do your business. Do not ask what you should not ask. Oh yes yes I talk too much. Enno hurriedly smiled. We need this level of slaves very much. Send more if you have more in the future. I guarantee you can make a lot of money. Seeing True King being sent into the slave cell, Avril subconsciously looked back at the man behind him. The captain's plan was as crazy as ever, surprisingly sending True King into the gladiatorial arena. True King was escorted through the dungeon, where many slaves were kept. They sat in their cells, looking coldly at the newcomers being brought in, without pity or expression. They even had no time to pity themselves, how can they have time to pity others? Slaves here were held according to rank. True King a stage 4 level 5 mutant, is clearly the best here. He was sent to a cell with only 3 people. The guard opened the cell door and pushed True King in. Ha ha, what a time to come. One stage 4 level 5 mutant is about to die, and now a new one come in. I warn you, don't try to play tricks, or you will suffer. After intimidating True King, the two guards locked the door and left talking and laughing. True King looked around at a few people. There were 4 people here including himself. There were 2 men lying on the floor staring at the ceiling. The last one was a man with a straw in his mouth. Shob? True King looked at the straw man. The one with the straw in his mouth was indeed Shob, who really has no cigar to smoke and could only hold the straw with him. Eh? You know me? True King smiled and walked up to Shob. Not really, I just saw your portrait, but our chief officer does know you. Who is your chief officer? Avril. Shob's eyes brightened up all of a sudden. Avril. They, they were killed? No, they told me to come and meet you. At this time not only was Shog shocked, but even the two men lying next to him were also amazed at True King while sitting up. Save him? Two days later, the Beast King himself will come to kill him. How can you save him? The man with the white beard scruff on his chin looked at True King with disdain. Don't you know that this place is called the Iron Cage? Another slightly thinner man also said. True King frowned at the two men. None of your business. I'm not saving you too. The two men had the urge to vomit blood. Shouldn't they unite all the forces they can? We are also very strong, right? The two suddenly had a guilty conscience with Trooking's words. Their previous aloof vanished all of a sudden. Ahem, friend, save one is save, save two is also save. Yes, 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 save three is also save. We were just questioning. Even if the hope is slim, it is better than waiting here to die. We're so close to Shob that we're almost a family. Shob, right? Trooking was also depressed. What odd characters these two cellmates of Shob are. But then again, to live in the same cell as Shob, it should not be weak. He wondered if the captain will want these two thicks. Shob these two. They can be trusted. Shob lowered his voice and said, 153. Prison raid. Since Shob said these two people can be trusted, True King was also no longer hiding from the two. Of these two men, the man with the white beard stubble was called Shane, and the one who was a little thinner was called Bolton. When the Beast King comes down, they will bring all the slaves into the gladiatorial arena to let them watch how the Beast King killed Shob. And that is when we do it, True King said. HM? Do it? Brother, if we could do it we would have done it already. Shane said there are at least 2,000 loaded guards here. We can't beat the bullets even if we are strong. Shob nodded, there are more than 15,000 guards at least on the island. True King lowered his voice and said, when the time comes, there will be a pickup outside and they will stir up the venue but we will be on a very tight schedule. We must not wait for other troops to come and support the guards. The match between the Beast King and Shob is bound to attract a large number of spectators. I reckon that there are at least 10,000 people watching. A mere 2,000 guards will definitely not be able to manage once the scene is in chaos. So we will take advantage of this time to run away. I calculated before, we will have 15 minutes. Bolton frowned, can the pickups cause enough commotion? Also, 
Even if they can disrupt the order, what about the Sea King pirates? They will not stand by and watch our escape. Especially the Beast King. We probably can't get away with him around. Someone will deal with them. You guys just run. Someone will meet you when the time comes. Shob looked at True King. What about you? You're not coming with us? I have other tasks. You guys don't have to worry about me. If it was someone visiting the prison who came to tell them about the plan, they might have had some concerns. But True King had come into the cell. That was enough to show their determination to rescue them. Besides, they were waiting for death here anyway. So they had to give it a shot as well. They had nothing to lose even if they lost. Just when Shob was dueling with the Beast King was when they would strike. Hey brother, I still have a few brothers over there. Can we save them together? Bolton suddenly said. I also have a few friends. When the time comes to riot, the more people the better. Why not bring them together? It's up to their fate whether they can run away or not. Shane also said. Well, True King said with difficulty, I'm not afraid of more people. The key is I'm afraid of leaking information. Gee man, what is there to worry about? Think about it. Who in this group here is not waiting for death? Who would snitch if they had a chance to escape? Shob also said yes, these people lost the war. Countless relatives and friends were killed. Only before we did not see the hope of revenge and had to wait for death. This is good. We do not need to tell them the specific details. Just let them be ready to riot. When the time comes, just run with us. Shob gave a most secure suggestion. True King thought about it and nodded okay. In the evening, the slaves were moving around the gladiatorial arena, surrounded by armed guards. Shane, Burton, and Shobe wandered around, going to work on their muscles for a while, and then going to run with a bunch of people. True King saw these three men covertly communicate with some people. The people who received the news would be shocked to show more or less, but they tried to suppress it to avoid being noticed as abnormal. Not long after, those people began to contact another group of people. Black lines covered True King's forehead. They had said only to save Shob the one, the result somehow brought two more, and somehow brought a bunch. And from this spreading trend, several hundred slaves almost all knew. A wave of people passing by True King nodded toward him secretly. The meaning was as if to say, brother, we got it. Two days later, today was a day of island-wide attention. Just today, the original Navy Lieutenant Shob who won 89 consecutive games would encounter one of the most terrifying battles. The head of the Sea King Pirates. Rex the Beast King would personally come down to the field and fight him in an unusually fierce battle to the death. That's the word. But everyone knew that the so-called battle to the death just to see how long Shob can hold out. When Shob stood in the gladiatorial arena, there was already a man standing opposite him. This man was no shorter than Shob, about two meters tall, wearing a tank top and shorts. His body's well-proportioned muscles and lines were clearly visible. His short red hair was particularly striking. With a smile on his face, he accepted the cheers of everyone on the scene. Beast King! Beast King! Beast King! In the past, it was Shob who enjoyed such cheers. However, today, the only one who could get cheers from the whole crowd was that man. Not long after, the gates at each entrance opened one after another, and 677 slave gladiators were escorted out by the guards. A circle of guards stood around the gladiatorial arena, holding long guns ready to shoot down the restless slaves. In the stands, an MC shouted excitedly, Dear audience, our Beast King is on the march again. As usual, we will let all the slaves watch this game together and cheer for their beloved heroes. The so-called let them cheer and cheer. But it's just to make the Beast King win with more sense of achievement, right? However, this time the situation was different from all the previous ones. Shob looked at his cellmates who were standing in a circle around him, and everyone was staring at him closely. On the one hand, they were worried about Shob's safety. On the other hand, they were waiting for that signal. Shob, come on! One slave raised his arm high and shouted, For freedom! This double entendre resonated with all the slaves at once. For freedom! For freedom! Shob found True King in the crowd, and the two nodded at the same time after making eye contact. True King's eyes landed near the exit of the second floor bleachers, where Avril and the others were sitting. Avril secretly nodded to True King. It looked like everything was going well, just waiting for Shob and the Beast King to fight. The guard stepped forward and unlocked Shob's shackles. With a smile on his face, the Beast King walked over step by step and looked Shob up and down at a distance. Shob, I know that you must have the ability to break through to this level with your strength. But unfortunately, you still don't have any chance. Ha 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 Shob, I just like to give people a little bit of hope, and then destroy it with my own hands at the end. 
This is the only way to make people feel desperate. Shob snorted coldly, Beast King, you are so strong, but I still save my people from you. So you'll always be a loser in front of me. Shob's words obviously stung the Beast King, making his smile disappear all of a sudden and his face hideous. Loser? Shob, so brazen. Look where you are now. Like a dog here for the pleasure of others only, you have nothing left. In this one, I will show everyone how you will die without dignity at my hands. Prepare to die. Saying that the Beast King instantly blasted at Shob with one punch. There was a loud boom. This deafening sound was not the power of the Beast King's punch, but a sudden and violent explosion in the west stand of the gladiatorial arena. With this explosion, the audience over there instantly became a mess. Immediately after, several consecutive loud sounds. Boom boom boom. The corners of the gladiatorial arena erupted one after another. The gladiatorial bleachers began to collapse. True King saw this scene and his whole body muscles tightened up. The prison raid had begun. 154. Tyrannosaurus Emperor Form. A few explosions sent the entire audience into chaos. Even the Beast King's punch didn't fall down. He also froze. Tens of thousands of spectators fled frantically toward the exit, and all the guards in the stands were swept away by the tide of people. The scene was starting to get out of hand. The eyes of nearly 700 slaves all looked nervously at True King alone. And now everyone was waiting for him to give the word. They only had 15 minutes. True King broke open the shackles Rain had made for him and shouted, Charge! In a flash, all the slaves quickly overpowered the guards behind them. The slaves who could enter the arena were not weak, and they did not dare to move under the supervision of strong firepower before. But now the guards in the stands had been swept away by the crowd. In front of the sudden and neat riot of the tough slaves, the personal guards were no match for them and were quickly disarmed and seriously injured. Rain was dumbfounded in the stands. What the hell is going on here? Why are all the slaves rioting? Didn't they say they would only save Shob? According to his vision, those guards would definitely bring the other slaves back to the dungeon in order to prevent them from escaping after the full riot, and then they could do it. But the result was also good. The gang of slaves directly took care of the guards. Captain. Avril also looked at Rain in amazement. Rain thought for a moment, that's fine. This way the scene is more chaotic and more effective. Arson, protect me while I have a few words with True Queen. Roger that, Captain. Rain quickly shifted his consciousness, which came quickly to True Queen's side. True Queen, this is the Captain, your mission has changed. Now you pick up all the slaves that come out. Huh. Oh, got it. Rain quickly returned to the body of Son of Poseidon and sat quietly after arranging the mission of True Queen's side, continuing to pay attention to the changing situation. True King led the army of slaves and rushed up to the second floor stands. Seeing the slaves up in the stands, the audience fled even more frantically. True King also did not care about them. After taking out a few guards along the way, he led the group out of the gladiatorial arena all the way. Whether or not these slaves would run away would only depend on their fate. But this time, Traqueen and the others came over to meet them. How did you guys come? The captain asked us to pick up you. True King thought about it, and said to Shane and Bolton behind him, Follow them, your chances of living will be greater. After saying that, True King turned around and returned to the gladiatorial arena. He still had his mission. Someone to pick up was the best of course. Shane and Bolton hastily followed Traqueen and the others rush outside. However, just at that moment, a large group of people about 200 blocked in front of Traqueen and the others at once. Want to run? Don't you know who covers this place? A goatee man at the head of the group sneered at the crowd, revealing a confident and sinister smile. It's the Sea King Pirates. Shane stared at the gang with a deadly stare. Traqueen was anxious. There were too many people escaping this time, which made it difficult for them to hide in the crowd. And they were blocked by the Sea King Pirates at once. They were running out of time and couldn't delay here much longer. Now they only had one choice, take out the Sea King Pirates crowd that stopped in front of them. Guys, it looks like we have to fight to the death, Traqueen said to Shane and the others. Shane nodded and shouted to the slaves behind him, Damn it, brothers, charge. Success or failure is at stake. These slaves escaped from the abyss of death, many of them and the Sea King Pirates had a deep hatred. In this situation, the slaves pounced on the Sea King Pirates like crazy. Gladiatorial arena stands, a certain VIP box, a security captain panicked to call headquarters, hey, hey, headquarters, it's bad, there is a riot in the gladiatorial arena, all the slaves have run away, what, you guys hold on, I'm gonna bring someone here right away, we can't hold it, there is a serious explosion in the arena, 
The audience is rushing out like crazy. We can't find our people. Damn, wait for us. They're hung up the phone. The person on the other end of the line must be rapidly assembling troops and rushing this way. True King returned to the chaotic gladiatorial arena, which was still in chaos with stampedes in many places, cries, screams, and gunfire everywhere. But everyone was still frantically rushing to the exit. Not enough, True King muttered, sneaking into the dungeon where the beast was being held alone. Shob didn't run, not that he didn't want to run but there was a man in front of him. No matter how chaotic the surroundings were, the beast king remained motionless and looked at Shob with a smile. Shob, it seems that your friend wants to save you, but what's the use of making such a big noise? You won't escape as long as I'm here, and I can tell you responsibly, those slaves can't get away there. If I want to kill someone, no one can escape. Transformation, Tyrannosaurus Emperor, an angry cry that even overpowered the screams of countless people in the entire arena. At this moment, everyone could not help but stop in their tracks and look at the center of the gladiatorial arena in horror. Rex, who was already two meters tall, reached a height of three meters directly after his transformation. This is no longer the height a human should have. His skin turned dark gray, his muscles were as hard as rocks, and his eyes were bloodshot. My god, the beast king has actually transformed? He has never transformed in the arena. Now in this situation, he must want a quick battle. Rex's body became abnormally large, but his speed did not slow down, and he rushed towards Shob at an extremely fast speed. A heavy punch was thrown at Shob. The punch was so powerful that just looking at it made people feel unprecedented pressure. Shob got eyes wide open, and the moment Rex's fist came over, he whispered, Mist. Rex's punch, which weighed a thousand pounds passed through a cloud of white mist and hit the ground hard, blowing a huge crater directly into the unique green stone floor of the gladiatorial arena. He quickly found Shob who had just appeared at his side and threw another punch. Your fog can only be used five times but my fist can be used infinitely. Can you avoid it? Ho 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 ho, five punches in total, each of which was laced with tremendous power. Five punches had passed, and Shob's face was getting ugly. The guy not only attacked super fiercely so that a single punch can be able to dry himself, but also had an extremely strong defense. He still didn't find any opportunity to attack after using five mist. Ha 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 ha, a stage for mutant. It's a joke in front of me. Go to hell. Rex used an even stronger force with the last punch as if he wanted to blast Shob into a pulp with one punch. Just at that moment, a short figure suddenly sprang out. He was short like a weak chicken in front of the three meter tall Rex the Tyrannosaurus Emperor form. Immediately after, he caught Rex's punch with both hands. Those spectators who did not have time to escape actually forgot to continue running for their lives and stood there dumbed after seeing this scene. Oh my god! This can't be. 155. Dragon vs. Tyrannosaurus. Oh my god! This can't be. Someone actually managed to catch a punch from Beast King the Tyrannosaurus Emperor form? And a kid? Shob looked in horror at this guy who was blocking in front of him. Who is this person? Why is he so strong? Rain pushed Rex out of the way with one hand and said with a sideways glance, Still watching the show? Go, Terry is on stage. Shob stood up and was about to leave, but suddenly stopped again. What about you? Me? You think I'm here to save you? Actually, it was just by the way. Rain looked faintly at the stunned Rex with a faint smile, and stood there were four million white pearls. I'm here to get the bounty. Poof, Shob almost got a mouthful of blood sprayed out. This guy fell inside the money? What time is it that he was still thinking about the bounty? Are you out of your mind? Go on, get out of the way, Rain urged. Shob also knew his current state which could not help much. He said to be careful to Rain and then quickly run towards Terry not far away. Rex also looked at the kid in amazement. This unimpressive kid actually caught his punch. Although it was caught with two hands, he did not seem to have transformed. So you planned this prison robbery? Rex narrowed his eyes slightly. Rain smiled faintly. Actually I only planned half of it. It's all my crew's fault for going AWOL and making such a big fuss all at once. I'll teach that kid a good lesson when I get back. Ha <laughs> ha. Rex couldn't help but laugh. I suddenly found you much funnier than Shob. Coming for the bounty? Honestly, I haven't heard anyone mention that in front of me in years. Rain squeezed the bone in his hand, making a clucking sound, and craned his neck again. Cut the crap. I'm on a tight schedule. Ten seconds to finish you. Rain's voice was not loud, yet the rest of the audience heard it. Now that the buildings that should have collapsed have almost collapsed. After several previous shocks, people found little danger around, 
and many were bold enough to choose to watch the battle. This is not a battle that money can see. That kid is so big, actually said 10 seconds to fix the beast king. Self-importance. I think it is he himself cannot last 10 seconds. The most shocked is still Rex. He looked at Rain excitedly after a burst of laughter. Ha ha ha. This is really the funniest joke I've heard in my life. But kid, what you did has successfully angered me. I'm going to blow you into a pile of mud within 10 seconds. Tyrannosaurus Emperor Transformation 2. Rex's body swelled further with another roar, reaching a height of three and a half meters. His gray-brown muscles were like a block of rock under a thick layer of Tyrannosaurus skin. His forehead appeared Tyrannosaurus-like angles, sharp bones bared from the fist. Rain instantly thought of Wolverine. But now was not the time to wander. Rain sideways looked at the woman in the stands. Avril had already prepared early. Seeing the captain looking at herself, she knew it was time to unleash her skills. Cellular control. Grow. Cellular control. Decay. At the same time as he just felt a slight heat coming from his body, Rain bellowed, transform. Rain wasn't stupid enough to use the first change of the dragon on land, which would only decay his attributes. He chose to activate the second and third changes at the same time. The second change of level 20 can form a layer of dragon scales on the surface of the body, which can increase the underwater movement speed by 200% and defense power by 100 points. Rain can get dragon skin and dragon bones with a third change at the current level to improve the defense and hardness of the flesh. He could get unarmed attack power and defense power by 100 points. Underwater movement speed was a useless attribute. These two transformations can provide Rain with 100 points of attack power and 200 points of defense power. Rain's height grew to 1 meter 8 after the transformation and was covered with black scales armor. All over the muscles although not as visually striking as Rex, but very uniform and more linear. His bones did not elongate, but only increased the hardness of the bones. Tiger's Fawn. This should be Rain's strongest form on land with a total combat power of 846, and that's not counting the enhancement of his five senses and reflexes. Tiger's Fang and Cell Control were both 10 seconds. Rain only had 10 seconds. In an instant, Rain's entire body shot toward Rex like a cannonball. The boulder tiles on the ground left a depression caused by Rain's right foot when he stepped hard on the ground. Rex's eyes were wide open. This guy's speed was too fast. Damn it. He hurriedly threw a punch with all his might. This punch was even fiercer than the previous one that the air around his fist formed a vortex with the intention of killing Rain with one blow. Rex was stage 5 level 3, and the basic combat power was 106. Due to the land creature transformation and extremely strong Emperor Tyrannosaurus mutation, fighting on the ground would let his attributes soar by 530% at reach 667. If it just compares the basic attributes, he's even higher than Rain. With the two stage transformations that provided him with 159 points of attack and 159 points of defense, his peak battle power could reach 985. That was why Rex could become the three great beast kings of the beast class C. He definitely had an amazing battle power. However, it's just a shame that he met Rain, who had Avril the most terrifying support crew. Although Avril couldn't affect the attack and defense power provided by the two-stage transformation, Rex's combat power was only 718 after reducing the basic ability by 40%, which was no match for Rain. In the nick of time, Rain sidestepped his body and tried to avoid the punch with his enhanced vision and reflexes. However, Rex, an absolute combat connoisseur, sensed Rain's movement at the moment of the punch and desperately used his body that much clumsier than usual to forcefully change the direction of the punch. This punch scraped Rain's chest. Emperor Tyrannosaurus power scraped Rain's dragon scales straight off. What tricks did you guys pull? Why did my body become so heavy? Rex said angrily, fuck, I must not keep you. Saying that Rex struck another left punch. Rain bent down to avoid it. Rain was also secretly shocked in his heart. Rex was indeed strong. If he didn't have Avril to assist him, he wouldn't be a match for him. Rex threw another straight punch at Rain's face at that moment. The same move and the same ferocity. Rain dodged to the side, but Rex had expected Rain to dodge. He bent his elbow slightly, ready to turn the straight punch into an elbow strike. Little bastard, you're still too young. Go to hell. Rain bellowed back, you're the one who's going to die, Naga's gaze full power. The skill that can be used five times in a row were all used by Rain at once. Naga's gaze disoriented Rex for a moment, but he quickly reacted. But the power of the blow had been weakened. 
This time, Rain gathered all his strength. He put one hand on Rex's wrist and locked it while Rex's elbow was not fully bent, leaped high at the same time, and put a knee to Rex's elbow. No one expected that Rain would actually attack Rex's elbow, and this would be a head-on-head. -head. Knee to elbow, dragon versus tyrannosaurus. Ah, Rain shouted violently, forehead veins bulging, eyes filling with blood, break. 156. Being hunted. Ah, Rain bellowed, his forehead bulging with veins and his eyes filling with blood, break. Rain exploded all his strength, while Rex's eyes also bulged out. The muscles in his arms bulged high. All those who witnessed the battle were as mentally tense as Rex's arm, which could break at any moment. Two seconds later, with a click, Rex's right arm elbow snapped weirdly inwards. A miserable scream, a section of white bone pierced out directly from under the skin. The noise of the scene became surprisingly quiet all of a sudden at this moment. My god, this, this is not real. That kid actually broke the Beast King's arm hard, and the Beast King is on the second change. This can't be. The battle did not stop because of the shock of the crowd. Rain landed on the ground, and then stomped on Rex's knees with two consecutive kicks. Both of Rex's legs were hit and both calves were fractured. After both legs were fractured, Rex fell to the ground. Rain staggered his feet. While flashing behind Rex, he clasped his left hand and wrenched it hard along the reverse. This is the battle between the strong. The victory is only a hair's breadth. Rex's arm was broken. Rain took advantage of the momentum to pursue and did not give him any chance to breathe. He broke Rex's both legs and left arm. Almost in the blink of an eye, Rex had already lost all his limbs and became disabled. The ten seconds of strengthening time also ended at this moment. The surrounding audience stood in place woodenly, forgetting to even run away. Aye, aye, aye. The man could not even say the following words. This is fucking too scary. What kind of demon is that kid? Impossible. Impossible. This can't be true. The Beast King was actually defeated. One bear hurriedly rushed up to the gladiatorial stage. Captain, is everything all right? Rain shook his head lightly. Tie this guy up. It is worth a lot of money. Hurry up, we don't have much time. One bear tied Rex up and carried him on his shoulders, and then found Avril and the others with Rain. Several people quickly left the gladiatorial arena. Just out of the exit, Rain saw a loud group fight not far away. True Queen and the others were leading hundreds of slaves to fight with the Sea King pirates, and the scene was extremely chaotic. However, the Sea King pirates actually prevailed. Although they only numbered more than 200 people, the strength was extremely strong. It seemed to be the elite of the Sea King pirates. Rain brow locked. This situation was a bit out of his expectations. The number of joining in the melee was too much, and no one was weak. Now only a dozen people around him. It was difficult to achieve victory in a short time. If Clark Island's army comes over, they will all be doomed. He could leave other slaves alone, but he could not leave Traqueen and the others. It's just that the situation was so chaotic right now that he couldn't even find all his crew. Once he brought people to join the battle, he would probably fall into a quagmire and hard to pull himself out. Damn it. Rain hesitated a little. One bear, give me Rex. You guys hide first. I'll distract them. You wait for the pirates to leave and bring everyone on board right away. Captain, what about you? The crowd looked anxiously at Rain. Don't mind me. There's no time now. Hurry. Saying that Rain grabbed Rex, carried him on his shoulder list, and walked towards the battlefield. You bastards, look who it is. Rain shouted to all. Many of the Sea King pirates looked at the sound. When they saw Rex, who had regained his human form, they were all shocked. Captain, how could this happen? The captain is in that kid's hands. The goatee man forced back Traqueen with a slash, and stared with eyes wide open at Rex who was already like mud. Captain, quick everyone, go save the captain. Rain saw all those people rushing towards him, picked up Rex on his back, and turned his head to run. The pirates behind him couldn't care less about fighting. They directly left behind their opponents, crazy to chase Rain. The unusually fierce battlefield suddenly only a face of confusion Traqueen, Shane and others. At this moment, one bear rushed out from a corner and shouted to Traqueen, Quick, come with us. Although Traqueen was still not clear about what was happening, this time it is too late to ask more questions. She immediately led all the men and slaves to follow one bear and others and rush to their ship. At the same time, Rain was being chased by more than 200 people. He was not familiar with the nearby terrain, so he didn't dare to run around, just ran wildly around the gladiatorial arena. 
Rain took the opportunity to look back once and found more than two hundred men behind him with swords raised and bloodthirsty expressions, hissing as they chased behind him. What the hell? More than two hundred people. Rain immediately felt his butt tighten and hurriedly continued to flee. Many onlookers saw this scene dumbfounded. A child carrying an adult was followed by more than two hundred fierce-looking people frantically running in circles outside the gladiatorial arena. After three or four circles, the gang of pirates was unable to catch up with Rain, and they finally found Rain's escape regularity. This guy just kept circling. A third of the pirates began to run in the opposite direction so that they can intercept him. Rain counted the time. The crew should be almost safe now, but it seemed to be a little difficult to get out for him. As long as he is caught up, he will be chopped into meat no matter how powerful he is. Although he could still escape through the transfer of consciousness, he was certainly not willing to give up the body of the son of Poseidon. Just at this point, he found himself rushing out in front of dozens of pirates. Well, he was pinned back and forth. Honestly, Rain himself was a little dizzy after so many circles. Where exactly does the side street lead? Where do I have to escape from? If it leads to the port, there is still hope. But if it leads in the other direction, it is possible to encounter the supporting army, and he will certainly die. While Rain was hesitating, the pirates quickly blocked Rain all the direction of escape and surrounded Rain. Boy, this time let me see where you can run. Goatee man looked at Rain angrily. Dare to hurt our captain. I will flay you alive. Kill him. Kill him. Rex was on Rain's back. He had been shaken to the point of dizziness. After he found Rain surrounded by his men, he laughed, boy, this time you won't get away with it. I will pay back ten times what you did to me. No, a hundred times. A thousand times. Rain stepped backward, but the iron door behind him was closed. The Sea King Pirates elite crew around more than two hundred was closing step by step. Damn, I'm really going to be done here this time. Rain gasped. He knew, this time he was in a bad way. The captain said to slowly torture him to death. Reward ten thousand pearls for live capture. Goatee shouted. Everyone's eyes suddenly became snowy and a bunch of people jumped to try. At this moment, didn't know why, everyone felt the earth under their feet begin to shake slightly. Everyone stopped in their tracks. They stared at the closed door. There seemed to be something terrifying behind that door. 157. Narrow escape. Suddenly, a clanging sound came from this iron door, followed by the door opening. From inside, a man rushed out. He froze for a moment when he saw Rain outside the door, but quickly reacted, and shouted urgently at Rain, Captain, run. This person was none other than True King. Rain was dumbfounded. However, there was a rumbling sound from inside the darkened door as if thousands of beasts were about out from inside. As the sound got closer and closer, Rain gulped dryly. True King seemed to have done something remarkable. Ow! Oh, a roar made the ground everyone's sweaty hair erect. Inside the door, the figure of the group of things gradually cleared up. When they see this scene, those shouting to kill Rain's pirate group members rounded eyes, and the body could not help but back. Holy shit! It is the army of mutant beasts! Quickly, run! At this time, not to mention catch Rain, it was too late to run. They all turn around and run wild. Rain and True King naturally joined the fleeing team. At the time, everyone was friendly and fled together. Not long after, a large army of mutant beasts frantically poured out of the gate. They were like prisoners who had been imprisoned for too long, and had finally been given the chance to take revenge. A group of people was fleeing in front of the beasts. A spotted tiger at the head gave a roar and the army of beasts quickly chased them. Rain was quite depressed. He had just been chased by more than 200 people, and now he was being chased by a group of fierce beasts that even without even a chance to rest. The speed of the beasts was extremely fast. In not much time, they had caught some of the slow runners. Even if those people were stage 3, or even stage 4 mutants, they were still trampled to mud under the hooves of the army of beasts. Run towards the army! One person in front of them shouted, and the crowd quickly turned. Rain and True King saw this and quickly chose another path, dashing in the direction of the port. The army of beasts instinctively chose the way with more people. Rain and True King secretly hid in the shadows to watch for a while, and finally breathed a sigh of relief. Holy shit. True King, I'd be dead if it weren't for you. Captain, let's hurry back to the ship. I'll carry this guy. No, I'll carry it. Two people were preparing to slip through. At this moment, the end of the army of beasts, the spotted tiger suddenly looked this way. The pair of amber pupils and Rain got a four-eye contact. Rain did not dare to move. The mutant tiger seemed to be the head of the beast army. If it shouted again, they would be finished.
The tiger looked at Rain and then saw True King. After a few moments of stalemate, the tiger made a move. It rushed towards Rain's side. Holy shit! Quick, quick, run! Avril, Fancy, and True Queen stood at the bow of the ship, looking anxiously into the distance. At this time, there were a large number of slaves on the ship. Shob and others were safely back on the ship. Only Rain and True King did not return. Why haven't the captain and True King returned yet? Fancy said anxiously. Avril's eyes were also anxious. They will definitely come back. We will not leave until they are back. Shob, Shane, Bolton, Arson, and One Bear Two Bear ordered all the slaves to crouch against the side of the ship and hands on their heads. All their ankle chains were still tied. These people still could not be fully trusted. These slaves were quite obedient under the pacification of Shob and others, squatting there in a row one by one. Arranging the slaves, all the people on the boat were anxiously looking at the shore. Suddenly, the sound of heavy gunfire rang out from the island, and the hearts of all the people tightened. Clark Island's army had arrived. Rain and True King had even less chance to escape. Hey, well, when will you guys leave? The army is coming. If we don't go we may not be able to leave. Shane plucked up courage and urged. He was also anxious. All the ship's crew stood on the side of the deck. They had no intention to leave. Shut up. Arson couldn't help but shout. We're not leaving until the captain and True King return. Shob asked suspiciously, Avril, your captain is, that kid? Avril nodded, yes. Shob took a deep breath. He reminded the image of Rain helping him block Rex's fatal punch in front of him. Thinking about it, he also stood in line. Hope they can come back alive. The sound of artillery fire appeared on the island. It looked like the army was moving out to attack with artillery. Everyone's heart was heavy, and some people's eyes were already a little red. An ominous thought began to become stronger and stronger. But even so, no one left the place. They were all waiting for a miracle to appear. Boom 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 boom. A series of heavy cannon fires erupted from the island, and Fancy was the first to hold back. Avril's sister, the captain and brother True King, could it be? Avril hugged Fancy tightly, don't worry, they'll be fine. When everyone felt that hope was getting slim, two figures sprang out from the shore of the jungle. They were overjoyed when they watched this. Captain? Brother True King? Rain and True King didn't have time to greet them. The two men were terrified and they rushed toward the ship with all their strength and madness. Rex was now also very conflicted. He didn't want to be captured by Rain. But with the tiger chasing him, he prayed Rain wouldn't leave him behind. Fortunately, Rain didn't leave him behind. Get ready to sail, Rain shouted as he ran. The group of people was confused. Why was the captain in such a hurry? Was there an army behind him? While the crowd was puzzled, Another huge figure sprang out from the dense forest. The crowd took a look and drew a breath of cold air. Holy shit. Yes, it's a beast. There may be more behind. Quickly raise the anchor. Tick hurriedly ordered, one bear, two bear. Remove the landing pad as soon as captain and true king on aboard. Good thing there was no one in the way on the dock at this time. A bunch of ships had run away long ago after such a big incident on the island. The ship was slowly moving away from the shore. Rain and True King rushed all the way up to the wooden bridge on the pier, leaped high with the help of running, and fell together on the landing board. Finally, they were on board. The ship was gradually away from the pier, and the two people finally a sigh of relief. They lay on the landing board and did not want to move at all. Damn, I'm tired to hell. It's killing me. True King also breathed heavily. Captain, not good. Look at that guy. One bear suddenly shouted. Rain and True King sat up and looked at the pier wide-eyed. They saw the spotted tiger doubled in size. Running wildly on the pier like a flash even its figure became a little blurred. Immediately after, it leaped high up. With a bang, that guy landed in front of Rain, True King, and Rex. What? Rain's eyes were almost out. The distance between the boat and the pier was at least 70 or 80 meters. This guy actually jumped over? Captain, run! True King barely stood up and blocked in front of Rain. The spotted tiger stared at True King with a bloody mouth, panting heavily. It was also very tiring. The next moment, it slowly came together in front of True King. Everyone's heart seemed to stop. Then, the Tiger King stretched out its tongue and licked True King. Huh! Everyone was dumbfounded. 158. Shob's choice. The mutant tiger didn't attack them, and pampered True King? Rain's eyes were full of shock. Could it be the tiger recognized that True King was a Dinophelus mutation? and it was a female tiger, so it was showing goodwill to True King. Thinking of this possibility, Rain could not help but sweat for True King. True King, at this time, I can only let you sacrifice your sex. True King tried to touch the tiger's head. 
This guy's body also became smaller, lying beside True King, leaning close, allowing him to pet it. It also rubbed its head against Rain who was on the side. Captain, I get it. True King suddenly shouted. It recognized me. It recognizes that I let them out. Rain realized that it wasn't because the mutant tiger had taken a liking to True King, but there seemed to be more to it than that. Rain thought as he listened to the sound of artillery fire. The gang carefully put away the landing pad. The tiger walked leisurely around the deck and just saw White lying there sunbathing. The tiger originally wanted to come to grab the territory. It bared its teeth towards White, but the result was that White turned around and was not afraid of it at all. White let out a low growl in its throat. The tiger instantly was out seeing this and ran to another side to snooze. Rain got on board and threw Rex to one side. Those slaves took a look, and each one was scared out of his mind. Holy shit, it's the Beast King? Who did this? All the limbs are broken. It can't be. It can't be this kid. The ship finally sailed towards the outer sea. After True King explained what happened in the dungeon, he said to Rain, Captain, it's all my fault. I went AWOL and brought so many people with me. Rain frowned slightly. Although True King had disrupted his plan and must be punished heavily, there were two things that could make him mitigate the punishment. When Rain first set up the mission, the general policy was to create chaos. True King mobilized all the slaves to riot. That was essentially doing what Rain had asked. Their encounter with the elite disciples of the Sea King pirates put Rain in danger. But then again, it also bought Rain time to fight Rex one-on-one -on -one and facilitated the evacuation of the others. If they only saved Sho Balone, those elite pirates would still surround them. The situation was more complicated than now, and even some people would be left behind. In addition, the move the release of the beast also successfully solved the crisis at that time. Rain thought about it and said, True King, in fact, it's not entirely your fault. Your decision largely increased the success rate of our operation. At that time, you were alone in the dungeon and could not inform me. I also forgot to put a screw cap on you. The time for planning was very short. Rain also could not be well considered in every aspect. However, you made too much. At the time, it is likely to make us too late to react to face such a big change. This time we are considered lucky, but next time may not be. So you clean the ship for the next six months. This punishment was basically irrelevant. Rain's main purpose was not to punish True King but to hope that others would not follow suit. Yes, Captain. The others had no problem with True King's punishment. The others had followed Rain for so long that they could see Rain's intentions. After dealing with Trooking's matter, Rain and the others walked out from the captain's room. At this time, Shobe, Shane, Bolton, and nearly 550 slaves were waiting there. Avril and the others went to Shobe and asked about his condition. Only at this time did everyone have time to stop and say hello to this old friend. Seeing Shobe, Rain couldn't help but laugh secretly. This guy was now just covered in a pair of shorts. His navy suit and blue cape were gone, and no cigar. Little Booty had been resting on Shob's shoulder. It recognized his former master. Shob, it's been a long time, Rain said. We've, uh, met before? Shob already knew Rain was the captain, but couldn't remember meeting the man before. Rain laughed, yeah? We'll talk about that later. Now was not the time to explain the details. Rain walked up to the slaves. The strength of these people was quite good. There were about 300 in stage 2 more than 200 in stage 2, and 37 in stage 4. Among them, Shobe, Shane, and Bolton were all stage 4 level 5 and were not comparable to True King. Rain said to Shobe after thinking about it, Do you have any plans? Shobe looked to Rain and Bolton. Seeing that both nodded and let him be the spokesman, he said, We have just discussed this. We are all very grateful that you were able to save us. Our fleets have been destroyed and those who are here are homeless. We are willing to follow you if you are willing to take them in. You are willing to? Rain asked. Yes. Shobe nodded heavily. I've been completely disappointed in the Navy. I don't owe them anything anymore. You are the fleet that can make miracles. I am willing to join you. Shane looked at Rain and said, Captain, now we have nothing. If you are willing to take us in, we are willing to do our best and follow the Captain. Yes, the only fate that was waiting for us was death. This time we were saved by you, and we are willing to give our lives as a reward. The other said, Captain, where else can we go now? Take us in please. Captain, you don't have many men here, do you? We are all experienced crew members, and we will never say anything in case of danger. You rescued us from the gladiatorial arena, so what reason do we have not to work for you? Rain looked at the men and nodded slightly. Speaking of which, showed this guy used to come and poached his crew every day. 
But who would have thought that now Shob actually became his own crew and brought such a large group of people with him? These people were worth a lot of money. It was no exaggeration to say that he could never buy so many slaves without tens of millions of white pearls if he were to buy them. And to be able to be sent into the gladiatorial arena meant that their fighting ability was very strong. As for loyalty, he could examine it afterward. Okay, you guys can stay if you want, but I don't need so many on board, Rain said indifferently. I will arrange other jobs for you guys. But before that, we have two big businesses to do. Huh? Two big businesses? Shob looked surprised. Was rescuing so many slaves not big? Clark Island Artillery Fire was used to deal with the beasts. But the beasts were crazy. Which made Clark's army waste three days to kill or capture all the beasts. It was worth mentioning that the elite forces of the Sea King pirates suffered heavy losses. 270 elite troops were directly beaten by beasts plus the indistinguishable artillery fire, leaving only a small number of them. In the Sea King Pirates main ship Beast King, a goatee man had a face blue. Their stage 4 crew was left with only 40 people. Most importantly, their boss was crippled and taken away. This was a great shame for the Sea King Pirates of the three fleets of the Beast Class C. Thinking of this, the goatee man was furious and shot up, still haven't caught up with them? At this moment, Outside the captain's cabin, a crew member sharply rushed into the captain's cabin, Vice Captain Henry I. I see that ship is heading our way. What? Henry's eyes were full of amazement. Was their navigator wrong direction, or was the compass out of order? But no matter what, they were coming. Good, just in time. Inform the five fleets. Prepare for battle. Get them. I'll eat them alive. 159. Come back. At this moment, a large number of slaves stood anxiously on the deck of the ship. Why do we have to go back? Are we looking for death? Are they going to send us back? No. Don't. The Sea King pirates are crazy. They will kill us. Avril saw some people speculating wildly, turned to the crowd, and said, Everyone be quiet. Since our captain said he would take you in, he will do what he said. Avril, so what are we doing now? That's their fleet up ahead. Yeah, they're sending out at least two fleets. Their ships have a great range of fire and incredible ship speed. No one can escape from under the noses of the Sea King pirates. Avril raised her voice. Everyone, be quiet. Now that you are part of the ship, you have to trust all of the captain's decisions that can get you out of Clark Island. I don't think anyone will think a captain is a brain-dead man. These words had calmed the hearts of these new crew members a little. Saving people from Iron Cage was not something everyone could do, let alone saving so many people at once. Avril said to the crowd, don't make any noise. Besides, you all have nothing to do with this move. Just watch, just to understand the strength of our bounty group. Under Avril's reassurance, the crowd finally quieted down. But there was still a strong sense of doubt and fear of the unknown in their eyes. Shob, Shane, and Bolton walked over to Avril, and Shob asked, Avril, what the hell are we going to do? Avril was obviously much more patient with Shob. They were old friends after all. You may not know the captain very well. He is a relatively, um, not relatively. It is very greedy for money. Shane had a puzzled, so? So, although the capture of Rex is equal to the defeat of the Sea King pirates, he must be thinking about those ship's treasure chests. Avril was worthy of Rain's beloved. Rain did not have to explain, and she would be able to guess his thoughts. We're going to sink the other side ships and plunder the treasure chests. Avril looked at the three, right, Shob, later you watch a bit. If anyone is sticky-fingered, we definitely will not keep them. No need to tell them now. Captain will see how they behave themselves. Shob got wide-eyed and did not respond for a while. Avril, you, you are not kidding, are you? The other two fleets are enough to destroy a navy's brigade formation. They beat our naval brigade without a fight before. Avril smiled faintly. Shob, you know, in fact, it was always the captain who commanded the ship from the beginning you know us. He will definitely blow your mind. Within Rain's radar range, 150 ships had appeared. The vast fleet of ships formed two lines, traveling side by side in an orderly fashion. These ships were not the entire force of the Sea King pirates, but actually just two of their fleet. This island mutation made them lose a large number of elite level crew members. Many of those elite crew members held essential positions in multiple ships. Their deaths directly led to the inability of the three fleets to form an effective battle force for a short period. This time they just barely assembled the first and third fleets. Of course, they thought two fleets would have been more than enough to deal with one ship. Rain, on the other hand, seized this opportunity to drive some distance before coming back. 
Now that his radar range had leveled up, the field of view on his radar had become much wider than before. Rain stared at the mass of ships with full attention. Very well, then let me try out my new weapon on you. Assassin torpedoes, fire. The wind and waves around them were strong. Just then, whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. Forty torpedoes struck silently from the tubes. Five thousand meters away from rain, the forty ships in the front row of the first and third fleets were suddenly attacked. These behemoths lurched violently. The ship's speed decelerated down at once, and even the speed of the two fleets was affected. A large number of pirates rushed to the deck in panic. What's going on? We were attacked by an unknown. The bottom of the ship is seriously damaged, and now the cabin is seriously leaking. Quickly go to the bottom of the shipping warehouse to repair. Henry's ship was not hit. He rushed out of the captain's cabin after hearing the explosions around him. Torpedoes? Henry rushed to the bow of the ship and grabbed the binoculars to observe the distance, and see the ship was stopping in the distance. It's them. Notify all F-class warships to launch torpedo attacks. Captain, our swordfish torpedoes can't hit that far. Then closer them. The movements on Henry's side naturally did not escape Rain's observation. He quickly fired the second batch of assassin torpedoes. With a burst of explosions, another 40 enemy ships all hit. The attack power of the assassin torpedoes was doubled compared to the Lurker series. But Rain found that the pirate group's ships did not sink completely. Firstly, the Sea King pirates' ships were huge, the smallest being over 70 meters. Secondly, the bottoms of their ships had been reinforced and wrapped in metal shells. Assassins could blow up these metal shells and cause serious damage to their bottoms. But the difficulty to sink it with a torpedo was even more difficult than using a lurker bomb to sink a wooden ship. But Assassin did not disappoint Rain. The speed of the ships plummeted whenever he hit them. Shob stood on the deck. He could see clearly even without binoculars. He witnessed the whole process of all those ships being hit, and was already pale. All of them were hit? My god! How many Rekhal are on your ships? Such high accuracy. In Shob's opinion, there was only one person who could do it. That was Rekhal. For the veteran crew on board, the torpedoes had been just an appetizer. The real fire bombardment was still to come. Terry was leaning against the round metal hemisphere. He suddenly heard the captain speak to him. Terry, can't you watch the show somewhere else? Keep everyone away from here. Terry was excited, Captain. You're not going to use this, are you? I haven't used it since I put it on. Just to see how powerful it is. Terry's eyes were shiny. They looked at this spherical shield every day, but they didn't even know what was inside. Now they finally had a chance to see it. Okay, everyone stands back. Terry shouted and told the others to stand aside. As the hemispherical metal cover slowly opens, many people's mouth shapes could no longer close like the round metal cover. Shob's face was filled with a kind of untold horror. Holy God, this big guy, what the hell is it? In any weapon that had appeared in the past, it had never received this name. But this triple-mounted long-barreled gun got such a name. Main Guns, 160. The potential to become a legendary captain. Fury Thunder Gun, the front deck 360-degree rotatable triple-mounted main guns. Attack power 1000, range meters 5500. Armored defense 800 when the turret is closed. Total combat power 3600. The Fury Thunder was the strongest single attack cannon on the ship. The range was twice as far as the bow gun. And it was the triple mounted gun. The crowd looked at this metal monster proudly rotating its cannon and backed up step by step in fear. Rain himself was quite excited as he chose a ship over a hundred meters and took aim. Come on, let's see how good you are. Fire! The triple mounted gun opened fire at the same time. The crowd only heard a loud and deafening boom. Immediately after that, the high-speed shells hit the target accurately. The bow, the building, and the stern of that warship simultaneously sprouted rolling flames. In an instant, such a behemoth that made the rest of the fleet scared instantly fragmented and disintegrated. All the new crew members on the ship were dumbfounded and instantly petrified. Devil, it's just the devil. I can't believe there are guns that fierce. Well. I am really fucking glad that I'm standing on this ship. Holy shit. Shane's hands clutching his head, the whole person into a mess. What kind of firepower is this? I've never seen such fierce artillery in my life. Shobe's shock was no less than Shane's. But as a navy man, his shock point was more professional. My god, the range completely crushes the enemy's guns. The accuracy is simply perfect. When these two are combined, it is impossible for the other side to even get close. And the firepower, my god, I can't believe it. 
such a long distance can still maintain such a huge power. One shot can actually scrap an F4 class warship. Is there any fucking sense in this? However, these people's feelings were not the most genuine. The most deeply felt naturally on the pirate's side. Henry's side. The crew looked at the sky full of fire with hands covering their mouths. Eyes revealed an undisguised shock and fear. Henry also froze. What the fuck? Is this shit? While the crowd was dumbfounded, there was another earth-shattering gunshot. Henry's body even unconsciously shivered, followed by another ship destroyed right beside them. Henry looked blankly at the small dot in the distance, and a sudden feeling of powerlessness flooded his eyes. They could not hit the position of the other side. More depressing was that all the ships were currently torpedoed. They now could not hit and could even not run. So, they hit us at the beginning was not to sink us, but to make us only stand here, become their live target. Thinking of this, a trace of deep fear flashed across Henry's eyes. Dad, turned out to be this meaning. The following time was Rain's time to experiment with various weapons. Ding, the other side was found to be firing 36 swordfish type torpedoes. Rain said indifferently, fire torpedoes to intercept. The sea erupted with blasting sounds again and again. A column of water shot up into the sky. That distance was no threat to rain at all. And rain finally let the other side enter the range of the cannon. Boom 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 boom. The sound of artillery fire had become so continuous that it was impossible to distinguish. Thunder cannon, thunder armor piercing cannon, and thunder mortar organized into a firepower network from all directions, instantly flooding the opposing fleet. Under the terrifying firepower catharsis, the two so-called F-8-class pirate fleets turned into a pile of debris. When the huge metal cover of the main gun closed again, everyone's mouth was still open. Shob. Shane's gaze was dull. What kind of a ship did we get on? Bolton echoed, Shob, does your navy have a ship that fierce? Shob was also confused, and he did not answer the two men. The next time was everyone's favorite part of the day. Avro gave the order, and the crew, including the new crew, quickly went into the water frantically salvaging metal and treasure chests. 150 treasure chests were quickly salvaged with the efforts of nearly 600 people. One bear led the men to get pearl bags from the pirates' bodies surfacing the sea as usual. When 150 treasure chests were on deck, Rain finally came out of the captain's room. He did not count the treasure chests first this time. Looking at the wet bunch of new crew members, Rain had everyone stand in line, turn on the system scan and check if they have any of my loot hidden on them. These people were Rain's crew, and the system could also scan the items on them directly. You, you, and you. Rain weaved through the crowd, naming over 30 people and having them come out of line. Okay, Avril, you guys can start counting the loot. Rain finished and walked up to the 32 people. His gaze became somewhat cold. I don't like it when someone lies to me. Once someone lies to me, I will never give them a second chance. Rain's tone was somewhat icy not at all casual like he usually was with the rest of the crew. Hearing that the captain's tone was a bit off, Arson, one bear, and two bears stood behind Rain, keeping a watchful eye on these people. Shob, Shane, and Bolton looked confused, not knowing what Rain was up to. Rain continued, hand over what doesn't belong to you and get out. Captain Yu, what are you talking about? We're a little confused. One of the crew members standing in front of Rain was still playing dumb. Rain snorted, one bear, two bear. The two immediately complied and walked over to the man, fumbled around on him for a while, and fished out five money bags. The other new crew members all looked shocked. This man actually stole the pearls? They had just come out of the gladiatorial arena. How could they have pearls? The only explanation was that they did not turn in the loot. Faced with the stolen goods, the man was like fell into the ice cellar. He immediately fell on his knees and begged Rain, Captain, I was wrong. Please give me another chance. I will never dare again. I, I am a stage for mutant. I can be of great use. Keep me please. Rain ignored the man. It has nothing to do with me even if you are stage 10. Now you leave. I can guarantee that you can leave alive at least. After the battle just now, everyone understood that the child in front of him was not an ordinary child. He was kind in general. But he was no less experienced and ruthless in business than the pirates. Words will be done. That was his style. If he said not to leave one alive, the sea would be full of dead bodies. After thinking about it, these 32 people put down all the pearls. They jumped in hesitation into the sea one after another. Rain turned around instead and said to the other new crew members, I do not owe you all. I am not obliged to save you, nor am I obliged to take you in. But I am also fair. Work well on my ship, 
then this ship will become your home, and I will not treat anyone poorly. On this ship, I can tolerate someone's mistakes, but never tolerate someone's heart not being on the ship. If you think my request is too much, you can leave now. I'll ask again, are there any more to leave? All the new crew members stared at Rain. After a moment, a strong man suddenly shouted, Captain, thank you for giving us a fair environment. This is the ship we want. This is the captain we want. Yes, Captain. They are only a few. We are willing to follow you to the death. Shob on the side was also quite amazed in his eyes. He didn't expect an 11 or 12 year old kid to have such drive. The black sheep were eliminated in order to make the team more cohesive, which was what a real captain should do. This guy already had the potential to become a legendary captain. 161. The road of enemies is narrow. This group of pirates was going to Clark Island gambling, so they were quite rich. Rain really earned a lot of money this time. They got 70,000 just black pearls alone, which is equivalent to 7 million white pearls. In addition, there were all kinds of skill books, treasure maps, and a lot of strange and exotic things. The pearls would be given to Avril to manage, the other items to Armin to let her sift through them. Just sell them when the time comes if there were no good things. After replenishing a large amount of ammunition, Rain began to head toward the new island. The road would take another three months, and Rain finally had a chance to get to know Shob properly. It's incredible. Shob couldn't stop shaking his head after listening to Avril's explanation and looked at Rain in shock. I've never heard of such a thing. Captain, I've always thought of you as a child, but I didn't expect you to be the son of Poseidon. Rain smiled slightly, turned around and took out a small iron box from the drawer and handed it to Shob. I have a little uncomfortable seeing you like this. This is for you. Shob took the box and saw a line on the box that read God Eater Cigars. Smoking is bad for your health. 100 cigars. This is. Shob hadn't smoked cigars in years. So when he saw the box, his hands trembled with excitement, and he slowly opened it. Inside the box lay the cigar he had been longing for. He couldn't wait to light one up and took a deep puff. Wow. They were all old acquaintances. After a brief encounter, and with this small gift, Shob and Rain were not so strange anymore. Captain, it is like this about you asked me about the King Class C. It can be said that the Beast Class C is a watershed. Very, very few ships will enter the Beast Class C from the King Class C. And also very few ships will enter the King Class C from the Beast Class C. There is a natural chasm and a technical chasm in between. Shob carefully explained to Rain. In general, only the forces with great strength can cross this chasm. So they occupy the islands of the various seas to enrich themselves. The complete strength of the Sea King pirates was able to reach the e class, which meant that the main forces that appeared in the Beast Class C were E and F Class forces. The King Class C was mainly C, D, and E Class forces, and even the lowest E Class forces in the King Class C were stronger than the three fleets. They naturally did not bother to enter the Beast Class C. Shob, what exactly are the natural chasm and technological chasm you are talking about? Rain asked. Shob explained exhaustively. There is no natural divide between no man's land to human class C and human class C to beast level C. You just need to bring your ship in and you're in the corresponding C. But there is a clear dividing line between the king class C and the beast class C. To enter the king class C, you need to cross the satanic abyss. This canyon is called the scar of the earth, running through the world. The depth may exceed 20,000 meters. Of course, this is only a general guess. No one has reached the deepest place. The most frightening thing is that the canyon is inhabited by a large number of powerful sea monsters. If bad luck, even the C-class forces also have to sink. Rain's eyes widened. The scars of the earth? This was too much. Even C-class may not be able to cross. No wonder Shob said this is a chasm. Shob did not know much about this satanic abyss. Rain then moved on to the next issue, the so-called technological divide. There are three aspects to the technological divide. Shob took a deep breath of cigar, the whole body comfortable. First, the weapon system. Our ship's artillery system is indeed very strong, but only in the beast class waters. As far as I know, the naval warships that can enter the king class waters, the range is far more than our main guns. Rain couldn't help but frown. The Fury Thunder main gun was his strongest weapon and the one with the longest range, but it unexpectedly wasn't enough to enter the king class waters. Second, the radar system. I guess our ship also has a radar system, but the range is not large enough. In the King Class C, it can achieve the long-range strike of the over-the-horizon. Third, and the most important point, in the King Class C, the fleet has the ability to strike in all directions. 
including sky strike capability, sea strike capability, and undersea strike capability. In fact, without these three aspects, I'm afraid that even the satanic abyss cannot be broken through. So to speak, this is considered a basic condition. Rain took a deep breath. The King Class C was really strong, although Rain had a little surprised about the weapon system, not too anxious. He could keep upgrading after all. Perhaps after the Thunder series, there would be a stronger weapon system appeared, and the remaining two were a bit difficult. 100,000 meters of radar coverage was no longer enough. He couldn't actively upgrade the radar. It seemed that he can only wait for the upgrade of the ship or the system's gift package. The third point was the ability to strike on all fronts. This was more difficult. The sky was naturally the shipboard aircraft. The sea was the fleet. The bottom of the sea needed to be paired with submarines. But right now, he only had one ship. It seemed they were still some distance away from the King Class Sea. But Rain was not in a hurry. With Rain's strategic thinking, what to do if they cannot beat the enemy? It's simple, upgrade until he could beat it. Captain, you are preparing to go to the King Class Sea? Shob's eyes had a vague concern. Rain mulled it over and said, Shob, don't worry about it. That is dangerous. I will never go without being prepared for everything. Rain's heart was secretly planning to make a fortune in the Beast Class C first and get a few more levels. The good thing was that Shob's narrative also contained a piece of information that was very favorable to Rain. If the ships from the King Class C would not come here, they could develop well here after they took the new island. This strengthened his determination to take the new island. Two and a half months later, they arrived at the sea where the new island was located. The shadow of a small island could already be seen in the distance. It didn't go much beyond sea level. But since it was in the process of rising, it meant that there would be big potential. At this time, there were still timber, some clothes, and even some bodies floating around on the sea surface from time to time. It had been three months since the new island surfaced. These wrecks could still be seen now, which showed how tragic the battle was. Radar, detect the bottom of the sea. When Rain saw the situation at the bottom of the sea, he couldn't help but take a breath backward. At least a thousand ships had been sunk here. The bottom of the sea was simply a ruin of sunken ships. In the Azure era, to be able to own an island was wealth, the best symbol of status and strength. No wonder the system had told Rain right before that almost all the islands were occupied by big powers. Rain had already tasted the sweetness of owning a base of Bankra Island, let alone a complete island hundreds or thousands of times bigger. More than a hundred large warships docked near the island. Upon seeing their flags, Rain already knew who had won this game without being introduced by the others. The Black Hell Merchant Bank, True King, Fancy, Tick, One Bear, Two Bear, and all the Sea King clans on board turned their eyes red all at once and they turned their heads to look at that person. Captain, Rain narrowed his eyes slightly. What a narrow road. 162. Raid. All hands on deck prepare for battle. Rain gave a command and everyone entered a state of battle readiness. After the previous hiccup, the cohesiveness and execution of this ship were all greatly improved no matter newcomers or old hands, especially the people of the Sea King clans. They were waiting for Rain's words, each one with fire in their eyes. Since those ships were docked in the harbor, it was not suitable to use torpedoes. But Rain's weapons were more than torpedoes. After entering the 5,000 meter range, the mortars started the first attack. Black Hell completed the final harvest at the battle to capture the island. Many of them were still on shore for the expedition at this time, and only five or six ships were responsible for the vigilance. Several of the opposing ships had flagged, but Rain didn't care and charged at full speed. These ships had no power to fight back under Rain's long-range fire. Three-fifths of the ships had been badly damaged and incapacitated within a short time. The fierce gunfire alarmed the whole island, and a large number of crew members rushed back to their ships in a frenzy. Damn, who the hell is so shameless? How dare they come back and sneak up on us? Military arbitration will punish them. The Azure era lasted for more than 300 years. During the constant conflicts, in order to avoid wars lasting too long and bringing too much disaster to humanity, and also to preserve the strength of both sides, the major powers signed an agreement. After the defeated side surrendered in a certain battle, and the victorious side accepted the other side's surrender, the defeated side was not allowed to rejoin the battle. The people of the Black Hell thought it was the fleet that surrendered before coming back. They could not help but curse. But cursing is cursing, the battle still had to be fought. A man with a big belly rushed to the shore. This man was the fat man Rain and others met in Angel Port. Five big men followed closely behind him. 
black corpses, kill them, a man behind him, all wrapped in black robes, said in a voice so hoarse it was creepy, okay, however, they found the guards' fifty-six ships all sinking when they ran to the shore, the fat man took out his binoculars from his waist to look at the sea, his fat oily face was contorted to the point of distortion seeing that, is that a new fleet, they only have, one ship, the other side did have only one ship, however, it was a ship that was spewing fire like crazy all over, with ferocious cannons and armor-piercing guns cooperating, those ships wrapped in metal shells couldn't take a single hit, the shells falling from the sky carpet were bombing all the ships, what's even more puzzling was that with such fierce artillery fire, the other side's artillery attacks all hit, one ship blocked more than 200 ships in the harbor and a burst of wild bombardment to them, quick, get on the ironclad, the fat man put down the binoculars, a pair of slender little eyes almost spitting fire, let the armor and shield out, bastards, how dare they raid our black hell merchant company, I will tear them alive, to be able to take the lead in such a large scale battle, black hell merchants must have something apart from the strategy, among them, the three warships, the ironclad, armor, and shield were their sharpest swords, the shield and armor used a metal shell thickness of 90 millimeters with amazing defense, the ships were equipped with long-range guns with amazing power and equipped with torpedoes and radar. And the ironclad main ship had an iron thickness of 180 millimeters. This ship was equipped with 300 guns. Main guns, stern guns, torpedoes all together. These three ships were simply the nightmare of other fleets. It was with these three powerful ships that the Black Hell Merchant Bank could guarantee the smooth conduct of all their business in the Beast Class Sea. Even the three major fleets in the Beast Class C did not dare to provoke them. Those rough ships were not able to withstand a single blow under Rain's attack. But just then, Rain's radar warned. Three enemy ships were detected in the northeast direction. It was in one of the island's inner harbors in that direction, where the Black Hell Merchant Bank had hidden all of its trump cards. One armored battleship, two armored cruisers. There was no artificial harbor on the small island, and the inner harbor was naturally formed. When sailing out of the inner harbor, there was an arc of rocks blocking the line of sight on both sides. Warning, the other side has fired high-throw artillery shells. Oh? So arrogant? Rain saw the sky in that direction, and indeed there were shells flying toward him. It was a bit too late for Rain to turn now. Select the shells that might hit the ship and have the anti-aircraft guns intercept the attack. The huge circular metal shield at the stern of the ship opened. The trio of anti-aircraft guns had a large elevation angle and longer barrels than the main guns. The metal cover was only half open and the anti-aircraft guns had already opened fire. Boom 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 boom. Not long after, a quick explosion rang out in the sky, and the opposing mortars had blown to bits. As a rule, Rain could have used the mortar at this time to bypass the blocking rocks and hit the other side. But instead of firing directly, Rain sailed in that direction and adjusted the main gun. The muzzle of the armor-piercing gun aimed in the direction of the exit of the inner harbor. 90mm steel armor must use these two guns to cause damage. The fatty looked at the explosion in the sky and was filled with shock. They intercepted our mortars. How can it be so accurate? At this very moment, the armor, which rushed at the front, had just sailed out of the inner harbor, revealing half of its body from the projecting rocky area. The captain of that ship happened to see the other ship and those black and thick gun barrels. At this moment, he looked back blankly at the fat man on the ironclad, Punk Eye. We're doomed. Punk's face was full of dismay. They had not yet begun to fight head on, and he was talking nonsense about what? Just seeing the main cannon on Rain's ship, the captain of the armor already knew that he would not survive. What kind of main cannon is that? It is like a steel fortress. This kind of weapon should not appear in the Beast Class C at all. Just then, not far away issued a series of terrifying gunfire, followed by the armor the ironclad ship instantly blown to pieces. Punk was in horror. Although the armor was not as huge as the ironclad, its armor was exactly the same as theirs. As a result, it was destroyed just like that. Slow down, stop the ship, Punk immediately ordered. They could only rely on this one geographical barrier now, and did not dare to show their heads rashly. They were afraid to show their heads, but rain was coming. Rounding the rocky area that blocked both sides, it appeared in front of the ironclad and the shield. As soon as they met, Rain's triple main guns had already predicted their position and opened fire instantly, hitting the bow and side of the shield. This was not the end, the other side dropped torpedoes at some point. The bottom of the shield was hit by at least four torpedoes. 
The shield was also tenacious and did not sink until now, but the bow gun and half of the fire bay were all scrapped. The hull was severely damaged, and the ship had lost its fighting ability. Punk looked at the ship in front of him in horror. Only about 100 meters. The number of guns was not much. It was not a class compared with their own 127 meter warship. But the other side's weapon system was so powerful that it was chilling. No, this island must be defended. The ironclad continued to barrel forward, finally entering its range and able to fire. The ironclad's 40 torpedoes were quietly released. But not long after they were fired, they exploded in the sea before both sides. Intercepted again? Is this fucking endless? Missiles can be intercepted is fine, but why torpedoes can be intercepted too? Gunner, fire altogether, Punk roared. On Rain's side, after using the main cannon and armor-piercing cannon to focus on taking out the two fast cruisers first, it was finally time to face their main ship, the Ironclad. A real hand-to-hand -hand combat starts. Rain stared at the other side. 163, Black Corpse. The range of the opponent's guns was only slightly inferior to Rain's. Its defense was far stronger than that of the other ships. Even a small number of armor-piercing guns could not sink them. The two sides crossed paths, and a large number of guns spewed tongues of fire between them. Shells slammed into the hulls of both sides one by one. Inside the firepower cabin, everyone could feel the violent vibration, but the good thing was that Rain's hull was not pierced. Terry shaking on the gun deck shouted. Everyone filled up the shell at first. Make sure to keep the fire output. Aye. At the moment, Rain was in a bad situation judging from the surface. The wooden ship deck was almost blown to pieces. Ha 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 ha, fighting with me? What can you do even if you have so fierce firepower? It's still a wooden ship. I'm a real iron ship. Blast them into slag. Punk hissed excitedly. However, Rain did not panic at all. His hulk construction was just the opposite of the ironclad. The ironclad was covered with a metal shell and the hull was mainly constructed of wood. But his ship was covered with wooden plates, and the hull itself was all metal. So at the beginning of the fight, the ones which were blown away were wood panels. It looked very bad, but in fact, the other side had not hurt its hull's internal structure. Punk, on the other hand, was a different story. Rain's armor-piercing shells were not round but bullet-shaped, and the armor-piercing performance was far from what the cannon can compare with. The most crucial thing was that he also had a main gun that can rotate 360 degrees. The power of the triple main gun was also fierce. This ship's armor is high. Rain found that an armor-piercing cannon could not directly penetrate the opponent's armor, but only hit the armor to heavy deformation. Good, in that case, give you a few more. After adjustment, Rain switched to bombarding the same spot with two armor-piercing cannons and more than one gun together to bombard the opponent's hull. With precise and unerring strikes, the opponent's steel veneer was finally torn open. Now that he had torn open the breach, Rain naturally would not let go of this opportunity. Full fire. Boom 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 boom. Fifteen armor-piercing cannons on the side of the ship opened fire at the same time. The side of the ironclad instantly exploded, and the whole ship was almost torn in half. Punk was still proud of himself a second before, but suddenly, his ship broke off in the middle. Being torn the iron skin, the wooden structure inside the ironclad had been exposed. It was vulnerable under Rain's fierce gunfire. Damn, why haven't they been pierced yet? Captain, their boats are metal. What? Punk's eyes opened in anger. They made a wooden hull on the surface of the ship. The other side not only had powerful firepower but also defensive power not can compare. At this point, Punk already knew that it was impossible to defeat this ship on the sea. He hurriedly looked to the surface to see where in the end the black corpse and others were. Rain was bombarding the ironclad, which was gradually losing its combat power. Suddenly, the opposite side actually stopped firing. And then, two dozen people climbed up from the bottom of the ship. Black Corpse and the others finally managed to board the ship. Not only that, a large number of enemies boarded the ship one after another. There were two or three hundred people, and a large number of crew members were still swimming to this side. Rain gave the ironclad five torpedoes. After ensuring that the other side was bound to sink, Rain gave the order to the crew. Mutant of stage three and above ready to battle on deck. Others stand by, and Tick takes command of the ship. They had already won the battle of the fleet, and the following was left to be fought between the crews. Rain transferred his consciousness to the son of Poseidon and walked out of the captain's cabin together with Avril, Arson, One Bear, Two Bear, True King, True Queen, Windbell, Shog, Shane, Bolton, and a large number of crew members of stage three and above, 
walked up to the open deck one after another through the secret door. The other side probably did not expect that the number of people on their side was not less than theirs at all. On the deck, the two armies faced each other. Shob saw the man at the head of the other side and frowned slightly. Black corpse. Captain, be careful of that guy. Although he has no fame, he is a stage 5 mutant. I'm afraid his strength is not lower than Rex's. He is the number one strongest person in the Black Hell arranged in the Beast Class C. True Queen stared at these people and said fiercely, They killed many of our clan members. Rain patted True Queen's hand pressed on the hilt of her sword. True Queen, steady your emotions to win. True Queen looked at Rain and nodded heavily, her clenched fists trying to relax. Black corpse wrapped in a black robe and wearing a hood so that only one pair of eyes could be seen. He looked at True Queen and said in a deep voice, So it's a leaky fish from the Sea King Island. Black Corpse's tone had been calm as if he didn't care too much about the fleet's fiasco. Speaking of which, we made a lot of money after capturing your Sea King Island. Oh yes, and those slaves. They do sell better than slaves elsewhere. Except for some good-looking ones we left behind to reward our own crew, they've all been sold pretty much. Speaking of the women of the Sea King clan, TSK TSK, I don't know how many I've enjoyed. It's a bit nostalgic. Hey women, if there are still your people, call them up together just to make up for our losses. Rain felt that the people of the Sea King clan had been enraged by this guy to the point of intolerability. This was no longer a matter of humiliation. What they had done to the Sea King clans was a deep hatred that forever. Momentum is certainly important in a master fight. But if you lose your mind because of anger, you will instead be taken advantage of. Obviously, that guy was angering the Sea King clans to increase their chances of winning. Rain snorted coldly and drew his two daggers from his waist. For those who spoiled women, I always think there is a way to dissolve the resentment. Everyone looked at Rain strangely. His words aroused everyone's interest. Is there a way to dissolve such things? Afraid it's a shadow forever. Ha 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 kid. I have fucked all of them. Do you think there is a way for those women to forget? Oh, by the way, you are still a milky little bastard don't know that kind of feeling yet. It doesn't matter. Our people also like the type of you. A lecherous man laughed lewdly next to the black corpse. Rain turned his dagger upside down and laughed. Okay man, how about this? Let's do a demonstration. Black corpse slightly narrowed his eyes. Although some of it did not make sense, it seemed that others listened to this child. Even if this child was not the captain, he was an extremely important person on this ship. Does he want to fight alone? And also with his own men Lion King singles. There is actually such a good thing? Black corpse nodded to the Lion King who gulped and walked out with a fierce smile on his face. Kid nice skin, I like your kind. Rain skimmed his lips and also took a few steps forward. Like is not just words, but actual actions are required. Oh good, then I'm not polite. Saying that Lion King did not even transform, and directly pounced on Rain. At that very moment, Rain's body suddenly surged in speed and rushed towards the Lion King. At the moment when the other party was about to pounce, his body shorted a little, and quickly dodged the Lion King. At the same time, Rain backhanded a knife through the crotch of the Lion King. Rain got behind the Lion King and blood was dripping from his dagger. Man, it seems like you can only be fucked from now on. Rain laughed faintly. 164. White's Mutation. Lion King saw that Rain had not transformed plus Rain was just a kid, so he didn't transform himself. But who knew that this would bring him unimaginable consequences? Rain directly castrated Lion King. All the males present felt a chill in their crotch when they saw the bloody mess on the ground. You, you, you. The Lion King was so frightened that his face fell apart. He just felt his whole world collapse. Rain turned around with a smile on his face. This punishment should more or less console those women you defiled. Oh, by the way, you don't have to worry. Today, all those who didn't get my permission to come on board will be treated fairly. Absolutely no one will be treated badly. Once these words came out, more than 200 people on the Black Hell side, a few dozen of them subconsciously took a step back. This guy's methods were too terrible, simply more terrible than the pirates. Simply a demon. Rain walked past Lion King, returned to his own people, let one bear move a chair, and leisurely sat down. True King, that Black Corpse to you, get it right? True King was stage 4 level 5. If Black Corpse was on par with Rex, it might be stage 5 level 3. The difference in strength was not a little bit, and a half. However, Rain had full assurance. Not only because they had Avril, but True King had another helper. When True King walked out of the line, the crowd behind him made a way, and a fierce tiger from behind slowly walked out. 
This beast was enough to make even Rain feel thorny. It was said that his entrance was ranked behind Rex. Tiger King rubbed True King with its big head. It could feel True King's anger, followed by a pair of tiger eyes staring dead at the opposite person. Even Black Corpse was a bit wuss out seeing this guy. What kind of a ship is this? Why would this mutant beast be willing to follow them? It's not unprecedented for mutants to train beasts. But that's only the privilege of high-ranking mutants. This Tiger King was obviously stronger than True King and actually willing to follow him. Seeing that the Tiger King alone was enough to intimidate the whole field, Rain shook his head helplessly and patted White who was leaning lazily at his feet. This guy had already completed his evolution. Only it was in the same situation as Fancy when he checked White's data. His level was not enough to view White's data. Rain knew that White was definitely strong. After all, Tiger King did not dare to steal its territory. But Rain did not know how strong it was. At this moment, True King had already done it. With a bellow, he first rushed to Black Corpse, followed by Tiger King, True Queen, Shobe, and others all swarmed and pounced on the opposite side. Rain now had 31 Stage 4 Mutants and 224 Stage 3 Mutants. Plus a mutant Tiger King, the overall strength was not weak as the other side. Both sides instantly broke out into fierce battle. The land mutant fought on the deck, while the sea mutant jumped into the sea one after another, opening up another battlefield at the bottom of the sea. At this moment, Rain suddenly heard Black Corpse shout, Second Stage Transformation, Poisonous Corpse King. Under the attack of True King and Tiger King, Black Corpse finally could not hold on to himself and launched his transformation skill. It was a direct second stage transformation. The black cloak on his body fell off, and Rain finally saw the guy's real face. It turned out that he was covered with bandages. After the transformation, these bandages were all disintegrated, revealing a decayed body with green pus and blood flowing on it. Obviously, it contained poison. Rain was stunned. This world not only mutated animals and plants, but even corpses could mutate. Rain thought about it and quickly figured it out. There should be such a possibility. Even something like a dragon had appeared, and Shobe's fogging was also a special mutation. Then corpses might not be unable to undergo mutation. Black corpse was indeed strong. After the transformation, not to mention speed and strength surged, this body of pus and blood made it very difficult to approach. Avril stood beside Rain and frowned, Captain, I can't influence Black corpse. True King frowned slightly. The situation of Black Corpse was somewhat special. Avril could not reduce his attributes. Afraid it was more difficult to deal with. Although Tiger King was strong, it was restrained facing Black Corpse. Tiger King could not use weapons, and direct physical combat would come into contact with his body's corpse poison. The powerful strength of Tiger King could not be fully exercised. Avril, you helped True King first. Okay. Armin, who was in charge of observing the surroundings, came over and whispered in Rain's ear, Captain, many mutants around are swimming this way. Rain went to the side of the ship and found many black dots on the sea moving towards them. A black rock was revealed from the surface of the sea. Rain could naturally see that this was black and said to it, Those mutants in the sea are yours. Don't let them board the ship. Don't hurt our own people. After receiving the order, Blacka dived head into the water. Many people did not know that a black shadow about 10 meters long was quietly lurking towards them in the seawater. With Blacka's strength, it was more than enough to deal with those mutants. Rain returned to his seat and monitored the battle. In other places of the battle, Rain's side was gradually gaining the advantage except for the Black Corpse's side. That guy was too difficult to deal with. True King and Tiger King had not been too good means. The liquid on the guy's body contained poison. Flung a drop fell on the Tiger King's hair, and the Tiger King would have a piece of corrosive traces, which made Tiger King had been difficult to play with strength. Rain brow locked. This guy was really a bit tricky. His men could not crack him. Black Corpse not only had horrific properties, covered with corpse poison, but its recovery ability was very strong. True King did several sneak attacks on his body, but he was like nothing. The wound also healed at a speed visible to the naked eye. Black Corpse was surrounded by True King and Tiger King, but still at ease. He seemed to see Rain at a loss. Ha 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 ha, with just you guys want to deal with Black Hell? I'm telling you guys, I'm not even ranked in the top 100 in Black Hell. So you can imagine how miserable your future death will be. Brothers, with me here. Don't be afraid. Kill them. Black Corpse was the spiritual leader of the gang. Even if they were at a disadvantage now, there was still hope as long as the boss didn't die. Under his motivation, the fighting spirit of the other mutant was rekindled. 
Avril's time to increase the blessing was only 10 seconds. Once this time had passed, True King would be in danger. And now the time was nearing the end. Thinking of this, Rain stood up. He must replace True King. But at that moment, White also stood up. It bit Rain's trousers and barked at him a few times. Woof woof woof. Eh? You want to go? Rain immediately understood. But that guy's ability is hard to deal with. White wagged his tail happily. Rain thought about it. White shouldn't be that stupid. Okay, you go. As soon as the words left his mouth, White had turned into a white shadow and pounced on Black Corpse with an incredible speed. Black Corpse was still impassioned to motivate his own people. He suddenly saw a white shadow rushing over, which was so fast that he couldn't dodge it in time. Hmph, the big deal is to be bitten a bite. With my regeneration ability, I can definitely block and then poison you to death. Black Corpse simply did not dodge anymore. A white shadow flashed. When White landed, the surrounding people even forgot to fight. Black Corpse's head was being held in the mouth of a strange creature. Rain's eyes rounded seeing this guy. 165. Start building the base. The transformed White was all red. Only the head was white. Black Corpse which made Rain difficult was killed by White in one blow. Holy shit, so powerful? Rain couldn't believe that this guy with a combat power of one before was so fierce after mutation. After Black Corpse was killed, the Black Hell merchants had no leader, and their army was in disarray. Plus True King and Tiger King's strong support, the battle was instantly reversed. True King and Tiger King really held a fire. They had good skills but met Black Corpse who was difficult to approach. Now that Black Corpse was dead, they quickly killed into the enemy line. Now the only hope for all the Black Hell fighters was their reinforcements. This was their territory. Their ships were destroyed, but there were still so many seamen. As long as they held out until reinforcements arrive, they still had a chance. However, the battle was nearing its end. A few crew members of the dad climbed onto the deck. It looked like they were already won the battle in the sea. Damn, why hasn't anyone come to support? Where are our men? Are they all dead? A black hell fighter was knocked to the ship's fence. He took the opportunity to turn back in anger, only to turn pale when he looked. On the surface of the sea, a huge black creature not really visible in its full form loomed dragging several men into the sea with each rise and fall. As for their reinforcements, they had either been turned into corpses or eaten, or they had swum away into the distance. They no longer dared to go near this ship. Shit! Damn it, you guys just ran away like that? You bunch of trash, bastards! The man roared in despair. Yet as soon as the words left his mouth, his head had been chopped off by True Queen with a single slash. All the enemies here had been wiped out in less than twenty minutes. This battle could be said to be the most tragic battle Rain had ever experienced. At least 70 to 80 people on board were injured. It was good that no one died in the battle with the support of those stage 4 mutants. Avril immediately began to get busy, helping some of the seriously injured crew members to deal with their injuries, while others began to busy cleaning up the battlefield. Captain, there is no one on the ironclad. Punk seems to have escaped. True word and the others returned from the wreckage of the ironclad and reported the news of Punk. Rain shook his head, the battle on the deck was too fierce. Many people from the Black Hell took advantage of the chaos to escape, he could not prevent Punk from escaping. Forget it. Now occupying the island is the most important thing. These ships were docked in the harbor and were easy to salvage after sinking, so Rain simply did not salvage the ships for now and quickly let the crew aboard the island. This new island was not big. It was the submarine volcanic eruption that accelerated the crust extrusion formed. The area of about 20 square kilometers. The elevation was not too high. After exploring the local geology and analyzing the changes in ocean currents, Armin concluded that the island was still in the rising stage and was a new island with a very strong life force. Captain, judging from the topography of the shallows, the exposed part of the island is only 1% of the intact plot. The process of the Pacific plate sinking and squeezing the Asian and European plates upward is still continuing. This island will keep going to rise in the future. Rain was confused, but that's not the point. The point was that the island would get bigger and bigger. After learning this exciting news, everyone's energy was very high. No other fleet came to Rain's trouble in the past few days, but everyone dared not have the slightest slack, and seized the time to build some simple fortifications. They began to collect metal materials, build gun emplacements at key locations, and use Rain's Thunder Series guns to build a fortification covering the perimeter of the island. The large number of shipwrecks in the surrounding waters provided them with abundant construction materials. Materials right at their doorstep. 
A month and a half later, the fortifications of this island had gradually taken shape. Only the population here was still too small. I am going to move all the residents of Bankra Island here, but I can't leave here yet. In the evening, a group of people sat around the high slope and Rain stated his plan. True King said, Captain, that is easy. There are escort fleets that specialize in escort missions in beast class waters. We used to work on escort fleets and know quite a few friends from escort fleets. The danger from human class waters to beast class waters is not very great. We can leave it to them. Shob also said, True King, where are those friends of yours? We can ask Little Booty to notify them to come. True King thought about it and said, Clark Island happens to have a few. The strongest is the King Kong Guard and the Downwind Guard. The King Kong Guard is more expensive. It needs about 5,000 pearls. The downwind is a little cheaper. It needs 3,000. 5,000 black pearls were equivalent to 500,000. Escorting a trip would require hundreds of thousands of pearls, which was indeed expensive. But this amount of money in front of the development of an island base could only be considered small. The most important thing was to ensure security. King Kong Guard, okay. 5,000 is fine, Rain said. When they arrive, Terry, true king, showed you three take a few people to run and bring them all over safely. Bring what you can along with you, such as chickens, ducks, cattle, sheep, crop seeds, and whatnot. Let Hallowell help us get rid of the land we have there. The three men nodded their heads. Three days later, the fleet of the King Kong Guard arrived near the island. This fleet had 30 ships, three F-class warships and the rest were G-class warships. This should not be all of their ships, but it was enough to pick up people from Human Class C. In order to show their sincerity, the people of the King Kong Guard arrived on Rain's ship in a small wooden boat. The ten or so men who came on board saw True King and went up for a familiar high-five hug. The bearded man in the lead hugged True King forcefully and patted True King on the back. My old friend, it's been a long time. Charge King, True King greeted him with a smile. Shob, Charge King saw another acquaintance. Shob smiled and went over to shake hands with him. Charge King, it's been hard for you guys. Don't mention it. I had heard that you guys had gone to Clark Island and thought True King would surely visit me. But who knew that you guys would leave so soon? I know about the Sea King clan. My brother's business is my business. Don't talk to me about payment for this escort. It's free, Charge King said graciously. Rain had been watching this guy. It seemed that he had a good relationship with True King, Shob, and others. These guys were very generous. True King also did not refuse, and introduced the Charge King. Charge King, first, take it easy, to introduce you to our captain. Haha, <laughs> I was wondering who could make someone like True King follow willingly. Now it's even stranger. You guys actually managed to take down Black Hell Merchant's steel fleet. It's amazing. Quickly introduce me to your captain. Rain stepped out and smiled slightly. Hello, I am the captain of this ship. You. Charge King's face was filled with confusion until he saw both True King and Shob nodding at him. Well... Rain smiled slightly and went straight to the point. We'll pay the money as usual and I only have one request, keep my people safe. 166. Merge. This is absolutely no problem. It's easy to go to the human class C to pick up people. Not I boast. When King Kong Guard walks into class C, even the three fleets also have to give a little respect. Charge King quite proudly said, as for money, well I give you a discount. True King and the others are my brothers. I do not earn money from my own people. This time I will personally follow the ship. Absolutely it will not go wrong. Rain had a good feeling about this guy. Rain had enough money. The key was this guy was quite refreshed. After finalizing the escort mission, Terry, True King, and Shobe went to the human class C with their ship. It would take more than six months for the King Kong guard to make a round trip. At this time, Rain's side of the crew could not be idle. Now the island construction had taken shape. Rain divided the island into several areas. He cleared the land suitable for building in the major areas. Each area was connected to the main road. In the residential area, the people had built a piece of housing. It could provide housing for future residents. In addition, Armin and Shane designed the drawings of the high wall of the island, but there was a lack of stone. One day, seven months later, a fleet of ships finally appeared on the sea. The King Kong Guard managed to pick up all the Sea King clansmen. Nearly a thousand Sea King clansmen arrived at the new island, and each one of them was exceptionally excited. They had lived well on Bankera Island, but it was on someone else's island. Now they finally had their own island. This was their home in the true sense of the Azure era. A large number of laborers joined the construction team, 
and the island was a busy scene. That night, Rain hosted Charge King and his crew for a bonfire on the beach. Charge King saw the changes to the new island with his own eyes and was overwhelmed with emotion. I can't believe you guys have your own island. It's amazing. We have been drifting on the sea for so many years. Although there are our offices on many islands, hey, it's so hard to have a real home in this world. To be honest, I really envy you guys. Only those who are wandering know how precious home is. Unfortunately, it was a luxury for those of them who made a living by escorting. Charge King, this is not like your character, True King said with a smile. Charge King shook his head helplessly. True King, I'm not like you. I'm already old. I can't charge in anymore. You know my people are basically all over 35 years old. The possibility of us getting stronger further is already getting smaller and smaller. And, as you know, the most critical is ship to go to the King Class C. We can make the ship bigger with more guns. But it is just a little bigger cannon fodder as usual in the King Class C. Satanic Abyss is the dividing line of technology. The others had no objection to what Charge King said. Even the three major fleets of the Beast Class Cs couldn't enter the King Class Cs. The only meaning of our business is just to live a little better. A middle-aged man under Charge King also said, That's why we envy you guys. You still have unlimited potential. By the way, bro Rain, will you guys go to the King Class C? The man asked with full interest. Rain laughed, yes, but not now. For one thing, the base is still unstable. For another, I like to go when I'm sure. King Class C. Charge King's eyes flashed a trace of longing. He was called Charge King once upon a time. His biggest goal was to enter the King Class C, or even higher. But he stopped at the Beast Class C. After the party that night, Rain let the King Kong guard dock at the port to rest. After that, Rain and the others gathered in the captain's room. True King, what do you think of Charge King and his people? Are they trustworthy? Rain suddenly asked. True King thought about it and said, Charge King originally worked in the Navy. Then he formed his own King Kong guard after he was fired from the Navy. Unfortunately, he did not break through stage 5 before he turned 40, so he could only stay in the Beast Class C. Almost all of his people are stagnant in the process of mutation. Although they don't have the potential to continue to become stronger, the strength is still very well. I worked with them for 4 years before. From what I know of him, he's a decent guy. Shobe nodded. From what I understand, he was fired in the first place for refusing to sink a ship full of civilians. Rain was surprised. The Navy wanted to sink civilian ships? Yes. Large-scale battles often break out in the King-class waters. The major powers are fiercely contending for them. The Navy lost a lot of money in one battle and was so badly wounded that the top brass secretly ordered that hijack the residents to build ships. At that time, these civilians evacuated from Bangsar Island did not want to be captured by the Navy so the Navy ordered them to open fire. Charge King refused to carry out this mission, and was eventually removed and dismissed. Rain was still the first time to hear this kind of inside story and was quite shocked. The Navy still do this kind of thing? This is not the most excessive. The Navy always gives the impression of maintaining peace below the Beast Class C. I joined the Navy at that time because of this reason. Later I learned that it was because the merchant houses and islands would pay huge protection fees. When someone touches the core interests of the Navy, they will do whatever they can. Shobe's eyes were full of disappointment in the Navy. He was cheated in the first place by the appearance of the Navy and joined it. Of course, not all Navy brass are like that. Admiral Sigel is always a person who carries out the justice of the Navy. But so that, in the face of the irresistible trend, even an admiral is too small. Rain nodded thoughtfully. Captain, do you want to keep charge king? Rain nodded. Our base defense force is still too weak, and the population is too small. If we leave, I'm a little uneasy about it. If we can merge the King Kong Guard, then we will not have to worry too much about this place even if we go to the King Class C in the future. True King immediately said, this method is definitely possible. It's just don't know if Charge King is willing to do it. It's simple. Tomorrow let's go to ask. The next day, Rain personally led his crew and came to Charge King's main ship. Rain was not ambiguous and said directly, Charge King, are you willing to merge into my bounty group? Once this statement was made, the people on Charge King's side were a bit baffled. Um, Brother Rain this, Charge King said with some difficulty, Brother, I say a word you may not like to hear, but since we are friends, I do not want to beat around the bush. You only have one ship and let us merge to your bounty group, isn't a bit too much. The man beside Charge King said with some displeasure, Captain Rain, what our captain said was already very euphemistic. If not for the fact that Turking was also on your ship, 
I would have had scolded. You want to merge us? That is too self-importance. I'm not bragging. If it is not true King and Shob, we will knock it down in one minute. The next few people were also very dissatisfied. We heard about your tactics to capture the island. That is indeed brilliant. But can you really win in a head-to-head -head battle? I think it's because Black Hell's people are too stupid in command. I don't believe it that so many ships can handle one of you. I'll send two death squads to sink you easily. Kid, we treat you as friends, but your appetite is too big. Charge King glared at a man. Old Bai, what are you talking about? Brother Rain, sorry. He is this temper. We will not attack our own people. Everyone cut the crap. Rain smiled generously and slightly. It's okay. I understand how you guys feel. I know that your King Kong guard is very powerful in the Beast Class C. I remember you said that even the three fleets have to give you a little respect. Yeah. Old Bai lifted his chin and said proudly, We have at least 200 ships with crew members of more than 3,000 people. Do you think you can take them? Rain skimmed his lips and shrugged his shoulders. That's indeed strong. We're not as strong as you guys. We are just one ship. And the three fleets won't give us respect, so... Rain looked up at Old Bai, and the last words just never came out. At this point, one bear walked out carrying a man, then threw the man to the ground and wiped his nose. So, we had to take them out. The Rex on the ground was angry. Rain this guy not only destroyed his fleet but actually used himself as a bargaining chip. 167. Evolve. Charge King instinctively took a few steps back once he saw this person. The others were even more surprised and dumbfounded that unable to say a word for a while. The tied up was Rex the Beast King. The three fleets would give King Kong guard a little respect and the dad directly finished one of them. That was simply a world of difference. Brother Rain, you took out the Sea King pirates? Charge King, who had been bold and extremely refreshed, became stammering. His eyes filled with horror. Rain laughed blandly, yes? So there may not be three major fleets in the Beast Class C in the future. Dozens of core crew members of the King Kong Guard drew a breath of cold air altogether. So blandly pretentious. It was too much. The dad taking out Black Hell might have been a fluke. But if they also took out the Sea King pirates, who would dare to say it was a lucky break? Rain continued Brother Charge King, True King and Show both admire your character. They have spoken of your deeds and I admire that. You are a straightforward man and so am I. I will not open this island to the public, so I need someone to guard it. If you are willing to merge into the dad then this island will become your home. Charge King, don't you also want your people to have a stable home? Moreover, I can give you ten places to break into the King Class C with me. Charge King's eyes gradually opened wider and wider. He thought about it. All of the conditions Rain gave were what he had wanted. With their strength, capturing an island alone was impossible. If they joined the dad, it would be like they had their own island. And the opportunity to enter the King Class C, that was his dream when he was young. The only loss they had was that he was no longer the captain. Charge King, trust me. True King walked up to him. If you're not sure about our captain, you can look at the island. Almost all of these people are slaves rescued by our Sea King clansmen and Clark's gladiators. That's enough to show what kind of a man our captain is. Avril frowned slightly and hastily added, yes. Our captain has no flaws except for a bit of greed for money. Yes, that is. It's just that he occasionally threatens the crew to practice with him. You can't really find any other problems. Fancy also said. Well, he also just occasionally wins all the money we have on us. But that's not a problem at all. Two Bear added. Black lines covered Rain's forehead. Were they complimenting him? The good thing was that Charge King instead heard another layer of meaning from these words. These crew members like their captain from the bottom of their hearts. Shobe walked up to Charge King and patted him on the shoulder. Charge, you won't meet a second captain like that. Charge King took a deep breath and looked at the battleship that was docked not far away. And he looked back at his men. These people had been with him for many years. They had no further possibility. Maybe it was time to give everyone a stable home, too. Charge King nodded to Shobe and walked up to Rain. Brother Rain, if we join you, will you treat my brothers like family? Yes, I will. Will you treat their families well? Yes. Will you make sure they are well fed and clothed? Yes. Will you let them do things against their conscience? No. Four questions in a row. Rain answered without hesitation. Charge King nodded slightly, then good. I want to make a bet with you. Rain calmly looked at Charge King. I heard that you are also undersea creature mutation. You and I will have a fair one-on-one -on -one fight. If you win, we merge into your bounty group. If I win, you merge into our King Kong guard. As soon as Rain heard this condition, he already knew that this matter was already done. 
After the transformation, Rain's attributes would increase by 200% and speed increase by 100% even without Avril's help. It could be said that Rain had not fought on his home turf all along. This time he could use his full strength. On the same day, dozens of seagulls flew out from the King Kong warship. Charge King was gasping for breath. He gathered all his ships. The battle just now he lost convincingly. Rain defeated himself easily. That was a complete crushing. If it was not Rain who gave him a little respect, it was probably over in two or three minutes. Three months later, a large number of boats gathered from all directions. These boats full of stone were all from the King Kong Guard. Old Bai didn't brag either. King Kong Guard indeed had 3,000 crew members. Although these people were very puzzled by Charge King's decision, they chose to respect the old captain's wishes. After taking a collective oath, they changed the flag to that of the dad and officially became the fleet of it. With the crew and the stones, Armin and the others immediately set about building the enclosure. Rain stood on the deck and looked at the more than 200 ships docked around the island. With these ships to help defend the island, he could finally do his own thing too. Charge King and the others provided 10 people. Rain also left 20 stage 4 mutants and left a few screw caps on the island. Then he went to sea. The first station was to go to the nearest island, handed Rex over to the navy, and got the bounty. When the navy saw Rex, the sergeant who was in charge of registration was so frightened that he hurriedly called the lieutenant on the island over. After some confirmation, it was finally determined that this guy was Rex the leader of the Sea King pirates. Gee, Captain Rain, it is incredible. Because the amount of the bounty is too large, I have to ask for instructions from my superiors. Rain did not care. Just a matter of waiting a few more days. After a process, the island governor and lieutenant made a joint statement. The Sea King pirates were wiped out. The leader Rex was captured. They would award Rain a first class medal of honor of German island. After receiving 240,000 black pearls, Avril was calculating their current assets in the captain's room. Captain, we fished out 160,000 black pearls near the island earlier. The bounty is 240,000. We robbed 70,000 from the Sea King pirates. Plus the previous savings, we now have a total of 494,000 pearls. It's equivalent to 49.4 million white pearls. The expenses during this period of time are also relatively large. The purchase of stone, crops, and livestock spent a total of 43,000. Charge King had 110,000 pearls. He distributed 10,000 pearls to his crew, and the rest was all given to me. Rain wondered, Charge King gave us their money? Yes, he said that since he joined us. The money should also let you unify the management. But he hopes you can give him 20 more places. It seems that quite a few of them over there want to go to the King Class C. Charge King is really a man. 20 places are no problem. Get the money refunded to them. In addition, let them stop escorting for the time being. They will take charge of the security of the island first after the wall is built. Okay. By the way, Captain, has the governor's man been chosen yet? Rain nodded Terry I think. He told me something. Terry was older after all. He knew that it was not very likely for him to become stronger. So he might as well stay on the island and help Rain manage the island. He previously participated in the construction of the temporary base and he was experienced. Rain also felt comfortable leaving it to him. Now Rain had 451,000 black pearls. He had a first class medal of honor here and could enjoy a 15% discount. Hiss then wouldn't I be able to evolve now? Rain rubbed his chin. The discount on Bankra Island was indeed great. But it might be difficult to gather all the materials. Plus they would have to spend time on the road. So they might as well just evolve here. Thinking of this, Rain decided to buy the materials on German Island. Three months later, Rain finally gathered all the materials. He had all the materials shipped to their island. He wanted to complete the largest scale of evolution ever on the base island. Late at night, Charge King and the 30 new crew members as well as the old crew members on board watched the huge amount of materials on the surface. Rain stood on the foredeck, took a deep breath, and said in a deep voice, Evolve. 168. Backwards combat power. Charge King and the others saw for the first time a ship that would assemble itself. And they were all dumbfounded with shock. The veteran crew members had taken it easy. What they were more concerned about was the construction process of the ship. The ship was about 120 meters long. The gun decks were all cancelled. Due to the cancellation of the gun decks, the height of the ship appeared lower. The bow gun and stern gun also disappeared. Rain's heart was dripping blood when he saw these changes. My cannons. My howitzers. My armor-piercing guns. 
They've all been cancelled? What the hell is this? Although the firepower cabin was cancelled, there were a few more launcher batteries on the open deck. The forecastle was moved to the center of the ship. The chimney was divided into two and built behind the building. The hull still retained the all-metal construction but without the wooden camouflage. The whole ship was 122 meters in length, 13 meters in width, and 5 meters in draft. The lines of the whole ship were simple, smooth, and highly metallic. This is, a group of people inexplicably shifted to the new boat before Charge King had finished his words. After many evolutions, Rain still couldn't keep calm. Especially the hull change was too big in this evolution. He impatiently opened the system. Don't cheat me. Can these five guns be compared to so many of my previous cannons? Quickly, open the basic information template. The system quickly displayed the information on the panel. Host Rain. Vessel. Optimized Fletcher Class Destroyer. Ship Compartment. 200 Crew Compartment. 2. Large Storage Compartment. Power Room. 3. Air-to-Air -air Radar Control Station. 1. C2C Radar Control Room. 1. Backup Radar Control Room. 1. Small Control Room. 5. Power Compartment. 8. Radar Control Room. Rain was stunned when he saw these words. He had been worried that he didn't have enough radar range. The radar detection range of his system did not expand too much with each upgrade. But he did not expect that the ship was equipped with its own radar control room. This perfectly solved the shortcoming of insufficient radar coverage area. Crew size, 59. All positions have been assigned. Open to view details. Ship speed, 35 knots maximum. Open for details. Combat power, 43,000 can be viewed in the crew information and weapon system. Evolution, 5 million black pearls open for details. The new ship's stats had become very simple. The fire cabin no longer exists, and the loading capacity had been eliminated. Perhaps because the ship was completely developed in the direction of a battleship, the system had eliminated these less important data displays. The two data rain was most concerned about was ship speed and combat power. It had a substantial increase in ship speed this time soaring directly to 35 knots, which made Rain quite satisfied. And that's on top of the ship's own weight being raised so much. It looked like the power system must have changed dramatically. However, the combat power was actually only 43,000. Rain got a face of question marks. What? Combat power reduced? Why don't you just degrade me to Napoleon? I want to go back to the human class C. With this kind of combat power, he couldn't even get along in the beast class C. Rain almost collapsed. Look at the weapon system first. Lightning series artillery. Flat firing type triple MK12 type 38X caliber high and flat dual purpose artillery. Quantity, 3. Maximum elevation angle, 35 degrees. Range, 70,000 meters. The maximum rate of fire is 24 rounds slash minute. The initial speed of the shell is 800 M slash section. Single shell attack power, 800. Total attack power, 7200. Lightning Series Artillery, Anti-Aircraft Type Triplex MK-12 38X High and Flat Dual Purpose Artillery, Quantity, 2, Maximum Elevation Angle, 85 Degrees, Range, 5000 Meters Against Air, Total Attack Power, 4800, Lightning Series Shipboard Heavy Machine Gun, Manual Control 40 mm Caliber, Quantity 1, Range 2800 M, Rate of Fire, 200 Rounds Slash Min, Single shot attack power 180. Total attack power 180. Lightning series shipboard light machine gun. Manually controlled 20 mm caliber. Quantity 1. Range 2200 M. Rate of fire. 500 rounds slash min. Single shot attack power 80. Total attack power 80. Assassin spiral instrument controllable torpedo. Attack power 500. Quantity 40. Attack power 20,000. Tier 2 iron armor hull. Defense power 5000. Average defense power 500. As far as the combat power given by the system was concerned, it was actually only 37,000. The rest of the combat power should come from the crew. Rain who almost collapsed just now couldn't help but cursed after seeing this set of data. You stupid system scared the hell out of me. Why don't you add this kind of continuous fire cannon attack power to it? A gun with 24 rounds a minute, and you just give me to calculate the attack power of one shell? This cannon is so awesome. It can fire one in three or four seconds. Rain gasped and hurriedly recalculated the combat power himself. Lightning flat firing cannon. The total attack power was 172,800 based on one minute. Lightning anti-aircraft gun.
The total attack power was 115,200 based on one minute. Lightning light machine gun. The total attack power was 40,000. Lightning heavy machine gun. The total attack power was 36,000. Other things remain the same, so the total combat power of the weapon system should be 389,000. Rain finally let out a long sigh of relief. Fortunately not really as the dumb system statistics of 40,000 combat power. After putting his heart at rest, Rain then quickly looked at the power system. This time the power system used new technology. It consisted of oil-fired boilers plus steam turbines, using two shafts and two propellers to propel the ship and substantially increasing its speed. In addition, Rain took a special look at the radar control room. The radars contained a radar scanning system and a firepower control system. It could achieve integrated and effective control of the entire weapon system by itself upon receiving Rain's command. The ship set up three power rooms. One for the main power room, one for the weapons power room, and one for the backup power room. After looking around, Rain's biggest impression was that he is now developing into a modern warship. Although the performance of the current ship was not up to the strength of modern warships, the level of technology had increased substantially compared with the previous ships, especially the power and weapon systems. During the period from World War I to World War II, the technological level of the ship also increased substantially with the great changes brought about by the Industrial Revolution. Hey, I'm really looking forward to the ships behind me. Rain was in a good mood and walked out of the captain's room with great pleasure. At this moment, Charge King suddenly ran over and pulled Rain, Captain, 30 places are not enough. Give me 30 more. Yes, Captain, many people think that we go to the King Class C to look for death, but now, no, I must go to the King Class C. That is my childhood dream. Old Bai tightly pulled Rain's other hand. Shob also hugged Rain, Captain, nothing to say. I will not go even if you kill me. 169. Advanced Treasure. Rain refused Charge King's request. He did not need that many people on board, and the base development still needed a lot of manpower. The main task of the King Kong Guard or to ensure the safety of the island. Finally Rain confirmed that King Kong Guard selected 30 people to go with him. Others and nearly a thousand Sea King Islanders about a total of 4,000 stayed to build the island. Captain, when are we going to the King Class C? Charge King had been extraordinarily active lately. Rain laughed. Let's stroll around the Beast Class waters first. As soon as they heard that Rain wanted to wander around, Avril and other people's active hearts sank. Wander around again. Only gods knew how long it will. The next day, Rain took the crew out to sea as expected. The target was the pirate group gathered on various routes. The sea began to rain again, but Rain and others did not idle. The crowd led by Tick in the spacious warehouse practice. Rain sat alone in the captain's cabin. It did not know where White ran, so he could only stare at the radar boredly to check. These radars were not comparable to the system radar, but the good thing was that they had a larger surveillance area than the system radar. They could detect the general situation of the 300,000 meters range. Seeing that the radar was empty, Rain shook his head and leaned back in his chair in depression. Others are getting stronger, and I have nothing to do again. Rain sighed. He had to consume the sea god fruit to upgrade, but he didn't have time to look for it during this time, and it was difficult to find rare sea god fruit. If it could easily find it, it was not called rare sea god fruit. How about finding a random, ordinary sea god fruit to evolve? At least it can also raise the level, increase the basic attributes. The level cap of three changes of dragon and naga gaze will also be raised. Rain thought for a moment, and shook his head. Now he did not encounter any particularly difficult opponents after all. He already had a strong ability to protect himself in the beast class C. Just go around for a while. At this moment, Armin came to the captain's room with a box of books, and she looked very excited. Captain, I have a major discovery. Armin had been sorting through their loot for a while. She was specifically responsible for the miscellaneous loot. What discovery? Rain asked curiously as he sat up. There are three discoveries. One is a high-level treasure map. We got an eighth of the map from the Sea King Pirates. Then another quarter from the Black Helm Merchant House. And an eighth from some else ship I don't know. Now it's half. Maybe we can locate it. Oh? Advanced treasure map? This seems to be a bit interesting. Rain took the map handed over by Armin. The map was only half, and it was not a continuous half drawing, but pieces. Many missing words Rain could not see and he could only see on the treasure map vaguely written. King's treasure. What? What is the king's treasure? The name sounds very advanced. 
Rain muttered as he scanned. He found the location of the treasure quickly. It was 700 nautical miles south of their base island. Captain, I found the corresponding treasure log, but it just says that the treasure is hidden in an underwater cave and doesn't specify the mechanism or anything. Rain frowned slightly. There are also three skill books, one for marine-type creature fighting skills, medium, and one for land-type creature fighting skills, medium. Our crew has generally mastered lower-level skills. This just makes up for our shortcomings. Good. This is very useful. Rain was also more and more interested in listening. No wonder Armin had been hiding in the house all this time. It turned out to have been organizing these things. It seemed to be quite fruitful. There's another one. It's a low-level flying skill book. What? You found the flying skill book? Rain stood up at once. This kind of book was very rare. They had never encountered it. Only, the book said that artificial wings must be manufactured and the book has construction drawings. But I looked at it. The beast class sea forgers may not be able to reach this craft. Rain immediately went to Armin's side. Let me see that book. Armin handed Rain this book. How to get rid of the Earth's gravity. Low level. For the flying class mutants. The book was preceded by a bunch of bleeping explanations. Rain scanned it and then turned to the last page. On the last page was a detailed drawing of the construction of what looked like a pair of wings. There was a warning at the bottom of the drawing. Universal Birdman Feather Wings. This device is only for use by flying mutants. Other types of mutants may suffer serious consequences from unauthorized use due to the difficulty in meeting the requirements of the strength of the muscles in the chest and back. The author will not bear any consequences if an accident occurs. The strength of the Birdman Feather Wings is determined by the production process and materials of which materials to mutant bird feathers are the most critical. Usual mutant bird feathers can be made stage 1 feather wings. Sub G class exotic birds can be made stage 2. G class, F class can be made stage 4, stage 5 feather wings. Due to design construction problems, this equipment is only suitable for use below the stage 5. If you hire 10 level than stage 4, it cannot bear even if the feather level is higher. If an accident occurs as a result, the author will not be held responsible for any consequences. Rain had black lines on his forehead. He secretly let the system scan the drawings. After not much time, he saw generic Birdman feather wing in the buildable menu. Yes, I'm really a genius. But when he saw the materials, Rain was a bit depressed. This thing needed some metal was fine, but it actually needed mutant bird feathers. He had not seen this thing. Armin certainly wanted to fly, and Rain himself may also fly. After all, he was the son of Poseidon that could learn a variety of skills. For this reason, Rain called Shob over. Shob was swallowing clouds and exhaling fog when came over a captain. When will we dock? I'm almost out of cigars. Rain ignored the smoker and asked, Do you know where there are mutant birds? Yes, I do. But what do you need to find mutant birds for? That thing is hard to get. I want to make wings. Where are they? Preferably somewhere more abundant. I need quite a few feathers. Shob carefully recalled, Well, Captain, I do know a place where there are many birds inhabiting, including many mutant birds. But it is also very dangerous. I remember there is a huge bird king there, because that guy is too difficult to deal with, and the attack is extremely strong. Almost no ships dare to go near that island. The bird king island is not far from our base island. Um, about six or seven hundred nautical miles to the south. Shob pointed out the location of bird king island on the chart, and Rain's eyes widened at once. The location of the treasure and Bird King Island were not far from each other. That's good. Let's go, Rain said excitedly. 170. Eagle King. With a ship speed of 35 knots, Rain and his team came to Bird King Island in just two days. Just near the sea area, Rain noticed that there were more birds here than anywhere else. The sky was filled with gulls, petrels, puffins, and unknown birds. Many of these birds were mutated significantly larger, and had some physical changes. Many of the mutated birds were extremely aggressive. They swooped down when they see Rain's ship. Unfortunately, there was no one standing on the deck of the ship. They circled around a few times and had to return in vain in the face of the super battleship, which was covered in metal. Captain, there are a lot of mutant birds here. Shall we get some? True Queen leaned on the edge of the window, looking at many flying birds outside. No hurry. Their boss has not come out yet. Take out the boss first, Rain said. Not long after, they could already see the island not far ahead. This island was different from normal islands that were not suitable for human habitation at all. It was more a few huge rocks than an island. It had a very high altitude 
and no flat area to build. Ding, found elite F8 monster class beast in 193 degrees southwest. Eagle King, the system suddenly rang at this point. Rain hurriedly grabbed Charge King beside him and asked, What does monster class beast mean? Charge King was a little confused. But since the captain asked, he answered, Oh, in fact, normal sea creatures can become mutant creatures after mutation. But only monster class mutated sea creatures we call sea monsters. Other land creatures and sky creatures are also a reason. Rain then understood that the so-called monster class meant that this guy's strength equivalent to the same level of sea monsters. Elite F8 class, nice. Rain's eyes immediately lit up. If he could take out this guy, the quality of the birdman feather wings he made would definitely be of the highest quality. Brothers, the Eagle King is just ahead. Everyone get ready. Shob, Charge King, you two control the machine gun. True King, old bye. You take ten men each to cover Shob and Charge King from other birds attacking them. Shob and Charge King had both been in the Navy and had experience with similar weapons. Avril Arson, why do you stay with me? The rest of you go back and tell the rest of the crew not to leave the cabin. Aye, Captain. All crew quickly took their positions. True King and Old Bai had already started fighting with many mutant birds. So far, they were still having an easy time. After getting ready, Rain shifted consciousness and controlled the ship to sail quickly towards Bird King Island. Well, where is the Eagle King? Rain was quite surprised. He should be able to see the Eagle King at this distance. And the radar showed that it was in that location, but why did he never see it? When Rain was about 6,000 meters away from the Bird King Island, the top of a huge rock in front of him suddenly fell off by itself. All those who saw this scene could not help but suck in a breath of cold air. That mountain was not a rock but the Eagle King. This guy rose up to the sky, and a pair of wings opened up more than 200 meters, twice as long as Rain's ship. On that huge head, a pair of quick eyes stared at Rain's side. Oh man, so big. If Dracula met this guy, I think it would be killed in a flash. Rain realized how terrifying the elite F8 monster class Bird King was. No wonder that it was still living well here until now. Even the three fleets did not dare to provoke it at will. Luckily my air defense force is fierce enough. Rain quickly opened the outer circular shield of the lightning artillery while adjusting the direction and ready to fire. Shob, Charge King, you must do a good job of fire suppression. Don't let it get close to the ship, let alone let it take our men away. Captain, when will we fire? Charge King was a little nervous. He had been out of the navy for years and didn't know if he could handle the weapon well. Wait a minute. Rain stared at Eagle King soaring in the air. In a short time, the Eagle King spun in the air for a while and then swooped down towards Rain's side. Shob and Charge King quickly redirected their machine guns and waited for Rain's order. Looking at the radar, Rain found the Eagle King was getting closer and closer to them. 6,000 meters, 4,000 meters, 2,000 meters, 1,500 meters. At this distance, the entire ship was shrouded in the shadow cast down by the Eagle's King, and all crew could see was a behemoth pressing down overhead. Captain? Wait, Rain said firmly. The Eagle King was not like Dracula, nor was it like the Deep Sea Octopod Emperor. As long as one attack could not be fatal, it might run away and could no longer be caught. So they must kill it in one attack. 1,000 meters, 800 meters. The Eagle King was already close at hand. Everyone was holding their breath. Their nerves were tense, and there was silence around them. If there was a slight error in Rain's judgment at this time, Shob and others were likely to be attacked by Eagle King. Facing this monster-class beast, these people had no possibility of escape. And at that moment, Rain shouted fire. This command exploded in Shob's and Charge King's heads. At that very moment, Shob's 40mm machine gun and Charge King's 20mm machine gun opened fire at the same time. Boom 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 boom. Dense points of light poured out towards the Eagle King, quickly forming a fire blockade in the air. Many shells bombarded directly above the Eagle King's body. Eagle King was too late to dodge with such a short distance. Lightning anti-aircraft gun, attack. Rain gave an order and the order was transmitted to the firepower radar control room. The weapon system was activated. Six shells were ejected from the triple cannon barrel and blasted at the Eagle King. The left and right wing roots of Eagle King's huge body were hit by three armor-piercing shells, which exploded violently. It did not expect that the firepower of this ship could be so fierce, and the machine gun hit it all over its body. The overlapping attack of the anti-aircraft cannon directly blew up its flesh. With a long cry, the pale Eagle King flapped its wings violently and prepared to retreat. But how could Rain give a chance? 
Although the previous attack was fierce, it was obviously not this destroyer's strongest strength. Lightning anti-aircraft guns could fire 24 in a minute. Immediately after, the intensive cannon fire unmercifully bombarded the already wounded Eagle King. In such fierce cannon fire, the Eagle King strong as an elite F-8 class was also difficult to resist. In an instant, the huge body of Eagle King fell from the air. The surface of the sea rose up with a huge splash. Rain obviously felt the hull of the ship was lifted high by the waves. Not long after, the elite F-8 monster class beast Eagle King's body floated up from the sea. After making sure that the guy had died, Rain was excited beyond measure. He could finally create Birdman feathered wings together with Armin. Haha, now we're rich. Go get the loot. Pluck all its feathers. 171. Birdman wings. The surrounding area resounded with a lamentation of birds once Eagle King died, and they no longer dare to approach the ship. With Rain's order, more than 50 people on board got off the boat to help. The Eagle King's body was so big that it was like a floating island. The crew of the underwater mutation was responsible for the underwater part of it while others jumped directly onto its back to pluck feathers. Rain didn't want to miss the experience either, but he saw a huge head floating in front of him when he had just gotten into the water. Black it? You, don't like a ghost. It's scary. Rain shook his head. Even if he knew that Black must be near the ship, it was creepy that suddenly saw a black rock-like head with two blood eyes who's like a lurking crocodile. That said, this time little Black's body was longer than before. It had been about 15 meters. At this time, it looked at Rain and looked at the Eagle King, open mouthed to make a gurgling sound. You want to eat it? Little Black nodded. Rain frowned with some hesitation. There was a bounty for the Eagle King on the wanted notice. And because it was so difficult to kill, the bounty was as high as 100,000 black pearls, which translates to 10 million white pearls. It was not a small bounty. To get the sea monster bounty must be by virtue of the sea monster's corpse. If it was eaten by black, the bounty would be lost. A meal 10 million. Rain was heartache. At this time, little black swam to rain and intimately rubbed him with a steel-like hard head. This guy actually pampered Rain. Uhu, it hurts me. Rain felt not the soft and silky fur, but the hard bones. An extremely poor experience. Blackie had always treated Rain as his own family and Rain also could not bear to let Blackie down. Besides, if Blackie told its parents one day, then he would be. Hey, well, just eat it. Anyway, it did not take much effort to kill it. Rain laughed and patted little Blackie's big head. But wait until we pluck all its hair before you eat it. Little Black and nodded obediently. The process of plucking feathers was more difficult than expected. Those feathers, especially on the wings were very strong. It needed a lot of strength to pull up by the roots. Many crew members could even only pluck its feathers after transforming. It had been busy for seven days. The crowds plucked the feathers of Eagle King, resulting in a boat full of piles. The size of the plucked Eagle King had become much smaller. Little Black climbed up its corpse and began to tear it up. After collecting the feathers, Rain began to make bird feathers. The system's efficiency was as fast as ever, and the craftsmanship was exquisite. It was just that it seemed to be a bit of a waste of materials. A huge feather was reduced by dozens of times under the system's processing. A pair of wings would consume a third of the feathers. Rain was heartache. After the system finished crafting, Rain quickly checked the item information. Birdman wings, excellent quality, two, pair, with four additional fine attributes. Additional attribute one. Applicable to the mutant of stage 6 or lower when in combat. Applicable to mutants of any rank when not in combat. Additional attribute 2. In addition to the ability to fly, the wings have 200 points of defense. Additional attribute 3. Cancel the button design and add a muscle control component. After the wing is fixed in the shoulder armor part, you can directly control the wing form through the back muscle. Additional attributes 4. Increase 50% air movement speed on top of the original speed. Rain gazed at the set of data and couldn't help but be overjoyed. Perhaps it was because the materials were too good, the system-made Birdman wings were actually of excellent quality. Among them, the 200 points of defense and the 50% movement speed bonus in the air were really good attributes. This is awesome. Rain suddenly felt as if he had discovered a new world. In that case, he could get more forging drawings in the future and give them to the system. Moreover, the forged items could have some additional attributes after using quality materials. All along, the weapons Rain forged for the crew were average and without any additional attributes. Think about it, the problem might be that he didn't provide excellent materials. Those metals he used were all average goods. Holy God, 
I can't believe I've been missing out on such an awesome feature, Rain said excitedly, ha ha ha, this move has so much impact on the crew's ability, maybe I can forge some extremely good equipment, excited, but Rain did not seem to have encountered any special materials, so this matter he put in mind for the time being, now the key was to experiment with the new equipment, according to the instructions, it must let the wings directly fixed on the body to use it. Arson and Avra went back to the room to help Armin to install the wings while Tick and Shob helped Rain to do it. After taking off the clothes, Tick and Shob each took one side of the wings. As the two men just placed the wings in Rain's shoulder armor position, the mechanical components above quickly gripped Rain's back and extended to his entire shoulder and arm. Captain, is it done? Rain moved around and found that he could simply open his arms and the wings would open. And then his nerves would contact with the wings and he could visibly sense their presence. It was installed, but how to fly? Rain walked out onto the deck, sprinted a few steps, then opened his wings. A sudden strong updraft lifted him straight up and Rain was able to soar through the sky in no time. Holy shit, the captain has become a birdman. Captain, you can really fly. Rain laughed in the air. Ha 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 ha, this is cool. I can fly now. While Rain was flying around in the sky, Armin also came out. She couldn't be like Rain that naked up her body but made two holes in the back of her clothes. So that's why they were so slow. Holy God, the captain is flying in the sky. Avra looked at the soaring birdman in excitement. Hurry up Armin, you try too. Tick told Armin about Rain's successful flight experience. Armin also tried it, and then she also flew all of a sudden. Ah, uh, Armin shouted in fear. She had not even fought, and she was so scared to close her eyes almost planted down when she flew high. Armin, do not be afraid. You are a fly mutant. It should be more suitable for flying than me. Rain flew to Armin's side and encouraged her. I'm here. Try to open your eyes. Armin tried to open her eyes and found that it was actually not as scary as she thought. There was an inexplicable sense of familiarity, and she liked the feeling. Charge King raised his head, looking at the two people in the sky, and pulled Truking's clothes. Shog, Armin is a fly-type mutant. Although it's rare, I have heard of it. What the heck of the captain? Isn't he an underwater creature mutation? Charge King had fought with Rain underwater, and was very sure of this. True King smiled faintly. Underwater creature mutation? No, Charge King, you're thinking wrong. He's not. Not? No way. I'm sure he is the underwater mutation. Really not. He is the most otherworldly existence in this world. True King said certainty. 172. Mystery Bird Egg. Seeing the two people in the sky. Little Booty finally put down a loof and joined their team. Three birds flew in the air in various shapes. I want to fly too. Avril beamed. Me too. A jealous depression on Arson's face. It was more enjoyable apparently flying around compared to swimming in the water. Those two guys are having so much fun. I want to shoot them down. Shob exhaled smoke rings. After playing for a while, Armin was a little tired. Although she was a flying creature mutant, she had no level after all. It was already good to play with Rain for so long. The two then returned to the ship. After landing, the wings of the two contracted naturally and folded on the back, turning into a metal skeleton frame with all the feathers and branching metal skeletons hidden in the main skeleton. The metal skeleton was completely adsorbed on the back. If it was slightly camouflaged with clothing, someone else couldn't even see that there is a wing skeleton on the back. Rain could not help but marvel at the unbelievable level of the system's craftsmanship. The system was not only an excellent carpenter but even this high-tech stuff could also be done so perfectly. It was simply black technology. The feather experiment worked in one go. Rain let people put the few remaining feathers all into the warehouse. Rain looked back at the corpse of the Eagle King. Black it was feasting alone. White and Tiger King had a burst of envy looking at it. What? Is it possible that White and Tiger King also want to eat? Rain thought about it and decided not to favor Black as so much. Black eh? Learn to share. There are many sea monsters for you to eat later. Now just share with White and Tiger King. Little Blacka looked at the two guys on the boat who were looking forward to it. It and White often frolicked in the water. As for the Tiger King, although it was not too familiar, it was at least one of their compatriots. Besides, Rain said that there would be more later. Blacka happily swam to the boat and carried White and Tiger King over there. Rain had the Eagle King's body tied to the back of the boat then entered the captain's room and started discussing the next part with his crew, the treasure hunt. The location of the treasure is just 12 nautical miles north of Bird King Island, so let's go survey it first, and then make a decision, Rain said. Captain, I have a proposal. 
Shall we go to the Bird King Island to take a look? Tick suddenly said, No one could go up to that place before, but now you and Armin can fly, and there are no high-level mutant birds up there. It is possible to go and take a look. Oh? Bird King Island? Yes, Captain. We are not rushing anyway. Treasure is there. We have killed the Eagle King. It is a shame not to go to see the Bird King Island. Charge King also said. That's right. The Bird King Island is equivalent to the lair of the Eagle King. There may be something good. Shobe also agreed. Rain thought about it. That made sense. The nest of the Eagle King was there. Why not go and take a look? Okay. But just flew for a while. And my muscles are a little sore. Armin should also be tired. So let's rest here for a day. Tomorrow we will go to the Bird King Island and then go treasure hunting. Early the next morning after a night's rest, Armin ran to the captain's room to knock on Rain's door. Captain, come on, go to explore. Rain rubbed his eyes and got up. Why is this girl so positive? Let's take breakfast first. Don't eat. Let's go take out the bird's nest. Armin had always been a civilian staff. Today she finally had the opportunity to play, so she was very excited. Rain had no choice. Since Armin was so motivated, then breakfast would not be taken. Just get some bird eggs back to improve the food for everyone. The price of that stuff on the island was not low. The two then took off together. And then Rain realized that Armin was wearing clothes while he was naked upper body after taking off. Armin, later help me make my clothes like yours. Okay captain, just leave this to me. I designed this kind of clothes with holes in the back that usually others can't see it. After yesterday's test flight, Armin's flying skills had become more and more proficient. She seemed to be able to manage her wings better after the transformation and her eyes turned amber with pupils like birds. Armin's speed could substantially exceed Rain's in the short term, but her duration was not as long as Rain's due to the low level. In the long run, Armin's ability in flight was better than Rain's. The two flew around Bird King Island and found many bird eggs on the cliffs. Rain put all these harvests into Armin's pre-prepared cloth bag. There were five huge, high, steep rocks here. After searching four of them, Rain came to the last one. The last one was the nest of Eagle King. Unlike the other rocks, this one was not inhabited by other birds. There was a nest in a depressed shape at the top of the rock. Two people stopped in the nest and found a large bird egg in the nest. Is this the bird's egg of Eagle King? Rain carefully looked at the egg. The eggshell lying there was dark red and very hard and were taller than Rain. It doesn't seem to be. Armin carefully observed the bird egg. Although Eagle King is a mutated creature, their bird eggs should also be white. Just like a mutant's baby has no appearance different from its parents. Moreover, that Eagle King is a male. Ah, male, so what's this about? Armin pondered carefully for a long time, and suddenly exclaimed, I got it. Yes, this is the egg Eagle King stole. The eagles steal other birds' eggs? Rain only knew that cuckoos would lay their eggs in other birds' nests and get others' eggs away. But he didn't know that there were birds that stole other people's eggs. Monster-class beasts have some intelligence, so that can't be ruled out, Armin said. Right. Black scaly dragon also has high intelligence and speaks human. Captain, this could be an egg of a powerful mutant beast, and the Eagle King wanted to hatch this egg to raise it himself. If it was an ordinary beast's egg, it couldn't have stayed and would have eaten it long ago. Makes sense. Rain nodded his head. After some research, the two came to the conclusion that the egg was stolen by Eagle King. It appeared to be the egg of some powerful mutant beast. The Eagle King was planning to play the simulation game. Of course, this was all speculation on their part. Whatever, they got the egg. Then let's take this egg back and see what can be hatched. Rain picked up the one-person high egg. They had already wandered around Bird King Island and they got a lot of eggs. But Rain also did not take out all. It was not a good idea to let the birds here became extinct. Back to the ship. Rain tried to use the system to scan it but did not analyze anything. The system was sometimes awesome and sometimes trash. Rain was also used to it. Rain put the egg in the captain's cabin and used the blanket or something to protect it. As for what could be hatched in the future, Rain didn't care much. It was picked up anyway. He did not need to hold too much hope. Rain turned all the other bird eggs into fried eggs. The group had a good meal. All fed up. Let's go. Go treasure hunting. Rain said confidently. Let's see what's in this high-level treasure. 173. Seabed treasure. The three guys had voraciously devoured the body of Eagle King, with White and Tiger King impressively keeping up with Black's hearty appetite. Their gluttonous behavior was akin to that of swine, as they barely paused for a moment. In less than 48 hours, the trio had consumed nearly half of the Eagle King's body. 
The ship had anchored itself above the designated location of the treasure. Rain utilized the radar system to scan the underwater topography and cross-referenced it with the location specified on the treasure map. Damn, it's such a deep cave, Rain lamented in a disheartened tone. According to the radar's readout, the cave's entrance lay more than 900 meters beneath the sea's surface. There were also certain areas where the radar failed to provide information. The depth of the cave was fraught with danger, presenting a high level of risk. However, Rain was not completely deterred by the prospect, given his recent mutation into a scaled dragon and subsequent rise in level. Additionally, there were several skilled underwater mutants among his crew, which ultimately led Rain to make a decision. Who among you can descend to a depth of 1,000 meters? Rain inquired of his crew. I can. Arson eagerly volunteered. Her current level, stage 4 level 1, was even higher than Rain's, and her mutation as a sea monster granted her remarkable underwater capabilities. I too, am up for the challenge. Windbell promptly signed up as well. She was a sea monster mutation of unknown lineage, and she was higher rank than Arson, at stage 4 level 4. I'm coming too, Charge King confidently announced, his formidable strength speaking for itself. Having already fought with Rain underwater, this giant frill shark mutation was an ideal candidate for the mission. Although there were others who expressed interest in joining the expedition, Rain wisely intervened, mindful of the high level of risk involved. Four participants would offer greater flexibility and safety, he explained. Only the four of us shall descend. More people would be too dangerous, Rain instructed, distributing underwater flashlights to each of them. I will flash the light as a signal. One flash means assembly. Two rapid flashes indicate enemy combat, and three flashes signal retreat. Feel free to use the signal if you encounter any unforeseen circumstances. Understood, Captain, they replied in unison. With that, the quartet donned sharkskin diving suits and plunged into the sea, their bodies undergoing a transformation as they submerged. Arson's limbs sprouted fins while gills appeared behind her ears, Windbell's neck developed gills and her body was covered in silver scales and Charge King grew larger with fins sprouting from his back. Rain's body underwent a transformation, growing to about 1 meter and 8 centimeters in height, and his skin was now covered in a black scale-like texture, devoid of any fins or gills. The bottom of the sea was where they felt most at home, and they quickly arrived at their designated location. The flashlight rain brought along illuminated the scene in front of them. They found themselves facing a submarine island adorned with jagged rocks and teeming with colorful coral and various species of underwater fish. In the absence of light, their appearances were random and somewhat eerie. Rain soon discovered the underwater cave and led his companions into its depths. As they swam deeper into the cave, the light gradually diminished until the only thing visible was the plankton drifting before them, plunging them into a state of vulnerability and trepidation. Had it not been for the possibility of discovering an advanced treasure, Rain may have turned back and fled. They followed the surrounding rock wall, turning a corner, and to their surprise, discovered a faint light in the distance. They quickened their pace, swimming toward the light. As they drew nearer, the light grew increasingly larger. Before them stood a submarine pillar of light, measuring at least a hundred meters in diameter. The surrounding water revolved around the pillar, causing the view inside the cave to appear quite peculiar. The light was concentrated, with little to no dispersion, hence its faintness from a distance. As Rain observed the light column, he couldn't help but ponder if it was truly hollow. As he reached out to touch the light curtain, he sought to discern if the other side possessed substance. Yet, he was taken aback when a sudden suction drew him in without warning. The other three companions made haste to rescue Rain, only to be caught in the same predicament. Rain's hypothesis was correct. The light column was, in fact, empty. While the phenomenon puzzled them, the foremost concern at that moment was that they were free-falling through the air. The height of the light column's interior was much greater than Rain initially surmised, spanning several hundred meters. The small portion that surfaced represented only a fraction of the whole, with an abyss of immense depth concealed beneath. They hurtled towards the bottom of this precipice, acutely aware of their current transformed states. However, they soon realized that they were unable to shift from their underwater forms, which offered significant advantages underwater, but were now a hindrance in the air. Should they make contact with the ground below, the consequences would be dire. In the nick of time, Rain spread his wings and wrapped his arms around Arson, urgently exclaiming, Grab hold, Arson. Windbell and Charge King reacted swiftly, clutching onto each other in a chain. With a fervent flapping of his wings, Rain managed to lift all three of them to safety. Captain, my heart nearly stopped. 
Your reflexes were astounding, exclaimed Charge King, still reeling from the ordeal, as he hugged Windbell and gazed in trepidation at the ground below. The beam of light that they witnessed was merely the pinnacle of this otherworldly domain. The peculiar space extended deeply into the earth, and from below, no entry was attainable. Ergo, if they were to access this domain through the water column, they would inevitably face a perilous drop to the ground below. Good gracious, is that molten lava beneath us? If I plummet down there, I'm a goner. Charge King peered down and clung tightly to Windbell's legs in fear. Windbell, toss Charge King up. It's a bit tricky for me to balance while pulling you guys with one hand. Rain bellowed. The trio then performed an aerial trapeze act. Windbell propelled Charge King towards Rain's left hand with a swift kick of her leg. The bottom was, in fact, ablaze with molten lava. The searing lava pulsated with a crimson heat that spanned for hundreds of meters. A solitary treasure chest rested atop a small raised rock amidst the fiery glow. Damn, who the hell would stash a treasure chest in a place like this? Rain cursed. One must have the ability to plunge to depths of a thousand meters underwater and fly. And what's more terrifying was that it was impossible to retract the prior metamorphosis in this area. Without Rain's unique flesh as the son of Poseidon, it was doubtful that anyone could retrieve this treasure chest. Captain, the air below is becoming thin. Windbell was situated at the base, and she recognized the change in oxygen levels, immediately alerting Rain. Windbell, hold on. Let's give it a shot. I'll dive down, and you try to extract the treasure chest, Rain commanded. Understood. I'll try my best. All three individuals were mutations of underwater creatures. Rain did not dare to procrastinate, quickly descending towards the bottom. As he approached the surface of the lava, Windbell braced her legs on both sides of the chest. With a piercing sound, the silver scales on Windbell's legs were instantly charred. Windbell, Captain, I can hold on. Please ascend. Rain swiftly pulled himself up, not dwelling on the situation. However, while ascending, Windbell suddenly lost consciousness, causing her to slip away from Arson's grasp and plummet alongside the treasure chest. Windbell, Rain cried out, Tiger's Fong. In an instant, Rain's velocity increased dramatically as he raced toward Windbell. Just as she was about to plunge into the boiling lava, Rain hooked her and the treasure chest onto his back and rapidly ascended. Yet, the ceiling of the cavern suddenly began to crumble at that very moment. Captain, it's collapsing up there. This is bad news. We won't make it out if the top seals us in. Arson urgently exclaimed. I'm aware. Hold on tight. Rain's eyes turned red as he exerted himself, dashing towards the topmost section of the light column that protruded from the earth. Come on. Let me escape from here. 174. Astonishing secret. In the nick of time, Rain successfully led the three others out of the light curtain and back into the sea. The cave was collapsing and when Rain became exhausted, Arson and the others finally regained their mobility. They pulled Rain in their frantic escape from the crumbling rocks. The exit was close at hand. A boulder suddenly fell. They were too late to dodge. Suddenly, a huge black figure burst through the hole and swallowed the four of them in one gulp. To their surprise, they found themselves trapped between the upper and lower jaws of the sea monster, surrounded by a strong smell of blood. And Rain noticed that the radar display showed they were ascending from the bottom of the sea at a rapid pace. The sea monster was actually saving them. Rain grabbed Arson, who was about to attack, and shouted, It's Blackie. Soon after, when the sea monster opened its mouth again, the group discovered that Blackie had brought them to the surface as they had hoped. After coming out from the sharp teeth of Blackie, Rain patted its head and praised, Good boy. In response, Blackie rubbed his head against Rain's body, knocking off a few scales. Once they boarded the ship, Avril immediately sprang into action, tending to Windbell's serious injuries sustained from a hot treasure chest. Under Avril's treatment, Windbell gradually woke up. Windbell, don't worry. I'll help you heal every day from now on. You can definitely recover, Avril said with a comforting smile. Thank you, Avril, Windbell replied gratefully. Rain also came to check on Windbell's injuries. Both legs had obvious signs of burns, and the muscles were slightly atrophied. Thankfully, her scales had protected her from a more serious injury. Windbell, it's my fault, Rain said, looking at her burns and atrophied muscles. However, Windbell reassured Rain, Captain, it's not your fault. Treasure hunting is dangerous. We've been at sea for so long and we've accepted this long ago. Besides, if it weren't for you, we'd all be dead inside. Avril stepped forward, offering to take care of Windbell's injuries, Captain, I'll cure her. Rain nodded. By the way, Captain, take a look at what's inside that treasure chest. 
It's the one we fought so hard to obtain, Windbell said, her curiosity piqued. Yes, I've never seen anything like this strange space before. I wonder who could have put this treasure chest inside, Rain added. Places like this. If it wasn't for the captain, I don't think anyone could have gotten it at all. The more dangerous the place, the more likely there will be treasures. Let's hurry up and see what good things are inside, Windbell exclaimed. All three of them looked at the treasure chest on the ground in unison. The chest was relatively small and made of an unknown material. There was no lock and the opening was sealed shut. Rain theorized that the chest had been in a high temperature for a long time, causing the metal to slightly melt and seal the opening. Faced with this fully enclosed treasure chest, Rain could only turn to the system for help. Scan the item. Titanium metal box found. Weight 480 kilograms. Rain quickly reviewed his list of manufacturable items. He was aware that titanium was a versatile metal that could be used to make a variety of products, ranging from hull shields to metal products. It was resistant to high temperatures, extremely hard, had excellent toughness, and was highly resistant to corrosion. To Rain's surprise, he discovered that titanium could also be used to make weapons. However, using titanium alloy to make a hull was out of the question due to the limited amount available. But a few weapons could be made. One bear, find a box to put this in, Rain instructed. He was worried that the treasure chest might contain something dangerous. One bear quickly found a golden case, opened it, and placed the titanium box inside. Okay. Make two sets of titanium claws and seven daggers, Rain said. As soon as the words left his mouth, the titanium box was swiftly cut into the desired weapons. At the same time, the previously calm sea suddenly became rough, with strong winds blowing. Dark clouds appeared out of nowhere, pressing low in the sky. Lightning and thunder filled the sky as the electrical equipment on the ship became unstable. The radar was randomly alarming, and the lighting flickered. The ship was rocking severely, and everyone hurried to grab the nearest handrails. Captain, a storm has suddenly come out of nowhere. What the hell? Rain gripped handrails tightly and used his radar to scan. His system radar was still functioning properly, but the ship's equipment had sustained significant damage. It might need to be overhauled after the storm. Outside, it was pouring rain. After everyone had adjusted to it, they turned their attention back to the golden chest. Rain opened the box. The titanium case had now been transformed into two sets of sharp claws and seven sharp daggers, and there was a red stone next to the weapons. A stone? Rain was extremely disappointed. He had hoped to find a powerful sea god fruit, but it was just a stone. Next to the stone, there was a small iron box. Rain picked it up and opened it, finding a small metal block inside. When he touched the metal block, an old man suddenly appeared in front of the crew. The old man, dressed in a suit with a full head of white hair, scared everyone as he appeared. A ghost? Holy shit, no. The old man's gaze was fixed on Rain. Despite Rain trying to duck away, the old man's gaze remained on him. Rain said with black lines on his forehead, no ghost. This is a 3D holographic projection. At this point the old man spoke. I don't know who you are, but you got the heaven crystal then I need to introduce this stone to you. Heaven Crystal? Rain looked at the stone. This thing is called Heaven Crystal. What exactly is it? I am an archaeologist. During an excavation near the Himalayas, we discovered a multitude of relics that substantiate the veracity of ancient legends. Humans have only existed for a minuscule amount of time compared to the four billion years of Earth's history. Before human civilization, more advanced beings inhabited the Earth. Our findings showed that these powerful races did not become extinct, and it is believed they either went underground or lived underwater. Just as we made these important discoveries, the Earth was undergoing major changes. In 2047, the global temperature rose by 3 degrees Celsius, causing the North and South Pole glaciers to melt and the permafrost to thaw. The rising sea levels resulted in numerous coastal cities being hit by tsunamis. In 2055, the damaged atmosphere made it challenging for the Earth to withstand the solar wind. This is when the Earth began to produce mutant humans and creatures, and this trend has continued to increase. The outbreak of World War III in 2059 further damaged the atmosphere and fueled my curiosity about what would happen next. I know that human greed has finally cut off the future of mankind, but I was surprisingly excited about what was going to happen next. When the continents are flooded and the world becomes a water world, Will the former civilizations return to this world? The thought of it both excites and terrifies me. Rain frowned, taken aback by the old man's crazy for science. Nevertheless, his words opened a new door of possibilities for Rain. 
The ancient legends were true. 175. Heaven Crystal. This piece of stone right in front of you is called Heaven Crystal. According to the records of the ruins, there are a total of five Heaven Crystals, corresponding to the five elements of gold, wood, water, fire, and earth. And this one is the Fire Heaven Crystal. The five Heaven Crystals will be the key to unlocking the ancient world. Unfortunately, I have only found the Fire Heaven Crystal. If you are lucky enough to find the other four, try to unlock the ancient world. Maybe it can save humanity. As he spoke, the image of the old man began to blur. The device ultimately shut down, and the image of the old man disappeared completely. Everyone present was stunned for a full two minutes. This discovery was truly unexpected. The mysterious archaeologist recounted the history of the civilization era and even revealed a shocking secret. Captain, what should we do now? Charge King stammered. Armin pondered for a long time, then suddenly said, Captain, I have seen in the legendary Captain Frank's logbook that he mentioned mysterious stones. What? What did he say? Rain exclaimed. He said that there are legends of mysterious stones in the Beast class, King class, Dragon class, and Sky class seas. I don't know if he was referring to this heaven crystals. Rain frowned. Perhaps there was a heaven crystal in each of the five major seas. He wondered what would happen if they collected all five heaven crystals. What exactly is the so-called ancient world? And why do they say it can save humanity? After thinking for a while, Rain realized that this was a question without an answer. At least not until they collected all the heaven crystals. Since he couldn't figure it out, Rain decided to stop thinking about it. He said to everyone present, no one should talk about this matter. From the moment we leave this room, forget about it. As for collecting the heaven crystals, I will make the arrangements. Okay, Captain. This is a secret that cannot be leaked. Such a big secret might even attract the attention of the Sky-class fleet. The others also recognize the seriousness of the matter and express their support. Fortunately, everyone present was someone Rain could trust. Although they had acquired some strange things on Bird King Island, Rain still gained a lot. After consuming the Eagle King's body, Little Black and the others significantly improved their strength. Little Black's body had grown to 18 meters, but it couldn't be considered a true crew member, and the system couldn't accurately calculate its combat power. Rain did not directly control the True King's battle pet, Tiger King, so he also cannot see its attributes. Only White completely obeyed Rain, but Rain's level cannot yet check its information. Of course, not being able to see their attributes did not affect their cooperation with Rain. After all, Rain knew they were all stronger than himself. In addition, Rain also obtained two pairs of high-quality wings, a mysterious bird egg, and nine sets of high-quality weapons. The weapons were made of titanium alloy, which greatly increased their attack power and strength. The attack power of ordinary steel claws and daggers was 20, but the attack power of titanium alloy claws and daggers was 120. An increase of 100 points was quite an impressive boost to combat power. Rain replaced two of his own daggers with titanium alloy ones and then upgraded the equipment of people like One Bear, Two Bear, Arson, and Windbell who use corresponding weapons. By changing weapons, the total combat power of the crew increased by 900 points. During the days when Rain was away, Terry organized merchant caravans, escort teams, and fishing fleets at the base and began to visit nearby islands to increase the connection between the base and other islands. Regarding island defense, one-third of the island defense wall had been built, and Terry had purchased a batch of muskets and formed a garrison on the island. In addition, Terry had divided the base into multiple zones, such as agricultural, residential, commercial, and manufacturing zones, and the basic construction of each zone was currently in full swing according to Rain's requirements. Seeing the base was gradually getting into the swing of things, Rain was more relieved. More people and boats were still needed on the island. Once the island was fully developed, it could begin to engage in trade with other islands and provide services to passing ships, thereby entering a profit-making mode. Of course, this would take a long time. During this time, Rain returned to his old business with his crew and set sail again. Two years and eight months later, Rain returned from the main route, the eastern route with 1,200 purchased slaves on board, including 200 Sea King clans and 1,000 slaves from various tribes and factions. This was not the first time Rain had purchased slaves on a large scale. It had been nearly five years since the Sea King tribe had been sold, and although he was still tirelessly searching for Sea King tribe members, he had also begun to absorb some other faction slaves to quickly populate the base. Of course, every time Rain went out, his most important job was to search for pirates. 
The bounty for an F-class fleet was generally in the range of several thousand black pearls, while an E-class fleet was in the tens of thousands of black pearls. The bounty for these small pirate groups was not much unless it was a top-class well-known pirate group like the Sea King Pirates, whose bounty could reach 200,000. Rain would attack as long as he saw a pirate group. In the past three years of missions, Rain had been relentlessly pursuing all kinds of pirates, defeating a total of 133 F-class pirate groups and 5 E-class pirate groups, and earning 3.49 million black pearls and 500,000 bounties, with a score of 50 million. However, the bounty level of his bounty group had been stuck at E10. According to naval regulations, the highest level of a beast class C area could only reach E10, and only the navy of the king class C area could confer the title of D-class bounty group. In fact, this was a hard requirement of D-class power. The fleet's combat ability and technological level must be able to support the fleet's entry into the king class C area. It was said that when reaching D class, the points and bounties would be recalculated and all the extra points earned by rain would be useless. If I can't reach D class, I won't be able to accept D class missions. Earning money is so slow now. Rain was quite frustrated, standing by the fence and looking at the calm sea. Captain, how about we enter the king level C area? Avril leaned against rain. You haven't bought any sea god fruit in the last three years. Maybe only the king class sea area has high level sea god fruits. Avril had been following rain for ten years, but her appearance had hardly changed. The other people on the ship were the same. Perhaps it was a trait of the mutant. Rain shook his head and said, As prudent as I am, of course, we need to upgrade before entering the king class sea area. In addition, the base has just been built. Although we have the diamond guard to guard it, we still need to be careful. Now that the base wall has been built, and there are over 10,000 residents on the island, we have several first-level honor medals from different islands. I only need 4.25 million to upgrade to the next level. We now have 3.99 million. We just need to earn another 260,000. Hearing about the upgrade again, Avril also seemed excited and said, the required materials are already being prepared by Terry. Once the money is in place, we can go back to the base and upgrade directly. Rain nodded. Having a base was great. He did not need to wait months for materials. Three months later, at Goldfish Point, the captain of an F-8 pirate fleet was crying and shouting at Rain. Dad, you guys are too much. We haven't robbed any merchant ships for half a year and my brothers haven't had a full meal in a long time. Why are you getting us just for stealing some fish? Can't you give us a way out? Are there no human rights to being a pirate? Do you have to wipe out all the pirate gangs in the Beast Class C area? Your levels have all reached the limits, so why are you still crazily hunting down us? I've never seen such a bounty hunter group like you. Rain, rare to use a loudspeaker, shouted back. Calling me dad won't help. If you want to eat fish, why not replace your ship's cannons with fishing gear? Since you came to rob, that is piracy. Stop the nonsense. Even if you don't rob, I will still take you down. I can upgrade as long as I take you out. Rain then picked up 40 assassin torpedoes and launched them directly at the opposing fleet. 176. The Yamato. With ease, Rain managed to overcome this pirate crew, without resorting to wholesale slaughter. These pirates were not fond of wanton killing, so Rain only captured their leader and key members to get the bounty. After collecting the bounty on the nearest island and purchasing the remaining materials, Rain returned to the base island. The construction of the super battleship base island was now taking shape. A towering, massive wall had been erected around the eastern side of the island, while the western side shallow beach didn't require such fortifications due to the inability of other large vessels to land there. The island now boasted a total population of 12,000, including 7,000 mutants who were of different species, many of whom were weary of warfare. The strength of the base now surpassed that of the previous Sea King's empire. The inhabitants here lived and worked in peace and the base had even begun conducting business transactions with multiple islands. The base was transitioning from its construction phase to a stable, profitable one. That evening, Rain stood on the ship's deck, looking at the flickering lights of the small island. He heard the sounds of people's laughter and chatter drifting across the island and couldn't help but feel excited. I'm a real estate owner now. Ha ha. Captain, don't just stand there. Everyone's waiting. True King and Charge King ran up behind Rain, pulling him back. What's so great about looking at the base? Can it compare it to shipbuilding? Hurry, we can't wait any longer. Rain frowned, watching these two men. These newcomers were somewhat overly excitable. He then found Avril, Armin, and Fancy, 
who had already taken up position in the best lookout tower, shouting towards Rain, Captain, hurry up. The three women jumped up and down on the lookout tower. Rain shook his head, realizing that everyone was waiting for him. Let's go then. Evolution. At his command, a large amount of material from the sea began to move, cutting, polishing, welding, and assembling. Gradually, the keel, frame, hull, and superstructure began to take shape. Wow, what a massive ship. The keel must be 200 meters long. There are so many gun turrets. The armor on the ship seems even thicker and heavier. This ship was much larger than the Fletcher-class destroyer, with a total of 23 large and small gun positions scattered in various directions. It took three hours to complete the construction of the ship, setting a new record. As soon as the ship was completed, Rain's mind immediately conjured up an image of a battleship he had read about in a book. The Yamato. Rain's eyes widened. Although the Yamato was 253 meters long, much longer than this, this ship could be considered a miniature version of the Yamato in terms of appearance. Rain didn't oppose the idea of reducing the size of the ship, despite the mature steam engine technology used in the Yamato battleship, but with a maximum speed of only 27 knots. This speed was not ideal in this day and age. In the face of size and speed, Rain would choose speed, transfer consciousness and items. After transferring to the new ship, Rain quickly opened the basic information menu for the battleship. Host Rain, Ship, Optimize Japanese Battleship Yamato, Cabins, 400 Crew Cabins, 3, Large Storage Cabins, Power Room, 5, An Anti-Aircraft Radar Control Station, 2, Anti-Sea Radar Control Room, 2, Backup Radar Control Room, 2, Small Range Control Room, 11, Engine Room, 16, Number of Crew Members, 59, All Assigned Duties, Open to View Details, Speed, Maximum 38 Knots, Open to view details. Combat power, 117,000, can be viewed in crew information and weapon systems. Rain didn't want to look at the combat power calculated by the system. It only calculated the attack power of a single shot and had no reference value. The first thing that Rain noticed was the number of pearls required for the next level upgrade. 100 black pearls equal 1 gold pearl, then 5 million gold pearls equal 500 million black pearls. What the hell? Is this a mistake? The next level is 100 times higher. Rain had never encountered this kind of situation before. It's usually a maximum of 10 times growth, but this time it's 100 times. This was forcing Rain to go to the King Class C area. Rain didn't know how long it will take to earn that much money in the Beast Class C area. Forget it. Let's take a look at this ship first. It's really an optimized Yamato. Speaking of the Japanese battleship Yamato, this ship undoubtedly holds an extremely significant position in the history of warships. The Yamato-class battleship, to which the Yamato belonged, was the largest battleship ever built by the former Japanese Navy and the largest battleship in the history of human naval vessels. This alone is sufficient to warrant a place in the annals of history. Moreover, this battleship was equipped with advanced weaponry systems, radar systems, and power systems that were extremely advanced for its time. Had it not been for the existence of another colossal ship that reigned supreme during its time, the Yamato would have been the most formidable presence. Of course, the fate of the Yamato was extremely unfortunate, and it did not play much of a role. However, it must be admitted that the configuration of the Yamato was still very impressive. Rain also cared about the performance configuration of the ship. Check the weapon systems. Lightning 2 Triple Mount Dual Purpose Anti-Aircraft Gun. Quantity 3. Two on the front deck and one on the rear deck, with a maximum elevation angle of 45 degrees and a range of 50,000 meters. Maximum firing rate is 3 rounds slash minute, with an initial projectile velocity of 900 meters slash second. Single shell attack power is 5,000, and the total attack power is 45,000. Lightning 2 triple mount field gun, quantity 3 with a maximum elevation angle of 85 degrees and an anti-aircraft range of 30,000 meters. The total attack power is 45,000. Lightning triple mount dual purpose anti-aircraft gun, quantity, 2, maximum elevation angle 85 degrees, air to air range 25,000 meters. Total attack power 4,800. Lightning triple mount field gun, quantity, 3, with a maximum elevation angle of 35 degrees and a range of 15,000 meters. The maximum firing rate is 24 rounds slash minute, with an initial projectile velocity of 800 meters slash second. Single shell attack power is 800, 
and the total attack power is 7,200. Lightning II Shipborne Heavy Machine Gun Automatic Control 40mm Caliber Strong Cooling Shipborne Machine Gun Quantity 4 Range 3,000 meters Firing Rate 300 Rounds Slash Minute Single Bullet Attack Power 260 Total Combat Power 1040 Lightning II Shipborne Light Machine Gun Automatic Control 25mm Caliber Strong Cooling Shipborne Machine Gun Quantity 4 Range 2700 meters Firing rate 500 rounds slash minute. Single bullet attack power 120. Total attack power 480. Lightning shipborne heavy machine gun. Manual control 40 mm caliber strong cooling shipborne machine gun. Quantity. 2. Total combat power 360. Lightning shipborne light machine gun. Manual control 20 mm caliber strong cooling shipborne machine gun. Quantity. 2. Total attack power 160. Hunter torpedo. Attack power 1000. Quantity 50. Total attack power 50,000. Bird's eye view type waterborne unmanned reconnaissance aircraft. Quantity 10. Equipped with air force type airborne machine gun. Range 500 meters. Firing rate 180. Round slash minute. Single bullet attack power 60. Equipped with anti-submarine radar. Total combat power 600. Level 3 iron armor hull. Defense power 7000, average defense power 700. Rain had to bring out his calculator, and the sound of tapping echoed through the room. After calculating for a while, according to Rain's algorithm, his weapon system's total combat power was 1,397,000. 1,400,000. That's more than three times that of the Fletcher class destroyer. This optimized Yamato has truly formed a comprehensive combat system, with a weapon system that covers the sky sea surface, and seabed, including reconnaissance, anti-submarine, and anti-torpedo capabilities that are extremely comprehensive. In front of this ship, the Fletcher-class destroyer is just a small fry. Oh my god, you're forcing me to go to the King-class waters, Rain said excitedly. 177, entering Satan Abyss. Now that the base island had gradually stabilized, and with Rain's ship had upgraded, there was not much meaning in staying in the Beast-class sea area any longer. The next day, they finally decided to head towards the King Class Sea area. Terry explored the ship and was particularly amazed by the huge cannon on board. Unfortunately, he knew that his age had limited his future development. As a combat mutant, he was already 40 years old and only in stage 2, which meant he couldn't break through to stage 4. His nautical knowledge and experience were also not applicable to the King Class Sea area, so he chose to stay behind and manage the base for rain. Speaking of which, Terry was Rain's oldest crew member, apart from White and Avril. Along the way, he had been a steadfast companion to Rain, performing his duties diligently, and his two daughters were also on board Rain's ship. As they prepared to say goodbye, the original companions were all a little reluctant to part. Captain, I entrust Armin and Arson to you. Terry's eyes were a little moist. Avril, and White, you must survive. Terry was the closest person to White, apart from Rain. After all, they had lived under the same roof for some time. White rubbed against Terry's trousers, and Terry touched White's head. White, I know you're strong, so take care of everyone for me. White whimpered softly, full of reluctance. Captain, I've prepared a ton of coffee for you. I know you like it. Take it with you on the way. Well, a ton. Rain nodded and thanks. Terry, thanks for everything. I'm very confident in leaving the base to you. And go buy a sea god fruit for our we. Mutant life expectancy should be much longer than normal humans. I've already bought it, hee <laughs> hee. Terry chuckled cunningly. With Armin's savings in mind, we just have enough to buy a cheap one. Black lines covered Rain's forehead. Terry was so quick. Why not inform him? Both Terry and his family are important to Rain. A mere few hundred thousand white pearls were definitely worth spending for him. Since it has already been purchased, let it be. Captain, you must come back, Terry said solemnly, putting away his smile. Rain nodded. We will definitely come back. Apart from Rain's team, Charge King and True King all said farewell to their loved ones. When they all boarded the ship, the dock was filled with people. You all must come back alive. We'll be waiting for you, Terry shouted. Armin, Arson, and Avril bid farewell to Terry with tears in their eyes, and White also stood up, leaning on the railing. Amidst the chorus of goodbyes, the banner of the dads fluttered in the wind as the super battleship set sail. Five days later, Rain and his team were only a dozen nautical miles away from the legendary Satan Abyss. 
At this moment, everyone was standing on the deck, looking at the sea. Ahead is the Satan Abyss, a massive scar on the Earth's surface, spanning the entire planet. To the west of the Abyss are the Beast Class, Human Class, and Uncharted Sea Areas, while to the east are the King Class, Dragon Class, and Sky Class Sea Areas. With the Satan Abyss as the boundary, the strength of the fleets on both sides, even the closest E1 class and E10 class, still have a huge disparity in strength. In fact, there were no other E10 class fleets in the Beast Class Sea area beside the Dad, and the former one of the three major fleets, the Sea King Pirates, was only E6 class. This demonstrated the massive difference in strength between the two sides. The depth of the Devil's Abyss was said to be at least 20,000 meters, but this was only a legend since nobody had ever gone to its deepest point. Here, there were numerous sea monsters. The sub -G class sea monsters that dominate no man's land were at the lower end of the food chain here. Given this, it was rare to see ships from the King Level Sea and the Beast Level Sea. Even after Rain defeated the fleet of the Black Hell merchants and let their leader Punk go, the main forces of the Black Hell did not come to surround him, perhaps for this reason. A few hours later, the super battleship arrived in front of the Abyss. The main reason they could be sure of this was that this sea area was just too different. The entire sea area in front was shrouded in dark clouds, lightning, thunder, strong winds, and rolling waves. The width of the abyss was also wider than Rain had imagined, and he couldn't see the other side of the abyss from here. This storm is so strong, I don't know if my ship can handle it. Rain's face was serious. They hadn't encountered any sea monsters yet, and the weather here was already so bad. The waves from over there were already violently tossing their ship. When will this damn storm stop? Captain, it seems like it won't stop, Armin said. I've researched a lot of information about the Satan Abyss before, and this place has constant storms and rarely calms down. Damn it, Rain sighed. It seemed like they could only charge ahead. Everyone hold on tight and protect yourselves with ropes. We're going to charge through. Blackie, stay close to us, you hear me? Blackie popped its head out of the sea, blinked its eyes, and seemed to understand. The crew acted swiftly and, once prepared, Rain took a deep breath and commanded the ship to charge into the abyss. It felt like riding a roller coaster. The alternating tides rose to more than 10 meters high. Rain had experienced this type of weather before when he was still on a wooden ship, but now he was commanding a 180 meter giant, making the situation much more perilous. The vessel had just entered the Santa Abyss, and it was already this dangerous. Every crew member on board was on edge. Suddenly, a huge wave hit the ship from the side, causing the ship to tilt severely. All crew members rushed to the other side. Blackie saw that there was danger on Rain's side, so it emerged from the water and braced itself against the high ship's hull. It's not enough, Captain. We must dive, Arson shouted. Rain quickly yelled, no diving. Rain controlled the five cannons and fired them simultaneously to the left. The shells directly hit the water surface and with the force of the recoil, combined with everyone's efforts, the ship finally turned upright. Unfortunately, before Rain could catch his breath, something even more terrifying appeared on his radar system, a large number of sea monsters. Although these sea monsters were not very high level, all being of the G or F class, there were hundreds of them. Damn it, why am I so unlucky? Rain cursed. Attention, everyone, the sea monsters are here, and I'm going to fire. Captain, don't kill them. Armin quickly intercepted Rain. The smell of blood will attract even more terrible creatures. Rain nodded. Since he couldn't kill them, he could only deter them. In this storm, the 200 meter super battleship became a small boat bobbing in the wind and waves with flames constantly erupting around it. A variety of sea monsters surfaced in the vicinity but were kept at bay by the gunfire. Accompanying the ship was a little black dragon, using its weight to help balance the ship in the stormy sea. Rain couldn't relax for even a moment. Although the sea monsters had not yet come over, if anything went wrong on his side, they would definitely swarm and tear them all apart. Even in this terrifying environment, Rain's fighting spirit remained undiminished.